Hello, everybody. Welcome to a nice special weekend edition of Do All the Things. I was just on here yesterday, but I'm back again. Whoa, here I am. But yeah, if you don't know, Do All the Things is a show all about swarms and speedruns and uh, any completions runs in general, like all bosses, like all items, all quests, etc., etc., all that sort of thing. All that good stuff, really. We're trying to do everything, basically. And say we got a nice fun little speedrun of Super Mario Galaxy 120, sh 120 shines. What am I saying? 120 stars. <laughs> <laughs> it should be by MKK. It should be awesome, honestly. I haven't seen this game in a while. I haven't seen 120 stars in a while, actually. I usually see 8% for this game, but yeah, I'm excited to see this. Hello, MKK. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Very, very excited about this run. And same. I think it's going to be good because while any percent has been shown off a couple times, this category has never been on a GDQ uh, event. So I'm actually Ooh. really excited. Actually, I didn't realize that. That's cool. All right. So, am I good to start like explaining stuff, or yeah, we can get in there? Okay. So, this is Super Mario Galaxy 120 stars. This is I'm playing as Luigi. This thing it lets you change between Mario and Luigi. Once you get 120 stars as Mario, you unlock Luigi. Luigi's better. We'll explain why when we get in the run. This is also co-star mode. This thing tells you about co-star mode. Can you read Japanese? I hope so. It's going by really fast because this is boring. We're going to explain it later. Um, also, I have two people who are very, very generously donating their time to be on commentary, and I'd like them to introduce themselves. Tell us who you are, what you do, and where the lovely people watching can follow you. Should I start? I can go in first. You can uh, start. Hi. I'm Sauce. I've played a decent amount of this game. I have a relatively similar PB to MKK in this category, as far as I'm aware. Um, so I can hopefully provide some decent insight. It is also the hottest day of the year in the UK today. I have my fan on full blast pointed at me, but I am powering through either way. Um, if you want to follow me, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Sauce28. I also run the Mario games. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm Gamut. I've been running this game for around two years. I think it's a really fun speed game, really cool. I'm excited for this run. Uh, if you want to follow me, uh, my name on Twitch is ZGamut, and my name on Twitter is ZZGamut. And yeah, that's about it. Okay. Well, I think without further ado, we should probably get going. So uh, strap in. Nice, long, five and a half hour run. Are we ready to get started? Yep. So. Yeah. All right. So time starts when I hit this button. So three, two, one, go. Woo! All right. So <laughs> welcome. This is a Super Mario Galaxy 120 stars. So this category collects every single one of the 120 power stars in this game is one of the two playable characters. Uh, and we're playing as Luigi. So right away, we're saving time because there's a five minute intro cutscene you completely skipped as Luigi. So as Mario, this part of the run happens about five hours in. So. Uh, I'm going to actually leave it to the commentators to explain a few things at the beginning of this run because this first level is really hard and I'm nervous. So why don't you two explain bunnies and then um, I will come back in later. Sounds good. Yeah, thankfully bunnies is a, I'd say a relatively simple part of the run. It can be a very frustrating part of the run, but usually at around our level where we're okay with it. We basically just have to catch three rabbits um, which we do by shooting starbits at them. We also have some camera setups. You'll see MKK send us his camera here um, to get a nicer angle for catching this rabbit. Um, and then we hop into this pipe here on our left, and the final rabbit, uh, the final bunny will just jump out. We send it the camera immediately. We don't. Uh, I actually, don't. Actually, MKK doesn't send it the camera. That's usually what I do. Um, I'm one of the only people then, who yeah, doesn't send it the, the camera rabbit. there, but I find it easier. Yeah. 114 bunnies, <laughs> we're in business. I didn't lose 30 yeah. seconds to bunnies like I did in the last no reset of this game. I did. Yeah. All right. Let's go. <laughs> so like you're gonna notice this is a cutscene, and you're gonna notice that the text is in Japanese. Um, so I'm playing this game on the Japanese uh, digital download on the Wii U Virtual Console. So there's two like main versions of the game that are used for speedrunning. One is this version, and the other is the Switch version, the 3D All Stars version. That version is faster, but I don't like it, so I don't play on it. There's really no justification for it other than that. So um, <laughs> I. I, I prefer this version, and I'm also playing 
with two-player mode, which means I'm using two Wiimotes at once. And this is another thing I'm going to let my commentators explain, because it will flow very nicely into the first um, little skip of the run, which hopefully I will get. Yeah, take this one, Gamut. Uh, so, QP, uh, the two-player mode unlocks a lot of, like, a lot of different time saves in the run, the main one being just uh, the new movement options. You'll see a lot of, like, 2P jumps, which are basically jumps in midair. Uh, and uh, another useful feature it has, which uh, is really good for 120, is just how much easier it makes collecting star bits, which in 120, you're going to need to collect a lot of star bits. Uh, you'll see later, specifically in Sling Pod, uh, using two-player mode saves a lot of time. No, it's it's so over. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You backing it up? I'm gonna try. Oh ho! That was oh, like nice. the absolute <laughs> lowest you can get that jump. So yeah, that, that is gateway really skips. That looks yeah. simple. It's not simple. Um, that is actually a glitched triple jump that goes higher than you're supposed to be able to. I'm really surprised I got that on the backup because it requires a very specific angle setup that's camera dependent. Um, but that saves like 10 seconds if you get it first try, so. Yeah, so, also, quickly before I explain that, we have a 4-frame jump here to skip this Luma text box, Ooh. which MKK has hit. Nice, that, that saves was the 12 first seconds. Frame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it, it it sounds punishing, uh, but that Luma text box really does take 12 seconds if you uh, end up in that conversation. But yeah, like I said, we want to jump on the four, first uh. four frames of landing on the ground. Um, which stops the conversation from starting, and we can just shake away and move on with the rest of the the room. All right, which bit of MKK a sloppy, bit of a sloppy gateway, but I got both major tricks for um, not first try. I got both major tricks that I wanted to show, so that is that's great. So yeah, um, two play, uh, two player mode. When they were making two player mode in this game, they kind of like didn't put a lot of like thought or effort into uh, really fleshing it out. It's mainly like the the um, the thing that that you like give your friend when they come over to play Super Mario Galaxy with you, but the game only has one player. Uh, that's what I did as a kid, anyway. I I wanted to be Mario. I didn't want to be the, the stupid little cursor floating around. So basically, the 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 main thing that makes two player mode useful. You saw me. I did a two P jump to get into the gravity field of that other planet. And two P jumps are not intended. They're actually a bug in the game. The there's a um, grounded 2P jump you can do by pressing both A buttons at the same time, which makes you go a lot higher. And you're going to see a few of those, but the main thing is the mid-air 2P jump, which allows you to just do that grounded 2P jump in air. And that's incredibly useful because there's a lot of vertical platforming in this game, and we're going to get um, a ton of... We're going to be able to get a ton of height uh, off of places we wouldn't normally be able to get that much height, and it's going to save a lot of time throughout the run. Also, text is terrible, and I'm notoriously bad at it. Someone want to explain <laughs> why text is awful in this game? Um, yeah, so the way that text scrolling in this game uh, works is that you hold A until the text box finishes, and then you press A to finish the text box. So instead of like a game like Odyssey, for instance, where you just mash A and B as fast as you can, uh, there is actually a decent amount of skill to text mashing in this game. Um, and you kind of get better at, at it as you play the game more, because you learn how long each text box is. Because uh, that's basically the best way to go about it. Um, and in a five and a half hour run, you can imagine how many text boxes you have to get used to skipping through. Um, so yeah, it can be a bit of an annoyance, which is why MKK mentioned having issues with it uh, in the past. Yeah, I used to have a file of notes that had a list of how long every single text box is back when I hadn't, like, run this game that much. But now that I have played it a lot, I'm, I've gotten a lot better, especially at the text at the beginning of the run, uh, just because I have the muscle memory down a bit better. Um, so that, that rules, honestly. Pardon? <laughs> that rules. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're heading into the first level. This is Good Egg Galaxy. So we're going to be doing all the stars, obviously, but the route's going to be uh, not necessarily covering every star and every dome. And the first little trick that I'm going to do, I think one of my commentators can explain this trick as well as its interesting name. <laughs> Go for it, Gamma. 
So, uh, MKK just did a Mogus climb there. Uh, I the, reason, the, re the reason why it's named that is because uh, the side of the tower that you see when doing it kind of looks like an Among Us character. And uh, I don't know the exact amount of time it saves. It's but, like one uh, second or two or something like that. It's not, not a lot, but it's a really cool trick. <laughs> yeah. I think we like doing it at marathons just so we can say the name, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so there you saw a skip, which is normally you're supposed to kill a piranha plant to grow a vine, and you're supposed to do that again here, but like gravity exists in this game. And this is going to be a major theme with a lot of the tricks in this game. Wow, that was an interesting long jump. Um, which is that the developers forgot the game is in 3D, and the developers forgot you can jump. There are a lot of tricks in this game that just let you completely skip entire portions of levels literally just by jumping into a gravity field that's in another part of the the planet that you're already on. And that's um, going to be a major recurring theme as we get deeper into the game. So this is Dino Piranha, first boss. It teaches us to use the spin mechanic because you're meant to spin the tail back at it. And the major hurdle with this boss is that getting hit loses like 20 million years because you do this really long animation for some reason. And there I shot a couple of starvits at the boss to slow it down a bit, making it easier for me to hit the tail on the uh, big swing that it does. That was actually a really good fight. Um, so, yeah, the, the uh, major tricks that I do in this game are a lot of them just gravity based and based around uh, getting a high enough jump to get into a different gravity field. And that's the first level of the game. One down, 118 to go. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I actually learned something there. I didn't know you could shoot uh, Dino Piranha to slow it down. I, 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 I'm learning things and I'm on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we get the tutorial for Starbits. So Starbits are the major collectible in this game, besides coins. Obviously coins are like the classic thing, but they don't do anything in this game. They're literally not useful at all. The main, the main thing you can do with coins in this game is try to get the maximum possible coin score in every level. Yay. So... Yeah, everybody does that. Yeah, nobody <laughs> does that. I mean, there is actually like a leaderboard for it on Cyberscore, but the main thing is Starbits. So here yeah, you're going to see a Hungry Luma in this level. And that's this dude right here. Hungry Lumas ask for a certain number of star bits, and when you feed them, they transform into something. And actually in this level, there's a pretty tight route for getting enough star bits for the Hungry Luma by the time you get to the planet that it's on. But there are also Hungry Lumas in the Comet Observatory, the hub world of the game, and those require a lot more star bits. So this one requires 100 star bits, so I'm going out of my way a little bit to collect some star bits. Here's a nice little skip. You're meant to use full stars to get into this launch star, but you can just two p jump into it. Um, so you're you're the hungry loom is in the observatory. The the one that requires the most requires 1,800 star bits. So you need a lot of star bits to up the run. And I'm going to be picking up absolutely every single one that I see. And hopefully, ideally, um, you actually don't have to grind any star bits at all during the run. If you are really, really, really optimal about collecting them absolutely everywhere. So that is not easy, and it certainly takes some game knowledge, but it's definitely doable, and it's one of the coolest parts of optimizing this category because you start as a runner who has to, you know, grind hundreds, if not thousands of star bits over the course of the run, and you slowly are able to, like, chunk that number down until you get to basically not, not doing any farming at all, which is a really gratifying thing to optimize because it's like a number that you can watch go go up as you continue. Um, I don't know if my commentators have had any Starbit related experiences, but I've personally had, oh, that's an interesting bonk. I've personally had runs die to not having enough Starbits, but this run won't, won't be dying to that. Uh, I think one of mine, I at the end of the run, the last, at least for me, the last uh, Hungry Loomer in the observatory that we feed is for Big Mouth. I had exactly 800 Starbits once. Oh. If I had one Starbit left, my run would have... I think it was a no reset, but yeah, the run would have been completely over at that point uh, if I had one Starbit less, which was kind of funny. So there's a... 
fast cycle there that I would have gone for, but I messed up the movement on the previous planet. Also, skip there. You don't need to get the pole star chips to get to that star. Um, the major, one of the major uh, things with cycles in this game is that things off screen are often deloaded and not moving. So you're going to see some cycles in the game where I need to manipulate the camera in a specific way or have good movement in a specific part of the level so that I can get a, a cycle in a later part of the level. And that's going to be used a lot in the, in the run in order to make cycles easier. So this is the first divergence from the NE% percent where we're heading to Good Egg 3. Commentators, what are your thoughts on Good Egg 3? Because I actually think that my opinion of this level is better than most people's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I kind of agree. It's definitely my least favorite Good Egg Star. Interesting. I, I don't hate it. I used to hate it because I was bad at bridge skip, but I'm okay at it That's nowadays. Fair. So. so I'm going to be um, picking up those star bits there with a spin cancel, and I'm going to let one of y'all explain what a spin cancel is. You want to go for a gamut? Uh, I mean, I don't really know how to go into Ooh. a detailed explanation, but uh, you can spin and then instantly, like, single jump or long jump or backflip or pretty much, like, most kind of movement options to quickly, like, move away from somewhere after spinning. Saves, saves a little bit of time in a few places. Mm -hmm. So, the... Main thing about spinning is that it's a lot slower than just like running around on the ground. So we want to be doing, uh, we want to be wasting minimal time with it. Also, here I'm going to go for something called an insta walk, which is where um, if you turn directly before going through a launch star, it will cancel the landing animation out of the launch star. And I actually got it there, so that saves a decent amount of time. Nice. This is bridge skip. That's what Kyle was talking about. That looks easy, but there's an invisible wall there. But once you know where yeah. the invisible wall is, it's really easy to go around it. Uh, there's actually, yeah. like, you can just look at it with a level editor and see the invisible wall. Um, but the other way to cancel the landing animation is with camera cancels, which is where you go in and out of first person right when you land, and you're going to see those everywhere. Uh, so I will I will talk about it next time one shows up. And here I'm doing Fast Caliente. Uh-oh, that's a weird coconut position. Uh, let's do this. So, I actually missed it, but that's okay. So, oh no, this is going terrible. So, King Caliente here... I'm just gonna go. King Caliente here fires out coconuts and fireballs, and if you... You can actually freeze the coconuts with 2P for some reason. I don't know why that is, but if you freeze it far enough away from him, he'll actually shoot out another coconut. And you can hit two back at him at the same time, which allows you to get a double hit. And that was not the normal version of the strat, but I did it just to kind of show off the idea. And that probably wasn't very much faster, but there you go. So that's that's the, the idea of it anyway. And I've actually also positioned myself so that I'm right next to the star, because the star spawns right here. So that's a, that's a boss fight with a lot of intricacy to it, but it's actually pretty cool once you dive into the nitty-gritty a little bit. All right. Yeah, Hang on. <laughs> no, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just, just going to say there's a lot of micromanaging in Caliente because you're worried about the fireballs, you're worried about the star bits, you're worried about the coconuts, you're worried about what position you're in because you need to grab the star right after. There's a lot of things to keep track of considering it's such a simple boss fight in premise. All right, so now we come to the first major skip in the game. Uh, this is Honey Hive 1 skip, and I will explain it, but when I actually get into the level, I'm going to have uh, my commentators take over. So you saw at the beginning in the, that first camera pan there, there's a big tree off to the left side. On top of that tree is the end of the level. And uh, normally you're meant to go through like a minute long section to get to the end of the level, but I'm not going to be doing that, and I'm going to uh, focus for a second here. If someone wants to explain what's going on. You can take it if you want, Gibbet. Uh, so basically to get to the other tree where the end is, there's another big tree right next to it, and MKK is going to be climbing to the top of that one, and uh, doing slope climbing. Uh-oh, this is a bad angle. The... Okay, I'm actually going to need to back this up by doing this version, but that's okay. 
That's not okay because I don't remember it. Okay, so that that was a uh, I got a bit of a weird angle there because I messed up the movement and didn't set up my camera properly, but that's okay. It's easy to try this again. So slope climbing is a tech in this game where you can climb slopes that you normally are only able to slide down. Why isn't he belly sliding? This is a weird... This is weird. This is strange. Oh no, not again. Oh, that's silly. So, yeah, I should probably focus for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Gamut explain slope climbing. Uh, so, for whatever reason, uh, the developers of this game did not, like, did not bother preventing people from spinning after jumping in the same direction as a slope. So as long as you're go going down the slope when you jump, you can just spin and go backwards and continue to climb up a slope. Okay, that and was a little rough, but we we did it. <laughs> yeah, you can, um, you can just like abuse the way slopes are programmed in this game to just completely avoid any slope-related uh, time losses, which is actually really nice. Like, the slopes are... Slopes are menaces. Especially in Galaxy 2. Slopes in Galaxy 2 are just... Ooh. But that game... That game has awful slopes. Yeah, we're... We're thankfully not playing G2. Oh my god. <laughs> I am... I am so happy that this is not Galaxy 2. Otherwise, I would be a lot more nervous for this run. Um... So, the... Yeah, unfortunately I did uh, mess up the setup a couple times, but the slopes are a little fickle, and it can be hard to get a good angle. And because I didn't get a good angle, I wasn't doing a, a setup that I was used to, and I tried the backup at the back of the boy work. But thankfully we, we got it eventually. And Honey Hive 2, I'm going to actually be quiet again for a bit, because they're, this level is very movement intensive, and I kind of want to focus if the commentators are willing to explain what's going on here. I'm going to be doing something very similar, climbing up another tree to skip basically like half the level. Yeah, I can I can take this one. So Honey Hive 2, the start, looks very similar to Honey Hive 1 because we need to get up to the same tree as before, except this time it's actually intended for us to go up there. Um, Honey Hive 2 is a very vertical level. We're trying to get to the top of the windmill that you saw and the cutscenes at the start. So we use a lot of 2P jumps. Uh, so that's one, that's the second one, then there'll be another one here after this backflip once we get on top of the pole. Um, and this one's weird because that camera change is forced, um, so you kind of have to deal with the camera there. Uh, I've already lost count of the number of 2P jumps. Uh, also, I'm not sure if we mentioned before, every time MKK does a 2P jump, they have to hit uh, a 6 frame window between the shake and ground pound input for it to actually work, so it... It, it, it does seem like a, I guess, a simple movement tech, even though it's unintended, but there is a, there is a, like, a, like, there are some harsh inputs being put in each mm -hmm. time, uh, each time it's done. Even once you've got the muscle memory down, you still mess it up from time to time. Yeah, at the bottom but, of the yeah, windmill there, you saw me miss a 2P jump, so I just did a ground pound and ended up just landing on the ground. And the reason why that happened is because I did not hit the, the frame window for the uh, homing ground pound in input, which is just done by shaking and ground pounding in quick succession. Um, and the reason the reason we like think it's a bug and not an intended feature is that you need to do like this very specific input within like a specific frame window, even though the the move itself doesn't require that large it doesn't require that small of a frame window to actually be done. So a homing ground pound in the wrong place can spell death because you if you miss a 2P jump, sometimes you just ground pound into a pit and die. And that is a yeah. <laughs> very frustrating way to lose time, if I if I can put it lightly. So here, you're seeing me go out of my way for star bits a little bit, and that's because those are all really quick to get. <clears throat> and coming up here, I'm going to be doing a trick called B-less. So normally you're meant to collect a bee mushroom here in this level but I'm actually going to be skipping it using 2P jumps. And the depth perception on these jumps is actual garbage. It's so hard to get these consistently. Nice, that's the first one. 
And that's the second one. Nice. All right, so this nice. is... Dang. Good job. So now that's we're cool. we're fighting Bugaboom, and Bugaboom is a boss fight where you are meant to use the Bee Mushroom, and we're going to be using the Bee Mushroom approximately not at all. So the way that you kill Bugaboom is by ground pounding on its back three times. However, there's actually some trickiness in that Bugaboom will turn in there if you don't do the ground pound in the proper spot. And here I'm setting up for the fast third hit. Nice, I got it. That's good. So that, nice. that's actually good. tricky because Bugaboom is turning while you're doing that hit. So if you're just a little bit too slow, you'll just ground pound past Bugaboom and hit the ground and have to back it up. And backing that up is like genuinely impossible. So I'm really glad that I got that. All right. Yeah. Also, um, all right. Oh, yeah. I was gonna. No, you can before, continue uh, before you talk about Luke Doop. Yeah. Uh, while we're still on the topic of 2P jumps, or at least before we leave it, um, we don't know exactly why. I've spoken to Purple Sun about this, who's a, a pretty well known tasser of the Galaxy games. From the, the, the main running theory for why mid air 2P jumps works is that shaking and ground pounding within six frames seems to trick the game that you're on the floor, which allows us to do a grounded 2P jump, which is intended by Nintendo, um, while in the air. But you um, don't have to press both A buttons, yeah. which you do have to do when you're doing one off the ground. So, yeah, weird. It's all weird, but I'm glad it exists <laughs> because it makes the game a lot more interesting as a speed game. So this is yeah, uh, Loop De Loop, and this is going to be the first instance of the uh, uh, me doing something very interesting with my Wiimotes in order to be able to play the level. So someone can explain that while I'm doing this here. Uh, yes, I can explain it. Uh, this is one of the first like big like advantages that 2P has over 1P in the run because uh, while with 1P you normally don't have your cursor while controlling uh, the manta ray, with 2P you do still have that one cursor to collect star bits with as you're doing the track. And you can usually get, I think it's like around 100 yeah, star bits. Yeah, it's like 100. Yeah, which makes a big difference. So whenever I was learning this game, I saw that people were doing this. And so I'm actually holding right now. So normally I keep my Wiimotes attached together um, with Velcro, but I actually detach them. Like I detach the Velcro and I'm now holding one Wiimote in each hand. And I'm actually steering the Manta Ray with my left hand while collecting Star Bits with my right. This is hard, like genuinely difficult. And not only that, I am extremely right-handed. Like I can't do anything with my left hand. So whenever I was <laughs> learning I this that. game, it was a struggle learning how to control this Manta Ray optimally. And I'm playing this a little safe because this is a marathon run, but normally your, your way of going fast with the, in the Manta Ray surfing levels is just standard racing rules. So take tight lines, try to cut corners as much as possible, try to go straight as much as possible. And um, the star bits are arguably more important than actually like getting a really, really optimal race time. If I get a really solid race, I should get a 57 usually. Otherwise, I think I'm going to get a 58 here. Yeah. So that's okay. Low 58 is still, uh, still decent enough, still acceptable. Um, some people, aka like basically like one person, can get 55s on that race, but I don't know how they do that. So yeah. <laughs> the. The community gold in this level is like two years old because it's so good that nobody can beat it. Uh, shout outs no to kidding. Mr. Cloud Kirby, known for being a 1P runner, so therefore losing time everywhere and still having better movement than like 99% of people who run this game. Uh, he is really, really, really fantastic at the movement in this game, and he does pretty much everything as optimally as you can with one controller and his his gameplay is very very impressive to watch and he was also the person i watched to learn this run uh because when i started learning this game he had a world record in this category so that's a he has left a big impact on this run but unfortunately he is actually uh, retired from speed running the game now got busy with real life i think which is a bit sad so this level Understandable. major skip right at the beginning uh were you gonna say something sorry no go ahead go ahead yeah, so this is the, this is the, uh, this is a big time saver right here. So because this boss, you're meant to run on this boss, this is Mega Leg. Um, the gravity field on this planet is massive, and you can just jump into it. And so huh. 
This is the first Bowser Jr. boss fight. Usually Bowser Jr. fights you with some kind of machine or, or mech or whatever, and when you fight against Bowser, you just duke it out the old-fashioned way. Uh, so here we're gonna see it's Luigi versus Giant Robot, and unfortunately this fight's a little one-sided, uh, but not in the Giant Robot's favor because we're gonna take it down pretty easily. So this fight is mainly just based around bullet bills, and bullet bills in this game, they follow you, they home in on you, but they can be a little weird, and sometimes they tend to uh, like crash into the ground or randomly turn up into the air. And here I'm actually going to, there's going to be a bunch of star bits that pop out of the robot, and I'm actually going to leave these star bits behind because I'm going to go for a trick called star bit duping. So all of these star bits are going to fall in the same spot for whatever reason, they just all fall in exactly the same spot. And that makes duping in this level really viable. So if star bits touch you at like the same time you uh, touch a star and the star cutscene starts, you collect them twice. I think I might have gotten it. So a perfect dupe in this level, you'll get 52 star bits instead of 28 because you dupe 24 star bits. Um, and we'll see in the, the menu screen after this how many star bits I duped. But now we're going to be heading to Fountain, and le I'll, I'll let my commentators talk about Fountain, because Fountain is quite the interesting uh, level. Fountain being the next dome, domes sort of acting like worlds in this game, or, or you know, collections of levels that you can, you can go to. So commentators, what do you think of Fountain? Not the biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice uh, yeah. way of wording it. Fountain is host to a lot of finicky tricks, very hard tricks, hard levels, um, levels with really tight parameters for completion, stuff like that. Um, we'll get to each and every one as we uh, as we move through the stars. But uh, yeah, I think especially in the first hour of this run, this is definitely the most hated of the Tomb Domes we play. Mm -hmm. I think most Galaxy Runners would consider Fountain to be the hardest dome out of all of them, which is saying a lot because there's some hard levels in the later domes. But yeah, I know that a lot of us can can sympathize with the experience of resetting, like get, finally getting a decent run out of Terrace only to lose it right away in Fountain. And uh, Base Junk 1 be, is this first level here, and it's going to contain a skip. A pretty notorious skip at that, so um, Gamma, do you want to explain Space Junk 1's skip while I focus for a bit? Yeah, so this trick is probably one of the most hated tricks in the Galaxy community just because of how like finicky it is. Uh, basically, normally you have to go through a lot of uh, pull stars and then you land on three different planets where you collect star chips and then you make it to the next section, but um, using the momentum you get from using a pull star and letting First go right try. before you reach it. Yes. Yeah, you can just skip straight to this section. So that might not look like much, but that is... So in order to kind of explain... Oh god, I got stuck on the rock. Oh no. Oh, that's really hard to back up because the momentum in these things is terrible. Okay, so... First of all, there's a trick here. You're meant to break a bunch of crystals to spawn a toad ship that lets you get in the launch star, but you can just jump. It's, it's easy. And uh, basically, backwards momentum in this game is weird. Um, you like get more momentum when you're facing away from the direction that you're moving. So you need to like break out of that pull star when Luigi's orientation is very specific and get um, enough backwards momentum that you can make your way to that planet because if you break out of the pole star at the wrong time you actually just won't won't make it to that planet you won't have enough speed and i think now is an appropriate time to give a big shout out to tibbs one who is the former world record holder in this category and also the current world record holder of one of the any percent categories any percent mario um, they are incredibly incredibly good at this game and they found a setup that actually makes space jump one skip significantly easier and they've actually found a lot of strats and contributed a ton to this game um, and also been a big 
uh, proponent of some of the more interesting optimizations. And they've actually also taught me a bunch of stuff. So I am very, very grateful for uh, them. They've contributed a lot to the community. And yeah. Uh, so Space Junk 2 has a really interesting um, little set of pre-run manipulations that are done. And before I talk about that, I'm actually going to be trying to do more cycle-based movement in this level. So I re if you recall earlier, I talked about how certain levels have cycles that only move when they're on screen. So ideally here, I'm going to, I've lined up the cycle such that I can go for a trick called bridge skip, which is, no, I didn't get it. I also didn't get these star bits for some reason. So I'm actually going to go and grab them real quick because they're really important. Um, so I didn't get bridge skip there. Bridge skip is based on the cycles of these, these dudes. But did that shell just miss? The bridge skip I is didn't based. See what happened? <laughs> bridge skip is based on the cycles the of these dudes that throw fireballs at you. Um, if you get one of them to throw a fireball at a good time, uh, I actually want to show this. This is cool. If you get one of them to throw a fireball at a good time, you can actually um, burn yourself up onto this bridge and skip killing them. I missed it. If that's sad, back up. Good. So that was a, Ooh, if you spin what? cancel with a long jump, shells actually like can't quite catch up to you. And you can use that to do slightly faster movement there. Uh, but I unfortunately messed it up. So someone want to explain Camilla Uh I can go for it. Uh, so basically the way that Camilla works is that on the first and second phase, uh, she shoots an array of fireball, shell, fireball, shell, and so on and so forth. Uh, and on the third phase, she shoots fireball, fireball, shell, and then fireball, fireball, shell again. Um, but this is actually consistent. Uh, where Camilla is in the cycle is consistent since your uh, Wii U has been powered on, since the game has been open. Um, so what we can do is before the run, we can come into this level and basically set up Camilla so that she will instantly throw a shell at the start of every single phase. Um, which I think saves us about 10-15 seconds over waiting out the fireballs. Um, so yeah, it saves us a little bit of time. It's a nice little quirk in the game's actual like mechanics that allows us to save a little bit. It's really weird that it works because it's weird that it's like programmed that way for the it not just to be consistent, but for the the shells and fireballs to be on a global cycle based on that that only turning the game off actually does. So yeah, before the run started, I went into a completed file. I set up Camilla Cycles in the correct spot. I reset the game. I started a new game and Camilla Cycles were still in the same spot. I I don't know. I don't know why that works. So here is another level where I'm collecting star bits to feed a hungry Luma. So I'm going to be trying to get 50 star bits by the time I get to the planet with the Luma on it. And here I have to go into first person for a little bit here and grab some of those star bits on that, that rocket ship over there. And if you, like, collect every single star bit in the beginning section of this level, you have just enough, there we go, to feed the Hungry Luma. And that's actually 50 star bits. Normally I'd have to go and break this crystal, but... I had slightly suboptimal movement, which meant more star bits fell onto the spaceship, so I'm actually going to be saving all that time back. And we are going to feed this hungry Luma and then leave, because there are there is a slight delay before you can go through launch stars whenever they spawn, and it's actually faster for us to leave that for later. And that's glass clip. If you uncrouch and spin. Uh, it shifts your hitbox down, and it's enough to go through the glass there and enter that launch star instead of going inside that planet underneath the glass and uh, going through it. And here Toad is stuck in that sling pod. We're just going to leave him forever, like, because we, we can just jump. And then here you're meant to use the sling pod again to get to this planet, but we can do a well-timed toopy jump and make it up here. Uh, that's a pretty cool strat. And now we're going to be fighting uh, uh, Terran Tox, which is a big poisonous spider. This fight is awful. There's a strat here that I don't do because I literally have tried for hours to learn it and I can't even get it consistently. Um, so the, the, the gimmick of this fight is, what? Well, you're meant to use the sling pods to 
hit the spider in the butt, and then it flips over, revealing these gross red things on the bottom of it, which you need to hit. Um, and there I used Toad, who's stuck in a sling pod, to hit one of the bumps on the bottom. And you can actually, if your timing is extremely good, you can shoot Toad into the into the back of the spider, like, as the second phase starts. Oh no, I'm getting absolutely demolished here. Let's... there we go. So, I'm trying to stun it because it normally turns to follow Luigi, and the only way you can quickly get behind it is by shooting yourself into its face to stun it, but you gotta do it kind of fast before it starts firing uh, poison at you. Um, so the... the... So I can't, there is technically a faster way to do that boss by skipping, sort of going around the spider on the second phase, but it's, I just can't, I just don't know how to do it, like genuinely. I, I've never been able to get it consistent, and I've put a decent amount of time into trying to learn it. So yeah, Space Junk 3, very, very awful level, and I'm very glad I'm done with it, because that level is terrible. Speaking of terrible levels, we're going into another terrible level right here. <laughs> and oh, no. I think I can uh, let the commentators explain this one. This is Sling Pod. Go for it, Gamma. <laughs> yeah, so you already saw how jank the um, Sling Pods were in the Tarantox fight in Space Junk 3. So right after Space Junk 3, we get to do a level where the entire focus is using those Sling Pods to move around. And, uh... It's pretty difficult to aim them, like, not only in the correct direction, but also, like, quickly to be able to make, like, a fast cycle at the very end. And, uh, this level also, uh, shows, like, how useful 2P is for Starbit collection, because normally, if you weren't using 2P, you'd have to take a few intentional deaths to collect a lot of Starbits here. But just from how many extra Starbits you collect throughout the run with 2P, you can actually go through this level completely deathless. That's the ideal. Um, if I die, it, it's an accident. My PB actually dies in this level, so if I, I'll be saving time over my PB if I manage to not screw it up too badly. Luckily, the cycle at the beginning isn't very strict, but the cycle at the nice the cycle at the end can be a little daunting. But uh, I get the benefit of, I'm a little low on Starbits, so I'm actually going to pick up this coin here to spawn a few more. Uh, that's one of the, one of the, uh, most beneficial times you can go out of the way. Uh, I'm dead. So, there I hit the fire bar, and it kind of looks like I could just, like, fire boost into the sling pod. No! If you sling yourself into a fire bar, you can't move in the air for some reason when you're in the fire boost animation. And that is one of the most frustrating ways to die in this level because you just barely nudge the fire bar and you... Uh, uh, okay, you barely nudge the fire bar and you're just condemned to death, even if you totally could get into the sling pod. So because of that uh, unintentional death, it didn't lose that much time, but I actually get the benefit of picking up about 50 additional star bits, which should cut out, um, should, should give me a pretty comfortable buffer for star bits for the rest of the run. So that's nice. Uh, so that, good. that level went about as well as you can expect it to. I'm, I'm not really that cut up over the death. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, this, this level here, Sweet Sweet, is the next Hungry Luma, uh, level. So you saw I fed a Hungry Luma to get to Sling Pod, and that Hungry Luma asked for 400 star bits. So this Hungry Luma also asks for 400 Star Bits, so if you're like me and doing a very tight early game Star Bit route, you can actually get to this level and not have enough, and just not be able to complete your run, because uh, you just don't end up finishing Sling Pod with enough Star Bits to feed that Hungry Luma. And if I hadn't uh, picked up the backup Star Bits, and if I hadn't died, I would have been just barely over, I would have had maybe 10, 15 extra Star Bits compared to how many I would need which is kind of uh, scary when you're actually on good pace because the Starbit collection is very skill-based and it's very knowledge-based. You need to have good aim with your cursors and you need to um, also know where all the Starbits are. Speaking of aim with your cursors, I also have a hand tremor. So it's like aiming my cursors precisely is already difficult for me, let alone when I'm nervous and in a level that requires very precise cursor aim. So this is sweet, sweet. This level is the long jump simulator. This is like all you do in this level. Ideally, I want to yeah. get one smooth chain of continuous long jumps. 
And I guess uh, someone can talk about like chaining long jumps in this game. Oh, this is a little sketchy. Uh, well, I guess on the topic of changing long jumps, we can mention RSLJs. Ooh, that's a good uh, idea. Yeah, running speed long jumps. Uh, basically, uh, you'll see whenever MKK lands out of a long jump, Luigi crouches for a brief moment before going back to running again. Um, but we can actually avoid this little bit of slowdown by either initiating the first long jump by pressing crouch and A on the same frame, or by long jumping right on the edge of a platform. Um, and once you've gotten RSLJs going, consecutive frame perfect A presses uh, will basically put you in an RSLJ chain, um, which allows you to keep a very small amount of speed, but it still does matter. And even some, I think even in some places, getting an RSLJ is important for like certain movement strats and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it is uh, it is an interesting piece of tech that you would never notice if it w if it wasn't pointed out. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So it normally cool they're frame perfect, movement. but if you long jump like off of the very edge of a platform, you actually like always get one. So you're gonna see a yeah. few spots in the run where I'm going to have to long jump off the edge of a platform. That's not for distance; it's for speed. And also, um, they're frame perfect in Galaxy One, but not in Galaxy Two. So Galaxy Two runners have it easy. You heard it here first. Anyway, this level has a trick. This level is Battle Rock 1, and it has a trick, a pretty infamous trick, known as Battle Rock Out of Bounds. So this used to be one of the hardest tricks in the run, and I actually put a lot of time into practicing it and got really, really good at it. And then a setup was not discovered, but rediscovered and implemented by a lot of top runners. So hopefully I... Oh, that was a terrible first attempt. So what I'm trying to do here is skip an auto-scroller by getting out of bounds. Having a bit of trouble with it, but that's... Okay, I'm going to focus for a second. That should be good. Nice. Okay, so um, nice. now I'm out of bounds, and this this looks slow because I am going to have to slowly make my way to the end of the level, but this auto-scroller moves so slowly, and this actually saves a decent amount of time. Maybe, like, if you have really, really good execution, it can save maybe 20 seconds, and... There's a lot of skips in this game that because there's certain stars where you need to do uh, movement more than once. Uh-oh. It's actually possible for me to die here, but I think I'm good. We're good. We're good. Um, you can actually save double the amount of time. So this this skip, uh, you do it once in the normal star and once in the secret star. So it actually saves double the amount of time if you can do it. Uh, and it used to be one of those tricks where you were kind of just like banking on the on whether you got it or not, and you used to, the old setup, you only had one attempt at it because you had to start the auto-scroller actually moving before you could do the trick, but with that new setup, uh, which uses a glitched triple jump similar to what I did in Gateway, it's actually possible to get it, um, actually possible to have multiple attempts at it. And so that trick has a long and very storied history, and it's actually, um, it's actually very, uh, it's very notorious in the community. It's killed a lot of good runs. And, you know, it used to be that getting a run with both out of bounds, because you do both of those levels at any percent, was like the holy grail, you know, good good run. But now it's, uh, it's a lot more reasonable to get a run with both of them. Also, I saw that someone in chat mentioned the trash cleaning minigame. Um, I'm going to be doing that in about maybe like 10 minutes. Uh, it's coming up right uh, after this level, there will be this level and then a couple more levels. And then I'm going to be doing the, the trash mini game. So if you're interested in seeing how speedrunners conquer that, uh, make sure to stick around because that was the bane of many people's childhoods. And in response to another person who asked, I'm playing on the Wii, although the Switch is faster. I just prefer the Wii version. So someone want to talk about the Space Junk S? You can go for it, Gunnett. Uh, so basically, you just have this Yoshi planet with a bunch of Goombas on it, and uh, I I don't actually know if the Goombas, like where they initially start, are um, RNG or not. But uh, since your movement's probably gonna be slightly different no matter what, they're always gonna end up in different places. So um, if they're very spread out, you can lose a lot of time here. But if they're close together, you can get the star pretty quickly. Yeah, so really you notice, you notice it like tracks the number of bounces, which 
You, you kind of like to try and bounce on as many Goombas as possible. Um, again, you can utilize that backwards momentum, but the like my my record for the most bounces I've gotten, I think it's like 13 or something. Uh, and there, the maximum I got was eight, which is rare, and eight gives you a one up, so that's kind of kind of cute. But yeah, so the Goombas' initial positions are not random, but they move randomly because they sort of just walk around. So, and because there's so many Goombas on that planet, being able to like consistently get a solid planet is just tricky. It's really, really tricky. Um, and my gold in that level is actually really good. So like every run I do, I lose a ton of time to my gold because I just, I save so much time by, in my gold by just getting good luck with where the Goombas are. And that's pretty much, um, that's like a very small instance of, of luck of RNG in the run. There's a big one, but other than like a couple of levels here and there, uh, RNG doesn't play too much into this run. There's there's not a, a ton of it, but the spots where you can get bad RNG can be extremely frustrating. Uh, and here we're in Space Junk Comet. This is the same level as Space Junk 1, but with an extremely generous timer. And I did not get the skip first try this time, so here's the backup. Uh, hopefully this works. It looks good. Uh, let's try this. I don't know if this angle is good enough, but it might be. Okay, I could have gotten it there, but I actually held... I was holding the wrong control stick angle, unfortunately. So let's try it again. There we go. So that's actually a slightly different setup that is a I can do if I fail it. There's a decent number of setups for this. Um, so this, this level gives you four minutes to complete it. And to give you an idea of just how generous the timer is, if this level gave you one minute, you could still finish the level uh, in, the, in the time that the timer gives you. And if it gave you two minutes, you could still finish it with the intended strategies. Um, so you absolutely, they did not have to give you this much time, but they did. And I'm not going to be finishing it in one minute because unfortunately I did lose a little bit of time in this level. Um, but the sort of main thing that makes this level scary is that if you die, you go all the way back to the beginning. Normally there's a checkpoint at the beginning of this section with the silver stars, but um, this level does not have a checkpoint because the speedrun levels don't have checkpoints in them. So. Uh, you can end up being very punished if you die in that Silver Star section. I actually go for, like, really aggressive movement there. Uh, so, it's a good thing I didn't die. Thumbs up emoji. Um, yeah, this, this is a very scary trend, especially in the second half of the run of comets that will lose you minutes if you die in really mm -hmm. bad spots. Yeah, this game can be really punishing with deaths because deaths like just take a long time because of the the length of the animation um, but certain levels you can just lose a ton of progress if you don't have a good like section in a certain level and and sometimes um, deaths in this game can can just be caused by like pure jank and not necessarily something that you actually did incorrectly because this game has a decent amount of jank in it despite I think still very much holding up today as a uh, a good game so this is another level where I'm doing manipulation for a cycle so I'm actually keeping a, a certain planet at the end of the level off screen here at the beginning in order to get a good cycle on that and here I'm going to be holding these chain chomps with 2p so that they break against each other and give me a bunch of star bits. And this is a weird suboptimal cycle here, but let's see if I can back it up. So these bombs take 10 seconds to explode. So as long as you get them into the spot you want them before they blow up, you don't really lose any time to that. And this hungry Luma needs 30 star bits, so I'm going to feed it and then leave again, because like I said in Space Junk, the Launch stars take a little bit of time when they load before you can go through them. So I'm going to be coming back and be doing this level. I'm going to be doing a level after this, and then I'm also going and then I'm going to be coming back and doing the secret star, which is the trash cleaning mini game. And here I'm actually going to do a little bit of a trick. I'm going to first person to put this launch star on screen. Normally you fly up past it and then back down into it, but by loading it earlier you can get it to trigger earlier and actually get into it earlier. Uh, and this section is really hard to do optimally. I hit the mine. That's okay. Uh, that was still relatively clean. And one of my commentators can talk about the cannon shots 
Because I think we've all had problems with the cannon shots in this level. Yeah. Thankfully, for those who play on 3D All-Stars, myself included, you can get a perfectly straight shot by using the, uh, the camera center button, but unfortunately MKK cannot. Um, but that's kind of the least of our worries here. So first we have to break this cage, then MKK goes into first person to change where the crystal is. You could see it moving while MKK was in first person there, because, you know, this game kind of has the theme of if it's, on if it's not on screen, it doesn't exist. We have a specific timing for that shot there to break the outer crystal and the inner crystal, and there's a specific timing also uh, with that shake there to get inside the launch star. If you shake either too early or too late, you get sent to the other side of the room, you have to blow up another cage and then shoot yourself into the launch star again, which loses a really annoying amount of time. I actually for, like, don't time that shake. A... I just go nuts on the Wiimote. Because... Do you? I usually miss it if I do that. Yeah, well... Um... <laughs> I don't know which, which controller you use to spin, but Wiimote spins buffer, so it doesn't cause a problem normally. And there, um, the reason I did all that cycle manipulation on the first planet and the reason I went into first person was to get that cage in the correct spot. Um, the mine was not intended. I'm not, I'm not that good. I'm not that good at... at uh, it's, I, I'm not that cool. I can't... Uh, I don't, I don't hit things intentionally and lose time. Uh, that's a, that, that, I could see how uh, you would think that though, because it does kind of look like I might get a straighter line, but unfortunately that was not optimal. And as Shasta just said, yeah, that shot with Luigi flying out the explosions, that's definitely something that as a kid, I was like, whoa, it's, a, it's very it's cool. It's so cool. And it's so cool. <laughs> this level is actually one of my favorites in the run. This has, this level has a ton of cool movement in it. This is uh, Battle Rock 3. And also a really interesting boss fight at the end. That is one of the main reasons why the 3D All-Stars version, or one of the main disadvantages the 3D All-Stars version has, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. So here I'm going to try to abuse backwards momentum again. There we go. So I was able to fall around that planet. And here I can get off this moving saucer like very slightly earlier if I just do a well-timed triple jump. Unfortunately, I didn't get it, but let's see if I can get this backflip. Eh, okay. So I didn't quite make that, but uh, the... Uh, that triple jump's finicky, and it's not super easy. So here I'm going to shoot a star bit at this hot man to try and knock it into the electric fence. And if you actually crouch, um, electric fences don't damage you. Like, in the code, it literally just has, if the player is crouching, don't damage them. And here, if you see this little, like, brown thing sticking out of the wall, that's actually the 2D background of the indoor section here. That's just, like, sticking out of the wall. They just forgot to... They just forgot to, like, make that... Uh, properly shaped and it's really funny that that is there uh but here you i pretty much just skipped like basically that entire indoor section by doing a jump into the other gravity field and there's a cycle with those pressures this enemy right here is a spring so you're meant to jump on it but i'm actually just going to backflip and tukey jump into this launch star i skipped the coin nice um unfortunately that doesn't matter because i don't go for coinless in this level and here I'm going to try, there's two top men in this room, I'm going to try to spin one into the electric fence and hit the other into the other electric fence to start it. And I didn't get it because I missed the shot, but that's okay. And if you jump here, you can ground pound into this launch star, save a little bit of time. So you notice from how much I'm saying, there's just a ton of small optimizations all over this level that make it really, really fun to pull off in a, in a speed run. Uh, especially if you get a really, really clean execution, which this was okay. And here's the boss fight. So this is Top Maniac. And the way you kill Top Maniac is by jumping onto its head to hit the button on its head and then uh, spinning it into the electric fence. Ooh, okay. And those, those spikes on it are actually hot. They like burn you when you touch them. So it's really finicky. And I think, well, Kyle and Gamut both play on the 3D All-Stars version. So I think one of them can explain why this fight is worse on the 3D All-Stars version. You can go for a gamut. <laughs> so for some reason, uh, so for Top Maniac, you actually fight him multiple times throughout this run. And uh, one of the fights against him on 3D All-Stars only, for whatever reason, uh, he will move a lot faster than usual, which makes it a lot harder to land on top of him to disable the spikes. And it's really annoying to uh, deal with that because you can lose a lot of time to just not being able to land on him. 
And for whatever reason, that does not exist on the Wii or Wii U version of the game. It's only on the Switch version. That's a really strange difference. But yeah, they the Switch version is faster, so Top Maniac pulls out the jukes to try and ruin your speed run. And uh, here, while I'm waiting for this bomb to go blow up, I can just go into first person quickly, collect a few more star bits. So this level is the famous trash minigame star. Uh, this was everybody, the bane of everybody's existence as a child, but it turns out that in speedruns, well, this is a children's game, so it's not actually that hard. And also, <laughs> there's a setup for it that makes it, you know, really, really easy to do. Like, I had trouble with this when I was 12 years old, but uh, I'm not 12 years old anymore. And if you just do it the same way every time, it's actually pretty consistent. So here I'm going to show the main reason why the bomb minigame is easier than you thought, and it's that you can ignite the bombs while they're sitting on the ground. And because the bombs take a fixed amount of time to actually explode, this makes it far easier to blow up all of the trash in time. And so a 16 on that level is actually optimal. Um, Usually you either get a 16 or a 15, assuming you don't mess up the setup. And a 15 just means you lost a little bit of time, but a 16 means that I actually got a good movement throughout the minigame itself. So that was... basically couldn't have asked for that level to go any better. And I also used the 2P uh, cursor to break the chomps again on the second planet in order to get uh, extra star bits. So um, I'm going to be doing Battle Rock Comet now, which is just a daredevil fight against top maniac which a daredevil comet is just a, a comet that gives you one health when you try to do a level um and uh, i don't think we really talked about prankster comets but they're basically just sort of additional challenges that remix a level you've already done to add something some new kind of twist to it and they are often bad stars but they are also often fast stars so you do a lot of them at any percent and I kind of like 120 for the reason that you do a lot of these slow non-comet stars in 120. Um, but while I'm doing this, uh, someone can explain star bit text boxes as well as coin text boxes because I don't think we've covered that yet. I can take that. So at the end of a level, uh, the game will tell you how many star bits and how many coins you've collected. Um, obviously, star bits are kind of a necessary evil for the run because we need so many of them for the Lumas and the Observatory. Um, but coins are completely useless um, for, I think, all intents and purposes in Galaxy 1. Um, but at the end of the level, there's still a one second text box if you grab a coin in the level. Um, I think you technically lose an extra frame for every additional coin, but we don't care about that too much. Um, so, especially at a top level, it is in your best interest to avoid grabbing coins where possible. And also, um, putting enough thought into your starbit routing that you can afford to do some levels without starbits at all. For example, if the like if the best amount of starbits you can get in a level is 10, you can just get 10 in another level, avoid it in this level, and then you don't get a one second text box at the end of the run. Um, usually around like the intermediate level, you don't worry about this too much, but at the top level, it does become very relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Those yeah, textbooks and if you do add up very quick. if you collect a small enough number of star bits, you can actually close the text box without losing any time because the text box takes a certain number of frames before you can close it anyway. So there will be a few levels where you'll see me collect like a very small number of star bits, and the reason why I'm doing that is just because my star bit route for this game is so tight that I just need to collect absolutely every one that I can. This is Hurry Scurry. Uh, this level is literally just walk in a straight line. Um, but these control stick angles can be really finicky. Like, almost none of these are actual notches. And having good movement in this level is one of the easiest ways to save time. And here after this camera change, I actually have to like change my control stick direction so that I can run into the star. But you'll notice there I picked up all of those music notes without which uh, spawn the star without sort of having a break in the movement. So there's a number of routes for that star, but the route that I did keeps you running on the ground for the entire time you're uh, collecting the notes, which is the fastest because running on the ground is usually faster than being in the air in this game. There are, well, as you're, when you're playing as Luigi, there are a few times where being in the air is better, but usually running on the ground is faster. Are there world records for uh, specific stars, yes. Um, people do do individual level speedruns in this game. Um, however, they're definitely not as popular as full game runs, and they're more popular in Galaxy 2 because Galaxy 2 actually has a timer that tracks your 
completion time. But if you go to the leaderboards, the speedrun.com leaderboards for this game, there's a ton of individual level speedruns for a bunch of different stars that often do strats that are um, more difficult than you would do in runs. So, oh no, I died. It's really oh, hard to pretend oh, like that death is unintentional. That is a death yeah, warp. Never works. You hit a checkpoint and spawn up here. It saves like a few seconds, maybe. That is the only optimal intentional death in the game. I will probably have to take another intentional death in this run. Um, but ideally, if I if you're a top runner, that's the only time you're you're intentionally dying to save time. And there's a fast cycle where you can go under that flomp, but unfortunately, my movement there wasn't uh, perfect and. Okay. Okay. So this the love the move in this level is actually really difficult, and I got through it relatively cleanly, which is nice. And here I'm going to be going for a trick, but I messed up the setup, so I might not get it here. But I still want to try and show it off. Oh, that's that's silly. So that jump was supposed to be a triple jump, two p jump into a cutscene trigger, and the cutscene just didn't happen. I don't know why that didn't work, like genuinely. I'm not entirely sure, but it's okay. I can just try it again real quick. If I don't get it this time, I probably won't go for it again. Oh, ledge grab. Oh, nice. That was weird, yeah. but it worked. That was interesting. Yeah. So that's, um, <laughs> dude, that sick jump. Normally there's an expletive included in that name, but I can't say that because we're on stream. Uh, that's That saves a few seconds just in going around, and I'm going to let... Uh, throw it over to the commentators again to explain the Bowser fight because I'm gonna need to focus for this. Into this one, go. Uh, the Bowser fights in this game are all very similar. Bad, I mean, bad. except for the last one. It's just hit Bowser, he jumps up into the air, lands on one of the blue spots and burns himself, and then starts running around, and you gotta hit him two more times. Yeah, and the difficulty and, in this fight comes from canceling his attack. Yeah, you can see right there, MKK crouches under Bowser to hit his tail to cancel uh, his attack where he just shoots fireballs. There are a lot of different strats in each of the fights where you cancel attacks that normally take a pretty long time just to save a few seconds. Yeah, and it's actually really hard because, like, he... he... decides where to slam on the ground, like, based on the very, very beginning of that jumping, slamming attack. So if you aren't already in the right spot when you hit Bowser and get knocked back by him, you actually just, like, he'll he'll jump and slam in a spot that's not on one of those blue glass domes, and then you'll just lose time because you have to wait for him to do an extra slam. So that fight can be very punishing if you um, if you mess it up. And uh, I see a discussion in chat about uh, IL world records. Yeah, a lot of them are really, really optimized. And Tibbs, who I mentioned earlier, has actually been, has actually recently started a long term project to get uh, the individual level world record for every single star in the entire game. So all 242 stars. Every star is Mario and every star is Luigi. So that was a, um, that was a pretty middling fountain exit, although I did lose a decent amount of time in Terrace just to like nerves. Um, but this, this 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 runs okay so far, and I believe now is a pretty good time for a break if we are going to do that. that. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I was about to mention that right now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect timing, yeah. So we're going to take a break, everybody. It was a nice little wellness break. Take every hour or so. It's very important to do that. Go ahead and stand up and stretch, get some water, do what we got to do. And we'll be back in a little bit, everybody. All right. All right, everybody, welcome back to doing all the things. Once again, we're doing all the things. We're back in a second of Super Mario Galaxy 120 run from MKK. But first, I'm going to talk about something real fast. Just a quick announcement. Uh, so, do you know how awesome it is that Quick 2024 will be live in person in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from January 14th to the 21st? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Submissions are currently still open for that right now, actually. From uh, They close actually tomorrow on September 10th. So, get those in for, for all your games and everything. Also, volunteer submissions are, are, will close on September 18th as well, too. So keep that in mind. Use exclamation mark age of the queue in Twitch chat here for more info. If you're interested in camera, check-in, tech, or any of the other volunteer positions, be sure to apply if you don't have any experience with this. Yeah, I think we should get back to the run. How about that? Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Uh, Heck so yeah. If you're just Kinda tuning sound. in, we're about 
an hour in. We've just completed the first two worlds of the any percent portion of this run, and we're going to get going. Uh, I'm going to restart in three, two, one. Let's keep going. So this is the... We're heading right now into the third dome of the game, the kitchen. And the kitchen is weird because it's a mix between really good levels and really terrible levels that are some of the worst in the entire run. So it's a pretty hot and cold dome in terms of uh, fun stars, but this is a marathon run, so not much of this actually matters as opposed to a real run where I'd be pretty nervous about choking. Um, and something that I actually haven't mentioned yet, but realized kind of during the break that I probably should be talking about is after every single level, the game pops up a prompt asking if I want to save the game, and I'm hitting no every single time because saving takes time, and we don't want to do that. So yeah, this should uh, ideally um, like make it to the end of the run pretty much without saving any extra times, and that's uh, mildly scary, but not that big of a deal because there's not really any places where you can like, crash the game or something crazy like that. So yeah, this get I go. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just going to talk about this level real quick. So you're meant to go in the water to the right of where I was just now to get five star chips to make a launch star that... Uh... Ooh, I messed up the setup. Okay. But uh, you can just jump. It's not... Okay. What... It, it, dude. High or be jump. There we go. But you can just jump and get all the way up to the star. That level is supposed to be like five times longer than it actually is in speedruns. And... Uh, it might have looked like I could have just wall jumped, but when you slide on the wall, you actually can't wall jump off of it for some reason. Like, I was hitting A and nothing was happening, so GG. So that was a bad beach ball one, but yeah. Um, what were you going to say, Kyle? Sorry. I was going to say, uh, thankfully, we don't have to save due to game overs, because if you have a game over in this game, it will ask you if you want to save before sending you back to the title menu, so we don't have to worry about, you know, negating that or like worrying about saving in case we game over or anything like that uh -huh. um, and MKK is also thankfully playing on the Wii version uh, which is not host to random crashes like the Switch version is. Um, which shout has happened to, to Exprelli. Uh, yeah, shout outs to Exprelli who had the same crash happen twice right at the end of the first half right before you save anyway. Uh, cause oh, you no. have, yeah, because right. you have to save at the end of the credits like, um, before the second half starts. It happened multiple times too. His game crashed, and he just lost three hours. Like he just like yeah. couldn't continue his run. Um, and also, like we get we get so many star bits in this run, and because you get fifty an extra life for every fifty star bits, you're never really in danger of game over in any way. So that's kind of nice. So here in Ghostly One, we're picking up the first rainbow star, and it might seem slow because I have to go through that whole animation. Um, the text box was just because I picked one up for the first time, but it's actually faster because this boo right here has, holds a key that we need to unlock the door. And normally you're meant to turn on a lamp and lure the boo into it very slowly, and that takes ages. So we can kill the boo with the rainbow star and actually save a decent amount of time. And the rainbow star is very momentum based, so you sort of build up speed with it as you run. And that is a uh, difficult thing to maintain because if you like catch on a wall quickly um, it can actually be possible for you to lose all of that speed. There I did what's called an angled wall jump so this wall jumps in this game work where if your approach angle uh, is really sharp then your wall jump angle will be really sharp and this is a difficult trick. Oh wow you're actually doing Julian. That's impressive. And oh, that was really good. That's wow. the first try. <laughs> the nice. Not only that was that, but that was that fast. Is, um, that is that very so cool. impressive. <laughs> so that is oh my goodness. Ghostly One full item list, also known as by the colloquial name Boolean, which is a fantastic name if you're a nerd like me. Um, agreed, that agreed. saves about 10 seconds if you do it. Like, that was probably close to the maximum amount of time save you can get from that trick. That is incredibly precise. Like, it is genuinely a really hard trick and I even like, I, though I've practiced it a decent amount, I am not 100% consistent with it. Um, that is normally a trick that's reserved for like world record level gameplay and even actually the current 120 star world record doesn't actually do it at all um, because it's harder on the 3D All-Stars version due to the Joy-Cons not having notches. But 
Uh, because I'm playing on Wii, it's a little bit easier to do, uh, but still definitely not easy. So that's a really, really good trick to get first try, and I'm really happy that I got to show that off. Basically, yeah, the reason really why cool. it's so precise is because you need to run on a very, very small, narrow, invisible uh, ledge inside that wall to get into the cage with Luigi. And at best, you can die and lose about 15, 20 seconds. At worst, you can fall into an earlier section of the level and lose about a minute. So it's very difficult, very punishing to fail. Um, but I practiced it a decent amount, and uh, I managed to get lucky enough to get a first try. So. Really happy about that. But yeah, that's a that's a big uh, that's a pretty crowd pleaser trick because not a lot of people know about it from a casual standpoint because it's not the type of thing like some people know that you can clip through the floor of the mansion with the full stars and skip a decent portion of it, but not a lot of people know that there's a you can clip inside the wall and go directly into the cage there. So that's a that's a cool strat to show off. And this is the uh, the race against everyone's favorite ghost, the spooky speedster. And I'm going to let the commentators take over for a second because this race requires me to focus a bit. Yeah, this the 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 concept of this race is relatively straightforward. You want to beat the the spooky speedster to the end by using the pull stars, but there are actually quite a few uh, intricacies to pull star movement. Um, including like when you let go of A, how close you are to the pull star, when you let go of A, and such and such. Um, so there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. Um, especially at the end here, you'll see uh, a decent use of the gravity of these bigger planets to kind of bounce MKK further across the track, um, which allows him to more or less skip that section um, and yeah, get to the end pretty damn quick. 41. I'd say pretty good, yeah. Well, we haven't been doing the, the time guessing bit. But uh, 40, 41 um, is good for me. I usually get 41 and maybe like 42 or 43 if the race wasn't quite as optimal. But top runners can get like 39 or 38. They just save like two or three seconds on me. It's not because of stride differences. It's just because they get, they're just, they're just like slightly faster throughout the whole race. Um, so you can play this so game funny, on the, the 3D All-Stars version <laughs> with a pro controller, but it's not faster. There's a lot of um, small things about playing with a pro controller that just make the game slower to play. So if you're wanting to go uh, at this game from the perspective of like a high-level runner, you have to play on Joy-Cons, which is kind of terrible, but pro controller is not amazing for this game either. It's definitely... Uh, a smaller difference than in something like Super Mario Odyssey, in my opinion, where uh, Pro Controller is a lot more comfortable for pretty much uh, every runner. So one thing I want to say in this level, uh, right at the beginning, uh, if you have a sensitivity to flashing lights, I'm going to do a skip where the camera changes angles really fast. And um, if you need to look away from the screen, uh, now is a pretty good time to do that because this is like one of the only times in the game where that's really a problem, but um, just in case you are sensitive to that. So there we go, I, I did the skip, that's mansion skip. Um, if you looked away, you can look back now. The, the part of that, that part of the run is over. But basically, um, the mansion skip there is done by... That's weird, I was supposed to bounce on the spider. The mansion, the mansion skip there is done by just jumping onto that bone, which is just a random little piece of scenery, and then jumping around a, um, the mansion. Normally you're supposed to go inside the mansion and do a puzzle uh, that involves blowing up a statue to get access to the rest of the level, but by doing that uh, long jump around the, the entrance to the mansion and basically just skipping around to the ledge where the launcher is, I can actually save uh, a decent chunk of time, maybe like 10 seconds, I think. And oh no, okay, we're good. Ooh. So you can actually skip grabbing those pull stars by landing inside that rotating planet and then just backflipping into the launch star. That sounds easy. That skip is terrible. Like, I genuinely don't understand how people do it. That's uh, one of the other skips I just don't go for because I don't know how to do it. I've actually, like, done this, like, on emulator, just loading a save state and, like, trying that skip over and over again for, like, half an hour, and I couldn't get it consistent, so I just decided to drop the strat. It only saves about seven or eight seconds, so it's not uh, 100% um, necessary in order to get a decent time in this game. And uh, I'm going to let my commentators explain Bouldergeist, because this fight is it. very notorious in the speedrun here. 
Go for it, Gamma. Yeah, so not a lot of people like this fight for good reason, because um, the way you damage him is by uh, using these bamboos that spawn from uh, the black rocks that he spawns. But uh, he spawns a different amount of them every single time, and if you get uh, if you get unlucky, he can not spawn enough for you to uh, damage him enough in one cycle, and you have to wait a little bit of time for him to spawn more. And while it's technically not RNG, like a human is not realistically able to like manipulate. No, uh, it's 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 so over. That was that was really <laughs> unlucky. I tried to freeze the bomb brew with two P. Unfortunately, this actually loses a lot of time. This is really slow. Um, so I thought I got lucky there. I was like, oh, good RNG, yay! And then uh, Bouldergeist happened to spawn, or I happened to run into one of the boos by accident, which isn't the end of the world. But then he killed the other one with his slam attack here. So, ordinarily, um, if I was getting good RNG, he would actually not do this spikes and then not do this punch attack. So he would just be throwing more rocks at me. And the most um, black rocks you can get in one phase is two. But if you get one twice in a row, then it actually prevents you from killing him in one cycle because you need to hit it three times in order to kill it. So I, uh, there I did the... Um, the funny strat, which is where you shoot the rock with a star bit and then spin it into Boulder Geist. But those bamboos, they'll hit everything except for the boss. They'll hit his hands, they'll hit the other rocks in the air, they'll like just break on the bamboos can break on each other, they can explode into you. So it can be really tough to control the positions of them. And also they spin around Luigi and kind of change how far away from him they are. So if you're not really uh, tuned to how the bamboos move, you can lose a lot of time in those levels really easily. But it's no big deal. Um, obviously, that uh, wasn't the, the greatest execution, but I got a little bit uh, unlucky with the positions. And yes, I do run Super Mario Odyssey, although I only really run the All Moons category, which is the completionist run that's about eight hours long. <laughs> Uh, That's such a cool run. I love the run too. It is an incredibly fun category. I think it's super, super underrated. Uh, but I can see why people would be deterred by the length of it. So, I ghostly, like stuff like farming jumps as well too. At the end of the run, I can get totally get it too. That's. Uh, <laughs> That's my only exercise that I get as a speedrunner, so I kind of am <laughs> grateful for it because uh, I can use it as an excuse to not exercise for the rest of the month. Anyway, so in this level, I'm going to be doing a strat called Keyless. So there is... So that, that was actually first try. So this level has um, invisible platforms that are supposed to appear when you uh, collect a coin, a question mark coin, that triggers a, a moving section of the level to sort of bring those things into existence. And um, for the, the ground doesn't exist when it's invisible, but there's a door there that still does exist because it's not like the floor, it's like an object, I think is the reason why. So what I did there was I did a wall jump off the door, I landed on top of the invisible door, and then I did a jump off of it to get up to where the star is. That is genuinely difficult because it's an invisible platform with no real visual cue for it. And there is kind of a setup to get an approximately correct jump height. Excuse me, but it's not, um, it's not like super easy because there's just a slight variance in where you jump from uh, every single time. So it's actually, uh, that's actually pretty, pretty tricky to pull off consistently. And I'm glad that I got that first try. Uh, and this is Daredevil Boulder Guys. So this is the same fight and also with the same um, notorious RNG. However, you only have one health, which doesn't matter too much, but these rocks can really get you if you're not paying attention. They can sort of jump scare you because they can be, especially on the second phase where Boulder Guys brings out the big rock hands, they can be hidden behind its hands. They can also be hidden behind this life meter at the corner. And yep. they can just fly <laughs> into you and nail you in the face for no reason because you're trying to be close to Boulder Geist so you can hit it, and you're trying to, you know, spinning the bamboos up makes you stand still long enough that you can get beamed by a rock and die while you're uh, waiting. And yeah, uh, in response to the chat question, Japanese is faster, Korean is technically the fastest language, but there's no Korean Wii U Virtual Console version, which is the version that I play on because the Wii U never released in Korea. 
So there's only a Korean mm. um, disc of this game, and Korean text saves about 30 seconds in 120, but the VC loads save far, far more than that in 120. So it's worth playing on virtual console, even though you have to play in a slower language. And that was good luck. So that's what a good Boulder Geist fight looks like. Um, I did not play very aggressively there because I don't like to play aggressively in the Daredevil comment because it's really easy to die. Um, but good RNG there is uh, is uh, very, very nice to get. And it's actually, this category has gotten optimized to the point where bad RNG in the ghostly uh, Boulder Geist boss fights can actually mean that your run dies, which is terrible. And it's kind of the reason why I don't want to run this category to world record level, probably ever. Uh, but yeah, so... so um, Bouldergeist, you don't even get to escape from Bouldergeist in Galaxy 2, because Bouldergeist exists in Galaxy 2 and also has a lower chance of giving you good luck in Galaxy 2. So that's nice. Um, and uh, I also speedrun Galaxy 2, and as you might be able to guess, I, I run mainly the completionist category, which is 242 star, and that category is nine and a half hours long. So, you know, five five and some some odd hours in, you can actually lose a bunch of time to getting bad older guys luck, and that's uh, very unfortunate. So here I'm going to show off a 2P long jump out of the water, and I'm going to have a commentator explain that because I genuinely just don't think I can do it concisely. <laughs> Um, do you think you can explain that well, Gamma? I'm not even sure if I could. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh -oh, I can explain I just challenge. basic long jumps out of water. I don't know if they work the same with 2P long jumps. Uh, when going into water, you can ground pound and continue holding Z. And um, as long as you're still holding Z the entire time you're in the water, when you jump out of it, uh, you can do a long jump instead of just a normal jump out of the water. Because it saves that Z in input. I don't yeah. know if it works the exact same way with the 2P long it's jump. It's like the 2P long jumps only require you to actually press the 2PA button, but it's the same basic concept. And the like it's it's sort of used in a couple of spots just to be able to get that that long jump out of the water, which allows you to just go slightly faster. Um, and the there I was meant to grab the golden shell from that penguin and then turn around and go on the same side of that like rock spire in the water that I swam down in, but unfortunately I spun and didn't grab the shell, so I had to lose a little bit of time to a suboptimal line, but that's okay. There are a couple levels, including this one, the secret level, and obviously the level I just did, where you need to grab a shell from a penguin, and that's weird because like, if you're just spinning, the fastest way to swim is to shake the Wiimote repeatedly to spin. Um, but if you're just spinning, you, like, won't grab the shell. You need to, like, time the spin to grab the shell. So it's a bit of a weird quirk of, of speedrunning this game. But there's a lot of things like that where they're hard until someone tells you about a strat that makes it easier. And this is a Beach Bowl 3, which is the first time you're going to see a pretty decently sized skip. Um, that's also a little bit finicky. So hopefully I will get this first try. So this is the uh, the Stone Cyclone. You might recognize this if you played Galaxy 2. This this is also in Galaxy 2, except everything moves super fast. Uh, that's in the, the Stone Cyclone galaxy in the, the last world. Um, but this is uh, just the Galaxy 1 version. And this skip actually exists in both games. And it's also way easier in Galaxy 2, which is nice. But uh, here we go. Here's the skip. Hopefully I can get it. Nice, first try. So that skip is very punishing to fail because you lose about 30 seconds if you die. Um, that looks easy because it just looks like a long jump spin wall jump, but that that surface that you wall jump off of is super finicky. And sometimes you can wall like try to get a wall jump and just bonk off the wall and die. And the nice thing about playing on the Wii version is that there's a setup for a completely notched setup for that skip, so you don't need to worry about angles. But on the 3D All Stars version, you actually need to, um, you actually need to do. I think a lot of people do like a slightly different setup that makes the angle a little bit more consistent. Uh, but I don't really know that much because I've been doing that setup for like two years and it works pretty well for me. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're heading into Beach Bowl Secret now. I almost selected the wrong star, which would have been a little silly, but this is a uh, Beach Bowl Secret. So this is actually a really cool star. It's got a lot of interesting movement in it, and we're gonna 
grab the shell, but instead of going to the undersea cavern like we did uh, just previously, we're going to break open this chest and take this launch star to the secret area. And this is going to be the first time where you'll see the ice flower. The ice flower is a huge uh, fan favorite power up in this game. And I'm pretty sad that they didn't bring it back in Galaxy 2 because I kind of am a little bit surprised that they didn't because uh, it's just so cool. You can create ice platforms by skating on the water and you can also create these these ice wall jump platforms by touching these vertical water. Where's my backflip? Oh my gosh, that that was weird. So yeah, um, backflips in this game are dependent on speed. So sometimes you try to long jump and you don't have enough speed. I'm actually going to do a backup start here. Normally I'd skate with the ice flower, but I actually recently learned here that you can do a water long jump. It didn't work, okay. That was a little messy at the end, but you're meant to use the Cataquack to launch yourself into the star, but a well-timed 2 jump or a jump off of the ice wall next to the star will get you into it. So that was a bit messy at the end, but I still got to show off some of the movement there, as well as the very cool Ice Flower power, which we'll see again later. And Beach Bowl Comet is what's known as a Fast Foe Comet, which is just um, a portion of a level where certain enemies are moving faster. So this is going to be the, the same uh, Stone Cyclone with the same skip, done exactly the same way. So ideally, I will get the skip again, and I won't die and lose a bunch of time to do that. I agree with you about the Ice Flood, brother. I'm surprised it's not Galaxy 2. It's such a cool power. Yeah, I, my, my theory for why is they already had a power-up that let you create platforms wherever you want with the Cloud Flower, um, which is a very cool power-up, especially in speedruns, because you can do a lot of momentum shenanigans with it. But it's a shame they never brought back the Ice Flower, because I think it's a, a really interesting power-up, and um, it was one of the more creative Galaxy power-ups, in my opinion, because of the just like uniqueness of the idea. Okay, so that was a good movement in the the level leading up to the skip. And I got the skip. Very nice. So that's a nice. That's a big early game roadblock. Like once you get those two skips, you're like I I, I say that early game ends like around when you get uh, when you finish this level because that's when you a lot of the major choke points are like, you know, completely Done with the run, and also I want to mention, um, I've seen people talking about like lurking in in chat. Uh, feel free to lurk, but also if you have any questions about the run, any questions about me as a runner, any questions about the game or anything like that, I absolutely love answering questions about this game and talking about it. So please do not feel shy to ask uh, questions about anything. Um, there are there's no such thing as a stupid question, and. I understand that this run can be really hard to keep up with for like a casual viewer who's never done a speedrun in this game before. So it's really, um, it's really good for this game is really great to explain like a lot of the hidden nuances. So if there's absolutely anything you've wondered about, even if you feel like we might have already talked about it, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, we will be happy to answer questions. And if you feel more comfortable lurking, absolutely also feel free to do that. It's totally fine, whatever you feel like doing. I just appreciate you being here and watching, if you are. So, yeah. I really like having the support. Um, actually, I'm, one I'm, of the... I'm a streamer myself oh, as well, too, so like, I, t I totally get it myself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah, it's the wrong of just, like, chilling, watching a run, especially if you're doing stuff in the background. Yeah, so this is Bubble Breeze, the first level where you see the motion control bubble. Uh, and this is a pretty well-known skip um, right here. You can skip half the level by just doing this. There's an invisible wall there, and you can oh. just go around like to the end of the section. Um, that is like you really I really can't say, just do that, can't you? <laughs> that is like baby's first Galaxy One skip. You can um, you can do that like right now. You could pull out your copy of the game, and do that. It's really easy. It's much easier than doing the level the normal way. It saves a ton of time, and it's. Um, very not punishing to fail because if you die, you just respawn right next to where the skip is. You can just reattempt it. So that is a skip, in my opinion. If you're learning the speed on this game, every beginner should learn that skip. It's great. Um, so someone asked, "What about the game makes you so passionate about it?" Uh, I really like this game. I played this game a lot as a kid. This was like my childhood game growing up. This uh, Galaxy, Galaxy, and Galaxy Two, and. Um, I, for a long time, did a lot of, like, tasking and challenge stuff and researched this game a lot, so I've put a lot of time into, like, thinking about all the little nuances of the game, and I'm also, I also find the speedrun really fun and uh, relaxing to do, and I think uh, 
the Galaxy games have some really satisfying and cool movement, as well as some really visually appealing and flashy movement that makes it make them really, really fun to run, as well as like really, oh no, the, 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 tor the torpedo is not behaving. This is unfortunate. So, so I'm in buoy base, and I thought I wouldn't have to mention this because ideally you don't, but swimming in this game is terrible. It's really hard to control. Please, okay, I'm actually going to... Okay, I think we're good. As yeah. long as it hits the cage, you're good. <laughs> it's like, even if you die, they stay up. Yeah, I know that, but it's still like, it's still like tricky. Um, uh, but, whoa, I'm going way off in the, the middle of nowhere. Okay, so this level's hard. This is buoy base one. Uh, the movement in this level is actually really tricky, and especially the underwater movement is some of the hardest underwater movement in this game. Underwater movement already being difficult, but hopefully I can show off this tower climb uh, without messing it up too much. This is uh, this is a really cool showcase of 2P. You're going to see a lot of different 2P strats here, as well as you're meant to be collecting star chips, but uh, we don't need to do that because we can just skip them by getting up here. And you can actually, you don't even need 2P to do that, that skip. I'm going to collect this coin just for safety. Technically, that, that loses a bunch of time because you get the extra text box that we mentioned earlier. Um, but I would rather not die uh, because that would have been a bit embarrassing. Oh, and I got the thing. OK, that's unfortunate. So diving down there and just swimming into the stars normally works. But sometimes you get momentum in a direction for no reason, even though I was holding neutral and you just missed the star. OK, that level was rough, but it's OK. Uh, that's, that's just fine. Shout outs to Platicorn in chat. Uh, Galaxy One Runner, um, who actually has pretty decent times in both categories. Uh, how do you build? Um, so the, the the short answer is that the way like approaching a long run kind of requires you to accept first of all to accept that the run can sort of die at any amount of time, like any distance into the run. So I've lost Galaxy One One Twenty runs in the last level. Like it's five and a half hours into the run and I've lost runs in the last level. It's, you kind of just have to develop a good mindset for it, but also the short answer to how do you not make the same mistakes over and over again is a lot of practice. So practice is really, really important for long categories. And I, um, I think that it's a really important um, aspect of what separates like a, a person who is like dedicated to a long category from someone who is just kind of running it casually is the amount of, of time you put in outside of runs because it's it's important to put in that uh, time. The run is played with Luigi. He has higher jumps, a faster running speed, and skips a long intro cutscene. So a lot of people prefer Luigi just because his um, movement makes a lot of speed tech a little easier. That's I like to call that the uh, the sicko jump because. It's a difficult jump to go for. And um, uh, if I'm assuming you're asking, if you're the person who's asking like how many times I repeat the stage when new things have been found, I'm assuming you're asking like how many times I practice a trick when like a new trick is found or a new skip or something like that. And really it depends. Um, oh my gosh, I'm getting so oh unlucky goodness. with this fight. But. <laughs> Really, what it is, is it's I practice stuff enough times to where I feel comfortable and consistent with it. Um, and that's like, you know, it kind of depends on how hard the trick is, how precise it is, how, you know, dissimilar it is to a different trick. So that, I kind of skipped over Airship Armada, but that boss fight is notoriously challenging. And it I got a relatively fast one because if you mess up these cycles in that fight, it can become very spammy and very difficult to uh, handle properly. Let's see, uh, there's another question in chat that I saw. Oh yeah, um, Hiragana of the Kanji. I'm actually studying Japanese right now, and I um, actually kind of like it because it's, I'm still very much a beginner, but it's actually cool to be able to play this game and like read the text and be able to still read the Kanji, even though um, like, I don't really know that many yet. Uh, so it's actually um, this game. Someone someone mentioned uh, putting time into this chat, uh, this game in chat. This game is actually extremely accessible for beginners. There is nothing hard that's required. There's nothing like um, there's no like really levels in any percent that are like that difficult to do. And um, 
there's pretty much no like barrier to entry. Like you can run the game on any version. You can play with either character. You can uh, do pretty much any movement you want, and you can still speedrun this game. So I actually really recommend this game to like people who are looking to sort of get into speedrunning because it's a great game. It's very beginner accessible. As long as you follow the proper route, you could literally pick up the game right now and just do a blind run of it and be able to finish the run with no problems besides time loss. So some games require you to learn like some kind of complicated speed tech or get really good at the, um, you know, a certain trick. But in this game, basically, uh, speedruns for like a beginner level runner can just basically be a fast, casual playthrough. Um, I'm playing this game with two Wiimotes. That's how I do the 2P controller. Uh, difference in night height with the nunchuck, no one really knows why it happens. Uh, it's not, like, personally, I would assume it's not purposeful, not that it's coded differently, but I'm not really sure. Uh, 3D Mario games being beginner accessible, I think is just, like, the, I think a lot of they're them... They're children's games. <laughs> yeah, they're children's games. But also, I think, um, a lot of them have, like, high skill ceilings, but low barrier to entry. So a lot of people say that, that Odyssey is an example of one of those games, and I agree to th with that, but also Galaxy 1 is another great option. Uh, if you don't mind the length of the run, any percent's only about three hours long, uh, and you can pretty easily start running any percent, get your time you know, below three hours, below two and a half hours, and you know, before you know it, you start playing better and realizing you know, where, you're, where you can save time and stuff. Uh, this level's free Slam mention. 1, and it has some cool movement, but it's also pretty self-explanatory, so I'm taking this opportunity it, to talk about some stuff. What were you going to say? I was saying, I was saying not to mention it as well, imagine for a, a, a community like this, like Mario games usually have a very large speedrun community. Like there's probably some really good, really good guides for the game too, for learning, for learning it. Funny you should mention that. Um, there, a lot of the tutorials are outdated. Um, there's actually currently tutorials oh, no. in progress. One of them that uh, Mr. Source 28 in uh, the call here actually uh, did a lot of the scripting and research for. Um, Hello. Hi. So <laughs> Hello. those are in progress. They won't be out probably until for a decent amount of time. But um, hopefully soonish. <laughs> there is a extremely helpful community in the Super Mario Galaxy One and Two speedrunning Discord server. So linked on the speedrun.com leaderboards is the Discord server for this game, and people in there are really happy to answer questions, and they're very very helpful. And it's a good place to get information about the runs, sort of get access to all of the different routes for the games, and it's uh, also just like a generally you know, positive and helpful community. I think there's a, one of the things that, that drew me into running this game was just that the there's a really active Discord server with a lot of people sort of contributing to conversations and posting strats and talking about different stuff, and I, uh, I talk about... Um, I talk about, uh, there's a lot of, uh, helpful people in there. And also, yeah, I, I wanted to mention that if you're interested in running this game, like, feel free to send me a DM on Discord or Twitter or stop by my Twitch chat at any time. I really, really like helping people get into running this game, and if this run piques your interest in any way, um, I would recommend starting with the Any% percent category, but, uh, it's a... It's a pretty fun game to run, especially when you're new because of just all of the, like, like, because of how easy it is to get into, in my opinion. So, in this, I was, oh, sorry, yeah. I would say personally as well, too, like, as someone who's, who's been a lot of different games, has been around for a very long time speedrunning stuff, uh, especially in current year, just joining a Discord of, like, any speedrun is just, like, the best way to learn just any speedrun overall. The community, was, the community will always, like, Help new runners because they want new people to run the game. I got they the put time into as well. Like, it's just it's just a good thing to do overall if you want to learn a spear and ever. So that's just my opinion at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, I I, I had a Skype group for the Kirby Spear and community in 2014 <laughs> that I joined. <laughs> Skype groups just to give an idea of like how much easier it is now to, to do stuff. This is just a link on a, on a website at this point to join. <laughs> Original <laughs> Skype groups for the speed games is such a such a speed running boomer thing. 
Anyway, uh, it that really under, is. It really is. That <laughs> underground section of uh, Dusty Dude One here is actually really cool and executed properly, but unfortunately, mine was extremely messy. Here's a little piece of speed tech. You can groundhound into the sand and buffer a backflip out of it, which is actually really useful because normally that sand like prevents you from doing any kind of jump besides your normal jump, so you can't really backflip. It's hard to get long jumps because of the way it affects your speed and your momentum. And here you're going to see I'm climbing up this sort of like glass section and I'm going to be doing another 2P jump to sort of skip up here. So this level is really, really cool looking when done right. Unfortunately, my execution was not amazing, but it's okay. Uh, two controllers cool, strapped together. Yeah, it is uncomfortable. I originally, when I first started learning 2P, I actually was holding the controllers um, in a way that gave me hand pain. And for a while, I thought I wasn't going to be able to run 2P, but eventually I sort of got a good sense of how to hold the controllers. And a lot of people play on the Switch version where the controllers are significantly smaller. Um, but I have the advantage of just like not, first of all, I naturally have big hands, but second of all, uh, I just gotten comfortable with it over time. Um, and somebody asked what made me start learning Japanese. I've always kind of wanted to learn Japanese. I think it's a interesting language and there's a lot of like big online gaming communities that are like mostly Japanese. So uh, it, I wanted to sort of connect with that side of the internet and it was offered as a class at my college so I started taking Japanese and the teachers are actually really really great and the classes are also very great um heck yeah so uh, this is Dusty Doom 2 this actually has a number of interesting strategies in it uh and this star is, uh, it's weird, like, a lot of people don't like this star or this galaxy in general, but this galaxy is actually one of my favorites in the entire speedrun. I think all of the stars are super cool, so, uh, maybe, uh, maybe my commentators will disagree, but I like this galaxy. I gonna say, that's a very hot take. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hot because galaxy. this level is a desert, but yeah, I think, ah. I think, <laughs> true, um, true. This, these levels are a lot more fun once you've practiced them and gotten good at them. And at a high level, I think Dusty Dune is some of the most interesting movement uh, in the run. So. For sure, yeah. Yeah, especially Dusty Dune P is a pretty, probably the most infamous star in yeah. this level. We'll see it in a couple yeah. hours. Well, but, yeah, yeah. Stick it, stay tuned until uh, <laughs> about four, about five hours in to see a level nobody likes in this galaxy. And you get to <laughs> no, see no. me suffer through it. Um, have I ever been to Japan? No, but I would like to go once I'm a little better at Japanese, um, so that I can get around a little bit more easily. So this, there's like two paths in the level, and for whatever reason, this one is just way faster. Like, you can either go this way and take a warp pipe, or go the other way and take a launch star. And the pipe's like way faster. Uh, yes, I'm in close. Um, and here's a little bit of 2P movement. So you can actually just 2P jump up to that pipe. That's weird. That jump is finicky. And it's actually uh, somewhat difficult to do, but there's a really uh, easy visual cue to learn. But some new runners have trouble with that. And here you're supposed to pop a specific like platform out of the sand using a switch on the other side of that planet, and then quickly run to get to the star. But 2P jumps allow you to do that. You can actually do a triple jump into that star, although it's a little bit more complicated with regard to um, the the uh, the jump height, like controlling your jump height in the right way. I'm not going to get into tilt. It's way too complicated. To yeah, tilt, tilt, yeah, tilt is an explanation for another day. Yeah, even though we have it's also like not really, five hours. It's not really relevant <laughs> in this run. Um, this run has both the bee mushroom and the fire flower. Uh, you'll see both of them. But there are a couple spots in the run where I'm actually going to be skipping intended uses of both of them. So hopefully, um, and actually, in this in this dome, the bedroom, I'm going to be skipping uh, that in one of the free slime levels. You're meant to get the fire flower. But first, we got to do Dusty Dune. And I suppose while I'm doing this auto scroller, um, it's a good time to talk about the route that I'm doing. So for a long time, the fastest route in this game was the uh, old route that was done until about 2019 or 2020, I think, when the new route was discovered. And that route uh, was known as the Long Island Limbo route, which obsoleted the Kansas oh. City Shuffle route. Routes in this game that have rules. really great names. I love I love that. I love the route <laughs> names. And uh, I've talked about, I've shouted out Tibbs already a number of times, but here's another one. They decided that the route was bad, which it was. Early game in this category used to be pretty dismal. <laughs> Um, and they made a new route, which we refer to as Bedroom Boogie, which shifts the 
order of the stars, like switches around which stars you do in which part of the run and moves the cleanup sections of the later part of the run around. So the first benefit is that it saves two seconds. Ordinarily, that's not really that big of a benefit, at least not enough for most people to delete their entire splits and change to an entirely new route. But most runners agree that this route is much more fun to run on because it, yeah. the end of the run <laughs> used to be a gauntlet of hard levels, and now you, at the end of the run is very chill and has a lot of like significantly easier levels. So. Um, this route sort of reinvigorated at least my interest in running this category, like seriously, because of how uh, different the run is just throughout. And not only yeah. that, but it's faster and it's also easier to get runs going because all the hard levels are in early games. Yeah, it, it definitely made 120 way more fun to play. So uh, yeah. yeah, shout out to Tibbs for that. Yeah, Tibbs actually, routing this game is a beast. It's very, very complicated because the prankster comments, which are often problematic as levels also appear on cycles that are literally just not deterministic. So you have to do all of the levels in a very, very specific order. Um, and it's really, really hard to route without just literally manually testing the levels. So the way that Tibbs routed this, made this route is literally they, they like just played the the levels, the game over and over again, trying different like level orders until they found one that worked. They basically routed this entirely through trial and error, and it took like, I think, over a month for them to do it. It took a long time, and they, uh, they said, I think they never want to make another route in this game ever, because of how <laughs> terrible it was to do the route. And this is the sandcastle climb. This is so janky. Like Luigi loves to just grab random walls, and it can be really tough to do this optimally. And one little piece of optimization is that I'm actually... The game will like naturally allow you to go around the corners if you just hold a direction, but I'm actually running around the corners because it's slightly faster to cut the corners in the sandcastle section. Um, I speedrun... I, I stream sort of irregularly. I don't really have a schedule. I'm not really a real... Really that much of a streamer, like, personality. Um, but after I... I've been focusing on Galaxy 1 practice recently because I had this run coming up, but afterward I'm actually going to uh, start mainly focusing on Super Mario Odyssey All Moons. So if you are interested in seeing Odyssey speedruns, you can tune in to my Twitch channel. And I'm not the, I'm not the greatest Odyssey speedrunner, but I am, uh, in my opinion, running an interesting category. So hopefully uh, the self-promo is, uh, is okay there. Um, by the way, this auto scroller is actually skippable, but it saves like two seconds with like insanely good execution, and nobody goes for it because it's really hard. So, yeah, GG. Shoutouts to uh, Samuel JH, who is an old runner of this game. They ran the game back like when I first started, and they uh, they were one of like the big pioneers of high level two P gameplay, uh, and they. Found a lot of 2P strats and were one of the first people to actually start optimizing 2P in terms of like actually being able to save time. Also, you can make this dry bones levitate. That's fun. <laughs> because for whatever reason, if you freeze the enemies with 2P, they rise with the tower. Um, also, I should talk about someone want to mention, uh, talk about chip skip because chip skip is a scam and I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, chip skip is a, a very fun strategy that involves holding one of the. Uh, well, there's actually two versions of chip skip. There's one three. was found recently, but is there three? Yep. Okay, well, this this explanation <laughs> is already out of my depth. Um, but the the main one that I knew was holding one of the uh, one of the dry bones while the tower was actually staying in place. Fun fact: the tower doesn't rise; the floor lowers. <laughs> I did not know this for the longest time, and it blew oh. my mind. Um, but yeah, you keep one of the dry bones in, in the air and then you homing ground pound onto it to basically bounce you to the very edge of the platform from where you can then long jump out into the middle of nowhere and catch the gravity of the planet that we go to after that launch tower at the top of the, uh, the tower. It's, it's an insane strat. It, I think people did do it in runs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, but yeah, it's it, wild. So. Because you, oh gosh, I missed the jump there. So because you are, you because you need height to make the bounce to the, the 
like the edge of that planet actually work out. Uh, you need to wait for the tower to come almost all the way up anyway, or I guess the, you know, it needs to be almost all the way risen anyway. So the strat only saves like seven or eight seconds because you, you might think skipping collecting those star chips to save a lot of time, but that, that time save gets eaten into so much by just waiting for the tower to rise. And there's a version where you don't wait for the tower to rise by, because if you mash A really fast in the sand, you actually don't die. But that is, that's known as task chip skip. And it's, it's literally something that only like two people ever went for. And those two people since have both dropped it because it's so hard that even though it saves a ton of time, it's not like people just don't go for it because of how difficult it is. And I'm pretty sure um, it's also frame perfect. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, like, like, there were a couple runners who went for that for a little bit, and it's significantly faster, maybe like 20, 30 seconds per level, so you get double that time save, but it's not... It's so hard that, like, people just stopped going for it in real-time runs, and that's the yeah. reason these levels used to be in second half, so it used to be the very, very end of the run, and now it's, it's closer to the beginning, but still pretty far in, so a lot of people just don't want to dedicate the time. Um, I do not have any world records. I am... Uh, chronically mid at speedrunning, but that's okay because you do not have to be good at speedrunning to enjoy it. So just gotta have some fun. That's all True it is. That. I uh, that's all it's about at the end of the day, after all. I'm not too interested in world record competition. I do speedrunning for the fun of it, and often I feel that if I did start going for world records, um, you know, not only am I a busy college student, but I'm also a uh, I'm also uh, not. I also uh, am always worried about losing the enjoyment of speedrunning because I'm focusing too much on my time on the leaderboard. So I'm one of those people oh, who yeah. just takes a a more like um, more more focuses on speedrunning for the fun of it, and enjoy, it does it more for my own enjoyment. And there you saw the fire flower, That's good. and. Um, Taking damage in certain scenarios can delay cutscenes, so if you miss one of those torches, you can actually uh, die there. Shoutouts to Galax V, who has a really funny clip of him dying there. Uh, after lighting both torches, the cutscene just doesn't start, and the bridge that extends out doesn't go under him and he just dies. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is uh, Gusty Garden 1. Gusty Garden is a really boring galaxy with a lot of really boring levels and a lot of them got moved to second half with the new route which is really nice but this level does have the famous gusty garden galaxy music which is a a fan favorite and it's definitely good um but it's a little overrated in my opinion but it's popular for a reason yeah. like people people like it because it's a good song and the there's actually some remixes of it like the world s music from Super Mario Galaxy 2 that are some of my favorite Galaxy songs. So that question mark coin, when you collect it, it spawns a bunch of star bits, and for whatever reason, that specific coin lags the absolute heck out of the game. Um, I don't know why that is, and in any percent, it's actually faster to go around it because you don't need the star bits as much, but in 120, you save more time from collecting those star bits than you lose from the lag, so it's worth uh, doing. And here we're going to see a little strat here where I'm going to bounce on this uh, piranha plant while holding it with 2P. Ordinarily, you'd have to wait for it to slam down first, but I can go slightly faster by just uh, jumping up and bouncing on it. And this bunny is uh, pretty difficult to catch. You have to run after it, similar to the bunnies earlier in Gateway. Um, oh no, I missed it! No, it's so over. So uh, there's actually a setup to catch that bunny with a long jump, like really consistently. But for whatever reason, I've been failing at a bunch of runs recently, even though it's not hard. Uh, but luckily, the bunny takes forever to hop off of that crate. So the backup for that is pretty simple, but that's a shame. I didn't get to show off the cool, the cool jump, the gamer jump. Um, so hey, you're still a gamer even doing it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> all right, no Freeze problem. Flame 3. This level is a... I think this level is like the level we all really liked when we were kids. Um, this is the... So the first level of Freeze Flame is cold, the second level of Freeze Flame is hot, and the third level is literally called Hot and Cold Collide in English because it's both. And I think this level has a really cool design. Like, 
this is uh this is um you know it's it's a little bit uh of a popular level so i don't know if it's overrated or not but i really like this level i think speed runs have very cool movement so at the beginning you're meant to skate like two loops around this planet and you can kind of just do this like that that's literally as easy as it looks you just jump around it and uh oh my goodness i'm going to actually pass the rest of this level off to the commentators because a i've been talking a lot but also i want to make sure i get a uh, good movement for the rest of this level because it's a little bit cycle based and also kind of tricky so go ahead Take it away. As uh, so for this next section here, uh, the casual way is to use, I'm pretty sure you use like uh, switches to put out floors across the lava to walk around to eventually get to that fire flower. But as you saw, you can just jump over it and get to it instantly. Uh, the uh, water these... here is, I can't actually go in the water there because I'll sink and start swimming. Um, do I have enough? Okay, we're good. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, you get if you get stuck in the water there, uh, those urchins can be really annoying because you can just get hit back and forth between them and just get stuck. And then uh, if you stay down there for too long, you lose the fire flower and have to go back to get it again. Or you die. So it's a pretty annoying... Yeah, you can also die. It's not fun. I think it's actually also possible to get double hit by those urchins. Oh yeah, it is! I think I've seen a oh, clip. Okay. If I think if they oh, both... My. That was... Interesting. Normally, I'm pretty that? confident in that jump. I think I held a slightly weird angle, and uh, I got very lucky there with that ledge grab because normally um, you can't ledge grab out of a long jump. So I like bonked and then like managed to just squeak onto the ledge just barely. That was a uh, that was a little that was a little sus, but it's it's okay. We're good. Um, so that's uh, the ice flower. You get to skate on the lava there, which is really cool. There's a strat called One Flower that only maniacs go for, where you skip the last ice flower. It saves, like, probably at most half a second, and it's incredibly difficult. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say other than that, that, like, people don't usually go for it, except for Tibbs who went for it on GDQ when there was a, a run of this, this game's Any% percent category. Um, they did it with one health during a race when they were, like, in the lead. So, yeah, that's a... That's a that was a gutsy move from them. <laughs> so I um I actually uh like this level as well. This is Dusty Dune Comet, which is just Dusty Dune 2 with a very generous timer. Um and because I like the original level, getting to play this level again is actually fun for me, but a lot of people don't like this level, and so having to play it twice is kind of not the best, but another nice thing about this comet is that there are a ton of star bits in the level for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe to give you lives so that the punishing nature, quote unquote, doesn't uh, cause you to lose too many lives. But it's nice because here in a speed run, we need as many star bits as we can get. And there I messed up the movement a little bit and uh, getting the star bits from the boulders somewhat made up for it, but I it still was a, a tad sloppy, but that's okay. Um, so there isn't uh, much to talk about. I don't know if either of the commentators have anything to say uh, because I've already done this level. But yeah, I think we're just kind of going through the motions at the moment. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think if there's any like uh, just general things that we uh, we haven't gone through. I could quickly like go back through the. Uh, I can find the giant copy pasta. There it is. The differences between Mario and Luigi, because uh, there's actually a pretty long paragraph. So the 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 basic premise is that Luigi is faster and jumps higher. But there are a little there there are a few little quirks. Uh, for instance, Luigi actually accelerates slower than Mario, even though he has a higher top speed. Uh, which actually means like from a standstill, for instance, you have to run for a little bit longer before you long jump. Which is really fun if you're a Galaxy 2 player, because uh, in some <laughs> Galaxy 2 runs you switch between Mario and Luigi during the run. Um, and Mario takes, I think, seven frames of running to, wall to long jump, and Luigi takes slightly longer. So after like three hours of Mario, your like perception gets entirely thrown off. Um, 
Also, Luigi uh, loses air with each consecutive shake in the water where Mario doesn't, so we'll see later in, like, Sea Slide, for instance. Uh, it's a lot easier to drown uh, as Luigi compared to Mario. Remember when I said continuously spinning underwater is the fastest way to move? Yeah. Uh, well, if you drown, it's not that fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but um, as Mario, it's like... It's like, oh, you know, you're just spinning underwater. As Luigi, it's like, you're spinning underwater. I hope you don't drown. <laughs> um, and this is Freeze Flame Secret. This is a, I think, universally, like, every speedrunner likes this level because it is just pure movement, and it's really cool movement as well. So I'm going to focus for a bit and allow the commentators to sort of uh, take over the explanation of what I'm going to be doing in this level because I really want to execute this well so I can show it off. You can go for it, Gamma. Uh, I think this level is also another example of um, a level where the movement shows like how cool 2P is and how much fast, um, how much faster it is than just basic climbing up the tower. Uh, so instead of going up to the middle path like in Freeze Flame One, MKK is going to go to the side here and then uh, come up to this Sling Star. Normally use an Ice Flower to get up here, but with just some 2P jumps, you can get up without it. And uh, basically, MKK is gonna climb up the mountain really quickly using both the Fire Flower here to spawn the Sling Star and using a bunch of backflips and 2P jumps. This is a cool strat here. The Fin Cancel Fireball into the Triple Jump. Uh, that's possible because I spun to throw a fireball and then immediately jumped, which allowed me to keep my momentum because triple jumps in this game are very momentum based. That was good. I'm really happy with that level. That was actually that was so nice. That was solid. That was clean. Um, so this game, triple jumps in this game work really weirdly. You, it's like if you're familiar with how they work in Odyssey, um, Odyssey's triple jumps are really different and Odyssey's triple jumps are based on like your angle. So if your angle changes too much in the air, you won't get a triple jump. In this game, they're based on your speed. So you can completely change your facing angle and still get a triple jump as long as you're moving fast enough in the direction Luigi is facing it. Um, so it's, triple jumps are finicky and sometimes you need to set one up in a really tight space, which requires you to like let go of the control stick with precise timing in order to make the triple jump work, but not move laterally as far. And uh, Free Slim Comet is our first race against Cosmic Luigi. And again, I'm going to focus while my commentators explain this level. I didn't get to take this one. Jump. Actually, explain yeah, frame-perfect the... jumps first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So frame-perfect jumps, at the start of every single level, there is one frame that you can press A on, and it will actually cancel the landing zone. Also, quickly, uh, MKK is going to be going for a fast nice. start here, which he actually got. Uh, if you hold Z to crouch and then press A right as the race starts, uh, you will get a running start, which, as far as I'm aware, is intentional because there's an yeah, effect for it. It is. Um, and yeah, it gives us a little bit of speed, which is really nice. Oh, I got um, the back yeah, like I was saying, skate. Oh, oh yep. okay, we're good. we're good. Yeah, if you don't neutral when switching gravities, uh, when you start skating again, you will immediately 180, which is a really fun quirk of this game's physics engine. <laughs> Sometimes um, you do that and just yeah. skate right off the edge. It's great. Um, yep. <laughs> and so frame perfect jumps. So there's a there's a one frame jump you can do at the start of every level. Normally it only saves like maybe a second because that landing animation is not very long. Um, and so normally I just I, there's no like timing. You just kind of mash and hope you get it. But in that level it actually saves way more time because you can jump into the cutscene and immediately start the cutscene, which is a a big time save. So like. A lot of people's golds have the frame perfect jump at the start of that level, and it's just like unless you get you beat, unless you get the frame perfect jump, you're never gonna beat your gold. Um, the running start, by the way, is a five frame window, and it gives you a bigger boost depending on like the earlier you hit it. So it's actually uh, I actually might miss the running start because I try to time the input as early as possible to get the biggest boost. And uh, this level has a brand new skip in it that was just discovered recently, and I'm going to throw this one over to the commentators while I focus because because the skip is new, I'm not amazing at it yet. You can go for this camera, I never learned the skip. <laughs> okay, uh, so MKK mentioned earlier that uh, for a while, Gusty Garden has been very boring level-wise, just because uh, each of the stars are very long, 
But uh, this skip here, which MKK is about to go for, skips a very large portion of this star by going straight to the boss Hello? planet. Where is my camera? That's better. Uh, dude, come on. Okay, this uh, this looks good enough. I'm just gonna try it and see if it works. No, actually, never mind. That was not a good. That's a bad setup. So this skip was found really recently. It's a slightly finicky angle setup, but if you do it correctly. That works. So I just skipped basically ah, the entire whoa. level with a good execution that saves 50 seconds. So not only wow. was that a a big discovery because it skips a really boring, awful level, but it's one of the biggest skips in this game, even accounting for the skips that you can do multiple times. Like that is a huge skip, and it like a lot of people it inspired a lot of people to sort of start running this game actively again because any percent you could suddenly just save a minute off your PB for free. And 120, same, like pretty much. You could just, you have a, like a minute of free time save, just, you know, like baked into the run with a trick that's not too difficult to do. Um, although I did get a little bit of a sketchy camera setup there. Sometimes you get lucky enough to just already have the right angle and uh, it's sort of based on your approach a little bit. Um, but it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing to sort of get an intuition for. But once you understand how to do it, that, skip can just save you loads of time because it's a big skip. It's a um, it's a pretty significant time save. It exists in both categories and it's also uh, it skips a really boring level that's actually kind of difficult to play well, uh, especially because there's just some complex movement in the level that exists. Although complex doesn't necessarily make it interesting, unfortunately. Um, so, so yeah, that was a Big skip, and that's actually like one of the the only 2P exclusive tricks in the run. At least I think it's 2P exclusive. Someone maybe has done it with one player, but I don't think someone has actually managed to get to the boss planet. Um, <laughs> so this is Bowser 2, Bowser's Dark Matter plant, and this is another level I need to focus for, so go ahead, commentators, help me out here if yeah. you will. I can say this one. This one is very fun with gravity. As you can see, we just long jump right off the top right of that platform and skip basically the entirety of the first section. There's also a gravity skip here. Uh, it yeah, it went a little bit awry there, but yeah, you can know you can fly all the way around that section. I don't go for that actually. Uh, oh, do you not? I can't no, it's fair. like I don't um, find it to be consistent, so I just yeah, don't go fair. for it. But I do go for yeah, this running... triple jump. Okay, which this is cool. <laughs> Oh. That, okay, I, I haven't even seen that before. <laughs> that's actually sick. <laughs> that's such uh, a cool we... strat. I literally just go for that because it's cool. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, that's such a... Oh, uh, that's silly. That's okay. That doesn't lose that much time because I respawn right at the start of that section. But like... Yeah, that's fine. That, that bonk was... Uh, if you bonk on that planet, sometimes you just get absolutely rolled because the platform just moves out from under you and you just die. Uh, and then here I'm going to go for something that we call plus skip. Oh yeah, okay. I'm explaining again now. Nice. Uh, so you long jump off the top mm -hmm. of the plus, and if you hold upright and A in the air, you will perfectly fly through all of the gravity sections. Yeah, that looks really hard, but kick. the setup is actually super consistent. Like, I think anybody can yeah. do that. And here, I just learned this, so hopefully it works. Nice. Okay. Nice. That's a tricky... That Let's jump, go. it's so hard. Like, it looks easy, but it's not easy. Uh, and I... I only recently like figured out how it works enough to actually be able to get it consistently. So, uh, yeah, GG. I guess that I'm glad I got that <laughs> first try. I'm glad I I got most of the hard stuff in this level. You know, setting aside the quick death to something that was kind of kind of like me just getting a little messed up by the bonk. Uh, I don't. That doesn't usually happen. That's not a very common way to mess up in this level. So the, the boss fight here is very similar to the first boss fight where I'm going to be canceling his attacks, but he has this like spin attack and this is the, no, I got hit. That's really unfortunate because getting hit unfortunately means that I'm going to have to deal with the spin again. That's a, uh, wow, what the heck? That's unusual. Wow, he's still, you this said, fight's going insane. completely pear-shaped, but oh, it's okay because somehow that. I'm still alive. So, so getting hit there is weird. Um, that's actually, 
not something I'm used to. So there's your that's never happened before. Although it, it has happened a couple mm. times, but I can't really figure out what causes it. And this is the third phase where he does three spins. That's the most difficult, and I got the, the cancel. So, so spinning into his spin attacks ends the animation earlier, which is the reason I've been doing it this whole time. It's because it's, uh, it's pretty significantly faster. Um, and there we go. That's... That's Bowser 2. So that level was that level was rough, but I got through it mostly in one piece, and I'm really happy about that because it's super easy to die in that level and lose a ton of time. So I got probably the quickest death because it's a fast respawn, doesn't mess up any cycles, so if I have to have a death in that level, that's a good place to have it. Um, is there a song I prefer? That's a really good question. My favorite song in this game is probably the buoy bass music, which is a absolute banger in my opinion. Um, as well That's as, a good choice. Too. I really like the song in the first level actually, in Gateway Galaxy. That's a good that's a good song. Uh, although, I think I would like it a lot less if I was if I played with game audio and was listening to that all the time. So I think uh, now is a good time for the second break, because we are two hours into the run. Sounds good to me. In that case, yeah, we'll be back in a little bit once for more of this run. We're now taking, we'll taking another little, little wellness break. We do that every hour or so because it's important. So go stand up, go get some water, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. More of the show. And the run. And the run. The most important part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, once again, I'm going to do a quick announcement. So, if you're watching this run on YouTube right now, be sure to press the like button on the video and also subscribe to the channel. That'd be really cool. But you can also go to Games Done, or, excuse me, twitch.tv slash Games Done Quick if you're interested in actually watching this live in the future as well. This show is usually on, uh, actually, the previous day. It's usually on Fridays, but we're doing kind of a longer special tonight. And, or today. It's like not even past noon for me. Actually, it's past noon. What? Ah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Special show day on Saturday. This gets cool. <laughs> I butchered that, but it's fine. I got, I got the point across. Anyways, let's get, let's get back to the run. <laughs> it is night in, for some people. Uh, for some people, it is. Not night. for me. It's night. Well, My it's night just somewhere. started like it's three like, hours ago. So you can just say whatever you want. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's let's keep going. So, oh, sorry, I didn't count down. Oops. Go start. <laughs> So uh, we are heading now into the engine room, which is actually going to be the last dome we're doing in the any percent portion of this run. So as you can see, we have 11 stars left, which means we have about maybe like half an hour um, left in the, the first half of this run. And we're going to be getting those 11 stars in the engine room. And the movement to the engine room involves this really funny looking fancy trick. That saves what like one whole second. So. That's so that's cool. cool. Uh, and the, the other stat is that you just run, but it's cool, so I do it because I like to show that off. Um, and the engine room is like the opposite of, or like it's it's there's some levels that in this in this game that are hard and like not very fun to play. The engine room has some hard levels, but every level in the engine room is fun, at least in first half. We'll get to second half later. Um, so. <laughs> You might know that Sea Slide Galaxy is full of auto scrollers, and we're actually going to be not doing any levels in Sea Slide Galaxy until the very end of the run, so that's nice. Um, so this level has a strat that I actually dropped recently, and I won't be going for it because I did try to practice it this uh, week, and although I put a decent amount of time into it, I couldn't quite get consistent with it. Um, so there are two ways to approach collecting these star trips. There's going counterclockwise around this first planet and clockwise around this first planet. And clockwise is very slightly faster, but you need to do this jump backwards. Like, I can just fall here, but doing that jump backwards is actually difficult. And dying to it loses a lot more time than it could ever possibly save. So uh, for the sake of marathon safety, if I was on like a really solid run, I'd probably go for it just to, you know, try it. There's the fountain. That's bad. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but um, just to, you know, in the interest of consistency, I am not super consistent with the clockwise movement, even though I have put a decent amount of time into practicing it. So so that fountain has like the world's longest animation if it hits you. I don't know why it takes so long to do that, but yeah. Also, here's a cool strat. You need to grab these pull stars, so it's actually better to go into first person and grab them because you get up to the launch star faster. And this strat, hopefully I get this because it's really cool. Um, 
way to catch this bunny. So I'm going to, I need to catch the bunny and I'm actually going to try, uh, that, that was close, but I didn't quite get it. So you can do a strat there where you hit the green stretchy. I, I, I have no aim. There we go. You can hit the green stretchy plant nice. into the bunny by using the 2P cursor and that stuns it, allowing you to catch it. Um, and you're meant to like hit a switch that pops up walls on that planet so the bunny is easier to catch, but you could just use star bits to hit it. Unfortunately, I missed a lot, so that's that's okay, that's okay. Um, so uh, do, uh, I think maybe I can let the commentators explain this next level because there's all kinds of cool tricks in this level, uh, Gold Leaf 2, and I think uh, focusing will help me maybe play it a little bit better, so. Why don't y'all take it away on this one? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. Uh, so, Gold League 2 is home to a lot of very fun and Why is interesting so gravity. Oh, there we go. Wait. You... Am I... Okay. Okay, yeah. now you're good, now you're good. <laughs> yeah, Gold League 2 is uh, yeah, home to a, very, uh, a lot of very interesting skips, mostly involving the gravity and the weird geometry of its planets. Um, so the first part is pretty self-explanatory. We take a relatively tight line around this railing, um, which, yeah, can be a little bit scary, um, but we're fine. You avoid this... Ooh, uh, the fence is eager jumps, because... by the way, sometimes. That's yeah. just the thing that can happen. Yeah, we want to avoid that catacrack, and now we get into the fun bit. So we can start off by long jumping right as we reach the end of the curvature of this planet. Or just doing a grounded 2P, that works too. I should really not assume my movement is going to be used. That's a bit faster, uh, that grounded 2P yeah. there. <laughs> and then yeah, another grounded 2P to switch into this, and then we abuse the Cataquack uh, hitting you to launch into the end of this planet. Um, and then yeah, we use the last one to launch us into the launch star. Uh, are you going for Crump Stump? Okay, Crump. Uh, so yeah, backflip. Uh, Two okay, walking, <laughs> four frame jump on the flower uh, into the star. Yeah, so we <laughs> call that nice. crump so jump, fast. which is an abbreviation of cringe stump jump, which is weird because stump <laughs> jump is actually harder. But that is a there's a little bit of confused geometry on that flower that you can get a wall jump off of. That is actually quite precise, and not getting it first try is bad because the setup involves like the specific position that you land in when you land out of the launch star on that planet. And on the previous planet, I tried to like just jump into the launch star, but that requires like a really well-timed jump, and fortunately, I didn't quite get it. So now we're heading into Toy Time 1. Toy Time 1 is a also incredibly fun movement-intensive level, um, and this level introduces the Spring Mushroom. So you're meant to use the Spring Mushroom in this level, and the thing with the Spring Mushroom, um, the Spring Mushroom, the ability that the Spring Mushroom gives you is that nobody likes the Spring Mushroom. So we're not going to be using the Spring Mushroom at all in this run. I won't be picking it up at all. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, because the Spring Mushroom, all it does is give you a higher jump and worse horizontal movement. But like, you can already jump pretty high in this game. So the Spring Mushroom is basically just useless. Don't die to the laser dude. <laughs> Shoutouts to Silo. <laughs> uh, there's a clip of uh, a top galaxy runner dying to that laser enemy, and it's really funny because he's a 2P runner, and you can just freeze it with 2P. Uh, so ever since then, that's become a bit of a meme. And so here's where you're meant to get the Spring Mushroom, but like, nah, I I'm good. It's like way slower to get the Spring Mushroom, so I'm not doing it. It's also arguably harder, but you know, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to climb up these these platforms, and here you're meant to bounce up this this fork here because the spring mushroom can go up slopes, but like, just jump. And the main sort of gimmick of this level is that there's this big, this is called the Mecha Bowser. I don't really think it looks that much like Bowser, but you know, whatever. Uh, there's this big like toy robot you're supposed to sort of climb up little by little and dismantle in pieces until you get to the very top, but I can do a trick that we call armpit skip here. And, uh, I got caught on the wall. That's okay. I can back this up. Uh, okay. We, uh, okay. Now I bonked. I have to, I'm on the thing. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So that's, we uh, got there in the end. We got there in the end. That's armpit skip. That allows you to skip. Like, it looks like that was slow, but I still skipped like a ton of this level, like pretty much the entire section here. And it saves like, like actual so much time we don't even like check 
Uh, we don't, yeah, know, we don't, don't really know how much time it saves. Like, it's just like a thing that saves a lot of time. And there, I actually did a very small optimization, which was I ground pounded on those like stones to sort of. I got the weird jump. I ground pounded on those stones to um, destroy the robot, but I actually ground pounded in such a way that I landed on the the edge of the hole in the robot's head instead of going into the robot's head, which is what you're normally supposed to be able to do. And that makes the cutscene play slightly faster, which uh, you save a tiny, tiny bit of time by doing that. But it's a little risky because if you ground pound too early, you'll miss the rocks and then just have to set up the jump a second time. And that can, uh, that can end up losing you uh, a decent amount. So Toy Time 2 is a pretty, pretty mid-level. It's not that great, but there's some cool movement on the second planet that hopefully I'll be able to get um, that really shows off why 2P can save a lot of time just because of the the higher jumps that it allows you to do and the way that it allows you to sort of alter your movement on very vertical planets or on sections that are like geometrically complicated. So um, there's also a lot of star bits in this level, which is nice. There's a lot of star bits in general in Toy Time Galaxy, which is uh, really good for the 120 uh, speedrun, especially because you don't do a lot of the levels in Toy Time in, uh, in any percent. So let me just try and get this. This is a really gross jump. Okay, so that gravity of this screw is really weird. I normally you're supposed to screw in the screw in order to access the next part of the level, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use a set up a backflip. Oh, I didn't get the bounce. So you can bounce off that uh, Magic Koopa or the Mecha Koopa and land about here, but I didn't get it. So I got a 2P jump and because the launch start takes a little bit to activate, I have to fall down and jump back up, but it's still faster than screwing in the screw uh, in order to raise the other side of the screw underneath that launch star. And this is the the Mario planet. Uh, you need to collect five silver stars on this planet that looks like Mario. Um, and these flippy platforms can be really sketchy because like I said, slopes in this game do not necessarily behave themselves, but thankfully the movement on this planet is pretty consistent. Um, so that's nice. And the, the slopes don't, like, the way that slopes work in this game is just that the platforms become slopes once they're at a steep enough angle. So you kind of are gambling with how long you stay on those yellow platforms because if you stay on them too long, they'll become slopes and you'll just get sloped. And it's it's really easy to die because of that. Uh, so yeah, I don't... Again, like, my commentators can probably share stories of times that they've been sloped in really bad situations, but everyone has had a bad experience <laughs> with a slope and either of the Galaxy games. Like, no matter which one you run, slopes are the enemy. <laughs> yeah, G2 is definitely the, the the worst of the two evils, but especially in that level, there's a lot of clips of me, like, literally just... It, it almost looks like I've clipped through the ground because I land on the back half of a platform, slide down and go onto one of the green platforms and just fall to my death. <laughs> That's an awful so, way to die. <laughs> Yeah, and that happened in Toy Time P once, like right at the end. Oh, which that's, for those for those that's sad. Uh, uninitiated loses about a minute. <laughs> yeah. So I got the frame perfect jump in that level, which is nice, but then I kinda messed up the movement because I'm not used to the cycle. So this is Toy Time 3. This is another level where you're meant to use the spring mushroom, and we are going to be skipping it entirely. So there's the spring mushroom. I'm not using it, so it's bye. Uh, because this section's way faster if you don't use the spring mushroom. You can actually get up there without the spring mushroom by just doing a triple jump, but obviously a 2P jump is a little bit faster. This coin spawns a metric ton of star bits, so it's another like very, very small spot in the run where I'm going out of my way to grab extra star bits just because there's so many. And here you're meant to go around the circular planet, but we can use the height of the the conveyor belt up there to just kind of jump around the, the big chocolate bar that's blocking your way. There's an absolutely insane clip of Kyle dying here in a run, and it's really yep. funny. Uh, and also this <laughs> section is genuinely difficult. The the laser dudes and the skating and the platforming can be tricky, but luckily I got through that relatively clean. Um, yeah. I positioned I the cursor there to the shoot clip. directly into the uh, launch out of the cannon. That's why I could just mash A and get the shot instantly. But yeah, go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, so on that little like ice cream planet at the start, I went to long jump towards the platforms and I somehow slingshotted out of the gravity field of the original planet and just got launched to my death. I just got launched like straight downwards, basically. 
um, like, and fell out of any gravity field related to that part of the level. It's literally and, like yeah. new deaths just dropped. Like no one, yeah. everyone, he posted that <laughs> no. clip and everyone was like, what the heck? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I have, I, I've become, I wouldn't say notorious, that might be a little bit egotistical, but I, I've become somewhat known for finding ways to break this game that nobody's really seen before or the can stuff reasonably that explain. To him, it's like your <laughs> curse. Like, the stuff that happens to you in runs is crazy. Also, again, supposed to use the spring mushroom, I'm just jumping. Like, it's it's not... It's like, I can, I can just jump. You, you do not need the spring mushroom because you can already jump high enough to not need to use it. So there we go. That was actually a really solid Toy Time 3 for the most part. I'm uh, pretty happy with how that went. That's a that's a cool level, um, especially the movement on the cake where you have to blow up the candles. I didn't talk about that because we were busy talking about slopes. Sorry, but uh, that that movement's cool, and there's a lot of different ways to do that uh, that are all pretty pretty fast, and it's it's cool. So Gold Leaf 3 is another level where we're basically just not doing anything the intended way. Um, in this level, you're normally meant to get a bee mushroom, which allows you to climb uh, up and also stand on these rain clouds that you'll see. So the main obstacle in this level is the rain clouds are platforms. You can stand on top of them, but water removes your bee power up. So if you go under the clouds, you'll actually lose your bee mushroom, and theoretically you'd have to get another one. But we're not going to be using the bee mushroom at all. And uh, Gamut, why don't you explain the movement in this level while I do it? Uh, so you can use the tree over here, or actually with 2P you don't use the tree at all, you just do a triple jump and a 2P jump to make it up to this platform, and then up some more quick Oops. climbing up the tower with 2P. And uh, then there's a, a little cutscene skip here, which uh, I think you can probably explain. Yeah, so by landing on the outer fence of this arena, you can prevent the cutscene from playing of like the boss getting mad at you. And the weird thing about this is uh, if you start the fight without playing that cutscene, the boss does not function properly and just doesn't attack you at all. So you're able to very easily climb back on top of it. Yeah, so and by mm. shaking the Wiimotes for my absolute life, you can buffer a spin off that vine and land outside the boss arena. That's not intentional. But man, is it useful because that boss fight is really bad when you're trying to do it um, while the boss is like active. And also something I did there was I ground padded on a specific spark part of the glass dome on top of the boss and that um, caused me to land right next to the star as opposed to um, on a different part of the arena. So that's like a very small little um, optimization. So Goldleaf S is a secret level located in Goldleaf 2, but it actually um, doesn't require me to do pretty much any of the level that I've already just done. Instead, I'm going to head off to the right here, and I'm going to... Uh, there's like, randomly, there's a bubble here, and this level's name in English is The Bell on the Big Tree, because this bell spawns music notes, and if you collect the music notes, you get the star. This is like a really simple level, but collecting these notes at full speed and not missing any is really hard to do. Like, there are some runners who can literally just never, like, continuously blow the bubble to the right and still collect all the notes. I take it a little safe, but that was still pretty fast uh, for my standards, so solid enough. And Gold Leaf C is another race against Cosmic Luigi. Uh, and you're going to see pretty much the same movement that I did in Gold Leaf 3 to get up to that wooden platform. Uh, however, that is where the star is in this level as opposed to needing to, you know, climb up the tower and do the boss fight. And uh, back when I was a be beginner in one of my first runs of this game, when I wasn't yet confident with the movement, I actually lost this race against Cosmic Luigi three times in one run. But thankfully, that's not happening to me anymore. At least I hope it doesn't, because if it does in this run, I might just have to retire and, you know, like let Kyle finish the run for me or something. Uh, <laughs> but not with the Wiimotes. Not nowadays. <laughs> just hand controller. It's easy. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> head to the UK real quick and just. You know. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, I'll just, just you know, toss it across the ocean. That's fine. And I have to like get a power bank for my Wii so it doesn't turn off. But you know, okay. So I missed the starting boost there because it's a kind of tricky frame window to time properly. But hopefully, I will get this jump. 
Very nice. So the Gambit mentioned you can wall jump off the tree. That's like a backup for if you miss that jump, but it is a little bit faster to sort of do that backwards wall jump off the, the plank. And that's a cool, that's a cool jump. And uh, it's a little easier in the Comet because you don't have a really weird camera angle when you're doing it. Um, the camera in this game, it's good like 90% of the time, but when you're doing speedrun strats where you're going through levels in unintended ways, sometimes it can really work against you. And it can be hard to set up tricks that require something like a really precise angle when the camera is literally fighting you for that, you know, that good angle. So Toy Time Secret is a level where I'm going to be feeding a Hungry Luma, so I'm going to need to pick up all of these star bits. And again, 2P makes this much, much, much easier to grab all of these on these planets because the 2P cursor's radius for picking up star bits, I think it's something like five times higher than the 1P cursors, or five times larger. There I went for a triple jump, but the triple jump didn't have enough speed, so I didn't quite get it. Uh, luckily, I was able to get a backup there. So like, I can 2P jump to this Hungry Luma, which skips having to like walk around the planet, so it saves a little bit of time. And this, uh, this movement on this next part is really not great. I'm going into first person to manipulate the cycles so that they're slightly more favorable, these tox boxes here, but this level, uh, this level, this part of the level is very problematic because these things move very slowly and you can get totally, um, you can get totally, like, you can lose a lot of time to just the fact that the tox boxes take a while to flip up away from the platforms. That's a nice 2 jump. A little risky the because it's really easy to get crushed. <laughs> But, yeah, the yeah. tox boxes are also nice not fair. Ledge grab. Yeah, neither are the buttons. <laughs> they have very janky. They have very janky collision, and so do these like square platforms. These things are awful. They have the yeah, worst you can collision. You can soft log with it due to these platforms. It's been done. <laughs> it's been done. It's never happened to me before, and I've like even <laughs> I've even like tried to get the soft lock, and it's never happened to me before. So hopefully, it doesn't happen to me in this run. I'm going to be pretty careful around these platforms, though, as I always am in no resets, just to make sure I don't. The way that you can get Softlocks is by getting trapped between uh, two of the platforms, but I'm pretty sure it can only happen after the star has spawned because they stop moving. Because in the normal yes. level, they'll just move up from under you. Um, yeah, yeah, they have to So stopped. that looks pretty fun, right? Well, Toy Time Comet is that level, but everything moves fast. So you need to have really solid movement, and this game, for a polished 3D Mario platformer made by Nintendo, a huge game company with a ton of development experience, this game has the worst crushing physics of all time. That is an award. I it wait, it won at the the tenth annual video game awards. This game won the award for worst crushing physics. I was there. I presented the award. Um, so the the basic gist of it is that this game. When it like tries to crush you, the walls that crush you do not have to be moving towards one another. So you're gonna notice me like avoid these tox boxes, and the reason why is because they can crush you while they're moving away from you. They can flip up away from you and still crush you. In the normal star, yeah. that's not that much of a problem because the tox boxes don't move fast enough that it's like really that easy to get into that like tiny little gap before um, the distance between the walls becomes the correct distance to crush you. But in this level, because they move faster, it is really easy to accidentally brush up against one of them and just die for no discernible reason. And it is like there are so many clips of people dying in extremely janky ways. Also, these these flip switches like sometimes have collision and sometimes don't. So like, yeah, there I tried to just run onto it, which is normally possible, but it didn't let me because video games. Um, and also, you can freeze these platforms with 2P, but because they move fast, it's not necessarily that helpful. But that was a... It was a clean enough Toy Time comment. Didn't take damage, which is nice. Didn't get crushed, which is even better. So, GG. <laughs> um, yeah, like MKK was saying, there are an insane amount of clips where people will literally just stand next to the Tox Box, waiting for it to go off. They won't even be and moving. And when it leaves... Yeah, and when it, when it... Oh yeah, sometimes it's not even moving, and you will just die. Uh, it makes no sense. The There's a really good clip jank. where, um, this is, I think it's like one of your top Twitch clips, right? Kyle, like you, the one in Galaxy 2, you long jump, you stand under the tox box, it flips 
over you and then it comes back you haven't moved and it still crushes you like it just crushes oh, you yeah it just yeah. It, like what doesn't crush you the first time and then crushes <laughs> you the second time that's like yeah. i don't even know how that that's happened. so rude of them it's yeah, like and the famous last words were i'm going to be patient and wait, wait for the cycle so i don't get crushed and yeah it just killed and me then when you it got came crushed. back and you know what i still i don't think that death was your fault if you want some validation from another person because that thank you that was that was a very silly death but uh yeah so this um level is bowser's La uh, bowser jr's lava reactor so this is actually a level that's exclusive to 120 star because well we have done a number of those already uh this it unlocks the garden which is the sort of it's like kind of like a post game area you don't need to uh complete the garden or even unlock the garden in order to beat the game but you need to obviously um beat all of the stars in the garden in order to get all of the stars in the game because there are stars there so the the reason why we do this level now is because of routing um normally you don't do this level because it takes a really long time but also has really long cutscenes at the end of the level but because we need to go do the last level anyway, we get this as the 60th star, which 60 stars unlock the final level. And it actually allows us to get, um, it actually allows us to sort of like stack those cutscenes on top of each other. And it loses a lot less time than it ordinarily would uh, to do this level. So this is not only is this a good time to do this level, but it's actually faster because of the way this works. And I'm doing uh, another strat for Fast Caliente here. I'm holding these coconuts with two feet in order to get a slightly faster uh, execution on the fight. I'm not even really sure if that saves time. It might be slightly faster, but the nice thing about it is that it makes the fight a lot easier to execute um, because you don't have to do risky jumps towards the lava. You can actually, uh, in this level, long jump towards King Caliente, really quickly spin the coconut back and forth, and then land in the lava and do a lava boost back to the platform that you were already on. But that's a very tricky strat, and I don't know that many people are go for it, frankly. So I, I <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> not easy. I to used do. to, I used to go for it until I long jumped out one time. A meteor hit me that was falling from the oh, sky. No. <laughs> I was so I was on two health. I long jumped out, got hit by a meteor, and bounced in the lava on the way back. I lost a minute and a half, and I think that run PB. I, I just. <laughs> I just sat there at the end, just thinking about the 90 seconds I lost trying to save like two seconds. Yeah, it's not oh, that much faster. Worst. It's a very, very punishing way to die. So here you'll see yeah. the garden unlocks, like you're going to get the, the path to the garden. Um, so again, this dome isn't mandatory, so you never see it in any percent. But in 120 Star, it's actually good to unlock it now because now there's a cutscene where Rosalina is going to be like, it's time to go to confront Bowser at the center of the universe. Uh, and she's uh, she's basically going to tell us like we now have enough stars to access the the next area, and then there's of course a cutscene, and you can skip this the second time, but you can't skip it the first time because why would they let you skip cutscenes in this game? There are a lot of unskippable cutscenes in this game, unfortunately, which sucks because it's it's there are a lot of the downtime in this game just comes from all of those unskippable cutscenes and. It's a little unfortunate that like half the run is actually gameplay, but the gameplay I think does make up for some of the downtime because there's a lot of action going on still, even when uh, it's broken up a bit by cutscenes. And I actually kind of prefer this game to something like Super Mario Odyssey because I like the downtime to be in longer segments instead of just like every like every time you get a moon, you have a 10 second animation or whatever. It's it's kind of nice to uh, have a have like longer amounts of time where I can like look at Discord or check my phone or you know type in the Twitch chat or something like that. It's a it's a useful um, tool to have all those cutscenes. And I gotta say as well too, if someone's not seen us run in a few years, like that like the downtime is really good in this because like the actual gameplay itself is very technical and there's so many cool like skips to it and everything that are really just entertaining to see. So like, I don't mind a downtime at all myself. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And it's, it's also fun. good if you're like a streamer, like, especially if you're like a bigger streamer, it's good to have, you know, downtime so you can read and interact with your chat. And having like an active chat, I think a lot of people uh, find that it makes this game a lot more bearable. 
So this is a Bowser 3. This level is incredibly difficult, and I'm going to be going for an early cycle movement here, which hopefully I got caught on that edge, but hopefully I'll still get it. I think I can. Oh, I almost ran off the edge. That would have been not ideal. I can do a... Oh, no. Okay, we're good. So you can do a 2P jump out of that gravity spotlight to get a really high jump, but uh, it's not necessary, but it would have been slightly faster. So I did get the early cycle there. This planet, there's an invisible wall, but it's like so small that you can just go around it, so you can just skip that entire planet. Um, the ice planet here is pretty much a, a matter of just skating, but you can skate, grab the coin, and then uh, line yourself up with the 1-up, and that makes the platforms really easy to navigate. Again, I just skipped an entire section of platforming just by long jumping to the end. So this level has all of these sections, and I think it's cool how they're like all based on sort of different like um, elements, I guess. Like you got the, the fire planet, you got the ice planet, and then you got the sand, the quicksand planet, but none of those none of those planets are really that daunting in a speedrun, and I think the movement is cool. Also, this level has a lot of star bits in it, which is nice. And here's the cave. This is a really difficult and punishing part of the run. And there's actually a faster way to do the cave, but I don't go for it because it saves a very small amount of time. That was sketchy. And it's also much more difficult and it's really punishing to fail. Um, but this is still pretty fast. I, I lava boost there to get um, invincibility frames so I can pass directly through that bonsai bill without it getting hit by it. And there we go. That was a that was a decent level. Up, oh, app, app, app. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so now we we approach the Bowser fight itself, and this Bowser fight has three um, phases to it. So unlike the other Bowser fights where you just need to hit him three times, this actually has uh, multiple phases. And the first thing, um, the first phase of the Bowser fight is the stairs. <laughs> so these these stairs are really hard to go up quickly. Um, also, you can soft lock the game here. If you jump around this cutscene and then enter it from the back, the game soft locks. It's like you can't do it by accident, but it's really uh, funny to do on purpose. And that was a... So I bonked on the stairs. If you do the stairs correctly, you can get a very... Um, like you can get a perfectly smooth chain of long jumps all the way up the stairs. And it's so, so satisfying, but you can't... I didn't quite get it in this run, but that's okay. So here Bowser um, is like, my grand plan is happening. He also says, watch and weep, which is a very funny line. And now we're heading into the Bowser fight, and I'm going to let the commentators uh, explain what's going on here. You can go for this if you want to go. All right, uh, the first phase is uh, kind of similar to the previous two Bowser fights, except he turns into a boulder and you got to hit him twice, just like after he gets burnt in the first two Bowser fights. Uh, pretty much same thing for the second hit. This game predicted the rock mushroom. Yes. <laughs> and there I actually jumped and spun into Bowser to get a little bit of backwards momentum, just slightly, make myself go slightly faster. And here's the, no, I got owned. The green, the green, stre the famous green stretchy plant planet. So what I'm trying to do is is hit Bowser with these green plants, but like, it's it's really inconsistent. I'm trying to just use the 2P cursor to hit the plants into him, but it's not consistent at all. And that was a bad start, but it was a really good ending. Um, and if so, like it, it's kind of like not consistent, like what direction he goes in. So you just have to, whatever green plants near him, you kind of just got to try and hit him with it. And this is the final phase. This is a very, this is the traditional like Bowser fight. Um, except he has a detect where he rolls up into his shell. Luckily, uh, I can actually get hit in order to take him out of his shell early. And I don't know why that works, but it does. So if like an, another attack is on the field still, like the the shockwaves there, or in this case, I'm going to try and use the fireballs from his uh, from his fireball attack. You can actually take damage in order to force him out of his shell earlier than you earlier than he would normally get out of it. So there, I used a fire boost, and that should be no. It's so over. Uh, that was a good Bowser fight until then, but I think he's gonna. Yep. Okay. That's a shame. That's a huge shame actually, because that's that loses a lot of time. And until then, the fight was actually really solid. But it's okay. Um, I'm going to try and do a bit of a backup here. Uh, he'll do the shell attack. I'm gonna try and get hit by the shockwave. Okay. Nice. All right, that was a 
does a decent enough backup, but it is a bit unfortunate that he missed the, the blue thing. Sometimes it can be pretty close and you'll think he should have hit it, but he didn't. Um, but that was a good level until then, so I think I still got to show off most of it. So that is the end of first half. So we've beaten, this is like a really, really bad any percent speedrun, but we've beaten the game with 60 stars. And the reason why we need to do this is because there's post-game content that unlocks the first time you beat Bowser. So now that I've done that, I can um, go back through the game and do a lot of the stars that don't unlock until after you beat Bowser. But unfortunately, in order to, you know, like, because I need to beat the game twice, like, you need to beat the game once in order to uh, actually unlock the post-game content, we have to beat the game and then watch the entire credits. So. There are two cutscenes here. There's like a two and a half or three minute cutscene. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to do some text. And then there's going to be a seven minute long no input cutscene. And luckily, because we need to take a break approximately every hour for the show here, um, you won't have to watch the credits because we'll be taking a break during when the credits are playing. But um, there's a little bit of cutscene to watch first. So please bear with us. And now is a good time to say that if like, it's a good time, because you don't have to do anything, to do a quick check of your yourself. Make sure you're not sitting in an uncomfortable position for a long time. Make sure you're, you're, you have food if you're hungry, and like some water if you're thirsty. If you need to stretch, get up and do it. If you need to go to the bathroom, get up and do it. Now is like the perfect time, because the credits are um, when every Galaxy One Runner also takes their break. Uh, during the yep. run here. So um, we're going to be sticking around until after the text boxes, but after that we'll be uh, we'll be taking a quick break um, here, and you'll come back uh, towards the end of the credits so you won't have to watch those. But uh, so basically, um, the story of this game, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if we've covered it really, but basically what happens here is, is Bowser gets, um, Bowser gets uh, his 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 giant like galaxy. He's gonna try and rule the whole universe from. Like this happens, and then Bowser unfortunately dies in this explosion, which is really sad because uh, uh, now I guess it's good because Princess Peach won't get kidnapped anymore. And the explosion also creates a giant black hole that sucks up the entire universe, and. All of the Lumas like jump into the black hole and then somehow reverse its effects, um, exploding everything back out of the black hole and like restarting the universe to make an even better universe. And that's basically what is happening in this cutscene. Uh, this cutscene made me cry as a kid, but now I just think it's a little silly. Like what? It's like it's like okay, we're gonna blow up the entire universe and then like reset the entire universe, but. It does mean that this game has the most metal story of any Mario game because the entire universe explodes. So oh, yeah. this game's oh, yeah. for hardcore <laughs> gamers only. Uh, it's true. Rated M for mature. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess if there's any like random stuff that anyone wants to talk about, now is a good time for that uh, because we're just we're just kind of watching here. this happen. I was also scared of this part as a kid, like this. This like vortex thing really scared me for some reason. I was also scared of the black holes as a kid in this game. Uh, I don't blame you. Black holes are terrifying <laughs> IRL too. They are scary <laughs> in real life. That's yeah. I usually avoid those if I can. Same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've uh, not it's a good taken... thing they're not. It's a good thing they're not uh, as uh, common and spread out across the world in real life as they are in this game. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. So here's the uh, text here. So after I finish mashing through this text, we're going to be uh, taking a break. So um, again, it's a little wellness break. Good time to stand up and stretch. Uh, I'm personally going to be probably standing up, going to the bathroom, grabbing some water, and then uh, coming back to do the second half of this run. So the, the no here. input portion of the cutscene starts now. So we can take the break now. All right, sounds good. In that case, we're going to take a little break, like, like they said, and we're going to be back in about uh, five or six minutes or so. So, BRB.
Oh, that was such good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. See, uh, we're getting back in the game immediately right now, but I'm going to do a quick announcement while we're doing that. And I'm just going to say, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on GQ Twitch for channel help support games with quick hotfix. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily spirit content. And fast. <laughs> yeah. So after first half is the only mandatory time, uh, the only mandatory save in the run. So after I finished the credits there, I saved the game. And if you don't save the game, you lose three hours. So good thing I remembered to save. Um, I've actually never forgotten in a run. So I have. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's like the type of thing that if you've done it, you've only done it once. But I've actually never forgotten. So it's uh, it's a good it's a good, um, I have a good track record, and every time I do like a marathon run, I'm always worried that's gonna be the one I forget, even though I'm not gonna forget. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, this mine is... Was with... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, the time I forgot to save, I was actually on PB Pace, which really sucks. That does uh, suck. I was in a race with Platicon, who we were talking, who we mentioned earlier, and we were just like chatting away, and I just like muscle memory clicked to no on the save box, and I was like, no, I no. forgot to save. It's, and my it, run just died because there's nothing over. you can do. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm gonna let a commentator explain uh, fast flying here. You can go for it if you want, Gavin. Okay, so uh, with the red star, uh, you're able to just fly around, but normally you fly around really slowly. But by mashing A with like a rhythm, you can uh, gain a lot of speed very quickly which uh with some precise flying you can get all these coins in the air oh, really i missed one quickly that was good until the end that is hard like it's really hard to control your angle um so pressing a like stops you in the air normally but for whatever reason if you like mash it in a specific rhythm not as fast as you can go but like a little slower than as fast as you can go you'll gain a bunch of speed with the red star and like fly much faster than you would normally um, be able to fly. And I don't know why that works at all. I don't really know if anybody knows why it works, but it it works and it's a uh, pretty decent time save, but doing it in this level to collect those purple coins in the air is really difficult to do. Um, like, after you beat this level, which is uh, Gateway Purples, you unlock the ability to use the Red Star in the observatory, and there's going to be a few times where instead of moving around using the teleporters and like long jumps, it's going to be faster for me to just go grab the red star and use it to fly somewhere. And when I do that, the, the fast flying is easy because I'm just going on like a, going in a straight line. But in this level, you need to really precisely control your position. So the fast flying in this level is actually a lot more difficult to do. And the purple coins uh, home into Luigi when you spin with the, the flying star, which is really nice because it makes it very easy to collect them. Um, and that was the first purple coin star. Purple coin stars unlock when you beat the game. So you, when you beat the, the final Bowser level, you unlock purple coin stars. And the purple coin stars are the most uh, brutally challenging, but also can be some of the most fun stars in this run. And um, But before I do any purple coin stars, I'm going to be heading off to Boo's Boneyard Galaxy, which is the Hungry Luma Galaxy that spawns next to the gate, which... Um, unlocks as like an intermediary to the garden. And you saw I talked to Luigi in the garage there. That was not a mistake. Uh, when you talk to Luigi, he says, I'll help you hunt for power stars. And then he goes into certain levels. There's three levels where Luigi will appear in the level and he'll give you a star. Actually, it's four. Um, Luigi will appear in the level and give you a star. And that only happens after you talk to Luigi for the first time. So we just, because we're going to get the red star in the garage there, we just uh, talk to Luigi. And yes, it's Luigi. There's just another Luigi because this game doesn't make sense. They never explain that. And the first time you, you save Luigi is in Ghostly Galaxy. His, his way of, um, the way they explain that, like lore-wise, is lo the Luigi you rescue that you're not playing as says, oh my, are you me? Well, I guess there's enough people in the universe for one person to look like me. Anyway, I found this star. <laughs> Here you go. And it's like, that's the only explanation you get. And it's very silly. That's so good. It's like it's Mar Mario across the Luigi verse is what that is. Yeah, basically. <laughs> also, fun fact, uh, NPC Luigi is actually taller than your character, Luigi. Like, what the he heck? has a different Cause... character model. For some yeah, reason. Luigi. So, so this Luigi that you play as is crushed to fit Mario's dimensions, 
Um, oh. It's very subtle, but if you stand your character Luigi next to NPC Luigi, it is very obvious. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun little fact I about think the game. That's like so NPC funny. Luigi also has like a darker green overalls yeah. or yeah. something, and then like his his uh, shirt collar is pulled up, whereas the character like player character Luigi's shirt collar is pulled down, which is weird because you can like see his neck kind of. Um, yeah, so a bunch of small weird changes. There I spent like 30 seconds hovering around that one up because I um, I was gonna try and collect it because normally I try to get that one up because the first time you grab a one up you get a text box and I really don't want the text box to happen in a certain place and I'll talk about that when it gets to it. Um, so I missed the one up, thought I had to go back for it, realized I got a one up earlier in the run and then uh, um, kind of just got confused there for a second. And it's not like when you get a 1-up, it's when you collect a physical 1-up mushroom. And, oh, I almost got sub-50. Okay, so that's that's Boo's Boneyard. The race there is really weird. The walls are super janky. If you bump into them, you can just get sent flying and also lose all of your speed, like your downward speed. And then, like, shaking repeatedly makes that... You make gives you more speed, but also makes the bouncing effects of the walls worse. And you can just get bounce back and forth like a pinball machine in certain spots. And there's also right. um, fans that blow you down where you need to activate, and like it's it's the whole thing. Also, another useless piece of information that I can give. Uh, the timers or the races in Galaxy don't do frame interpolation, so it's actually impossible for the millisecond value to end with a 2, 4, 7, or 9. It's always one of the other numbers, because 60 FPS uh, time values. Yeah, which is not true in Odyssey. Interestingly enough, they, they fixed that. Hmm. Fixed it in Odyssey. Um, so, <laughs> Good, Egg, now, Good Egg Comet is Good Egg 1 again, but speedrun timer with a with no checkpoints. But, like, it's really difficult to die in Good Egg 1 because it's literally the first, well, not literally, but it's basically the first level. So, this is just like you do the level again pretty much exactly the same way I did it in the, at the very beginning of the run. Which means you get to see a Mogus climb again, and yes, <laughs> I'm yes. And, yes. And that's uh, the return we all wanted. I love, I love just talking about that strat because people are like, "What could that possibly be?" And it's just the Galaxy community has a lot of stupid jokes. Anyway, I got it first try, so that's a cool. Mogus climb. Yeah. Also, there's the <laughs> the very small change that instead of boulders, these are chain chomps now. I think it's so that you don't like waste your time trying to break them. But they're, they're chain chomps now. Thumbs up. That's the only thing that's different about this level besides the timer. But like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really pay that much attention to the timer because it's not like we're in danger of running out of time. One of the yeah, things I they think... they did in Galaxy 2 that I actually really like is they added like the clocks, which makes speedrunning interesting because it's like, okay, how many clocks can we skip? in order to do this level with the fastest, most optimal movement while also not running out of time. And that's yeah. cool, but these levels all just have fixed uh, time, like fixed times that you just have to beat, and they're very, very generous timers. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, I think I think in Galaxy 1, the only level where I'm scared of the timer is Ghostly P. It's like the one level in the entire game where it's actually, I'm actually worried about Dying, and that, even in a run. Yeah, and that's only because if you make a movement mistake, the timer is already tight in that level, and if you make a mistake, you can pretty easily lose enough time that actually puts you in danger. My PB finishes yeah. that level with, um, like, one second left on the timer, uh, and we'll talk about that because it was the most insane clutch in the history of my entire speedrun career. Uh, so, anyway, that's Good Egg Comet. That was actually pretty solid, like, because there's a timer on screen, I can kind of tell how fast the level was, and that was actually pretty good, uh, in terms of, like, movement and stuff. I don't, I didn't, I don't remember making any significant mistakes, so. Uh, this is a really, this level, this next level, is Good Egg L, which is the, uh, level where Luigi appears and, like, finds a power star for you. And, uh, this level is, uh, it's, it's really difficult, um, <laughs> So, so this level, like, Luigi appears, but he, it's like, I think meant to be an introduction to the fact that you're, you're like, there are certain stars where you're hunting for Luigi, but like, even this feels a little easy, 
even for like a children's game, because like Luigi's, he's right here. Hi, Luigi. That this level is like <laughs> it's like thirty seconds long because you literally just have to go talk to Luigi and get the star. Um, I think this is without a doubt the fastest star in the. Oh in yeah, the game. this is the <laughs> only star that's fat. The only split that's faster than a minute. Um, like every other split is over a minute long. This split less than a minute. So sometimes I make like spreadsheets for comparing my times in this game, like my golds to other runners, and this level always messes it up because it's like a very because it's a different value because it's a shorter like length of time and then I have to like account for it specifically. Truly the hardest star. That movement that I did is actually not easy. Like I did like the optimal movement in that star, which is kind of difficult to do because you can easily like bonk and fall down. And losing time in that star makes you want to stop speedrunning this game for the rest of your life. Anyway, uh, Honey Hive Comet is another race against Cosmic Luigi and I'm going to again turn this one over to the commentators to explain the skip I'm going to be doing this level. You can turn this one if you want, Gamut. All right, uh, so normally you have to follow the blue arrows uh, to go around to uh, uh, the same area that you go casually in Honey Hive 1, and you have to drop down a slide to go to an area lower down, and that's where the star is. But uh, because of this fence over here, you can just drop off the edge here hey, what's and this? make it down there quicker. Oh wow, it's the end of the level! <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a faster way to do that, but, uh, no. Um, it's very odd. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's so hard that, again, that's like a strat that not even, like, top runners, a lot of top runners go for, because it's just so difficult to do. It's like, you can drop off of uh, a slightly earlier part of the level to get to a slightly later part of the end. It saves maybe a few seconds, and it's, it's just incredibly precise, and it's especially not really worth it in 120, because it just doesn't really save that much time, and it's you know, three hours into the run here. Um, so that was a, that's a very, it's funny that that skip works, but it also saves a lot of time. So it's pretty nice. Uh, and then Flip Switch Galaxy, this is another very short and simple star. Um, basically, you're meant to step on all of these switches to turn them from blue question marks into yellow exclamation points, but there is a pretty tight cycle in this level that I'm going to be trying to hit. And ideally, I won't have to like basically jump over anything. I can freeze that platform with 2P. Oh no, okay, that was fine. This jump is scary because I go for that jump without a spin or anything, and uh, it always kind of looks like you're not going to make it, but I made it, so we're good. I actually died to that in a run for the first time ever, like last week, and I was really confused. But anyway, um, and then I got a triple jump, sort of buffered it through that cutscene and was able to jump up to the star. So that was a... That was solid enough. I, I got the cycle and everything. I just didn't quite uh, perfectly execute the movement. And now, um, Good Egg Purples, this is like meant to be your introduction to Purple Coin Star. So we did the one in Gateway first, but uh, I think they sort of anticipated that you were going to go back through the domes in like kind of the order that you visit them casually. So you would go to the terrace first. And Good Egg Purples is the most simplistic Purple Coin Star because all of the Purple Coins are just in a line. You just run through the level in a perfectly linear path, collecting all of the purple coins. Um, there are some levels that are... There's two like main distinctive types of purple coin level. There's one type where the coins are all sort of on a path and you just need to collect them, and there's usually a time limit, although this level doesn't have one. And there's one where they're spread out and the level is a more open world level, and you just need to run around looking for all the coins and, and finding them. And this level is... Uh, like, not that interesting because you literally just run around collecting the coins, but later some of the the faster paced purple coin levels can actually get really cool. Also, shoutouts to the time I lost a minute in this level because I was trying to go through that launch star. I got a drop spin. I didn't take the launch star and instead went through it and had to completely um, go back all the way through the whole level again to get the coins that I missed. Um, that what happened in a, uh, a relay race run that I did, actually. But if you go through the level in a certain way, taking um, the launch stars with a specific uh, order, you actually don't need to do any like extraneous movement. So there's always purple coins uh, where you're going, and you can collect them all in one go uh, with one like clean path through the level. Also, those boulders, I can freeze them with 2P, which normally they I'd have to like navigate around them, but with 2P, that's not necessary. 
And because a lot of the coins are in the air, it just so happens that it works out this way. Um, I'm going, I'm back at the start of the level. Uh, this is the planet that I started on. I went in a loop around it. I got all the coins and the star spawns right here so I can just literally land and jump right into it. So that level, that's a very like satisfying route, but when you actually speed run this game and you, you know, it, the level's just muscle memory. It's not a very interesting level. So uh, now we're heading to Garden and commentators. How do you, how do you guys feel about Garden? What's your opinions on Garden? <laughs> it's. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've been waiting to slander this dome since the start <laughs> of this run. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. this Let is. have it. <laughs> this is one of the um, more difficult domes of the run, and the best part about it is it's the one dome that is done entirely in one segment with no breaks. It's around an hour long. And it's filled with a bunch of stars where you could potentially lose up to a minute or two. And uh Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, Garden is Garden's brutal. This is like where good runs out of first half go to die. You know, like this is this is where like if you want a decent run, you have to play this dome at least like okay. And this level, Deep Dark 1, has a big skip in it. Normally you're meant to like do all this stuff to open this gate right here, but I'm just going to use this cannon and fire up to the top here. And this skip actually, um, because you can't zoom the cannons out in quite the same way you can on the Wii U version, the skip actually isn't possible on the 3D All-Stars version, uh, the Switch version, but you can still do it, you just need to do it slightly differently. And here we're going to abuse slope climbing again to get up here, get out of bounds, fall out of bounds into some out of bounds water and swim to the last section of the level. That actually saves a ton of time and it's nice because water in this game is just like a cube shaped area where you have water. So the water extends pretty far out of bounds there. You can just jump into it and skip like half this level. So we pretty much do this entire level, uh, we pretty much do this entire level like not how you're supposed to. And I'm gonna uh, let somebody else explain the way I'm doing this boss fight. Um, yeah, so this is Kamala, which as we explained in Space Junk 2 has a certain manip involved with it. It works not exactly, the, the, the way that we manip Kamala works exactly the same, but the cycles aren't entirely the same in this boss fight. Also, because we play this boss fight again in Deep Dark Sea, uh, MKK also did Kamala manip during this fight. Uh, to make sure that in Deep Dark Sea we also get the fastest cycle. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit of a Camilla Minip inception when you uh, <laughs> when you come into Deep Dark One. Um, she also takes an phase, extra hit on this phase. Yeah, uh, there's she also takes four a instead phase. of three. And so what I did was I waited for her to start throwing a fireball because even though she throws two fireballs, um, I can use the shell hitting her to for a two-fold purpose. First, I do damage, and second of all, I cancel that fireball attack, so it's like slightly faster. And there we go. So that Camella fight, I actually, it looked like I was doing that suboptimally, and that's because it was suboptimal, but I all I set up the Camella fight again for when I'm gonna do it again in the, the Comet Star, which is a daredevil fight against Camella. And weirdly enough, the, the two Camellas, like in the two different galaxies, they have the same cycle or they don't share a cycle. So, like, the one in Space Junk doesn't affect the one in Deep Dark, but the one in Deep Dark affects both of the Camilla fights that you do in Deep Dark. It's weird that it works that way, but it's kind of nice because we can we can do that manip to get a really fast fight in Deep Dark Comet, which is great because that fight is also, um, you know, more dangerous because you're only on one health. And also, another thing I did was a small thing. I didn't kill one of the two Magikoopas that she spawns because if you kill both of them, she'll spawn more Magikoopas, and that is an attack that like does a whole animation of itself instead of advancing the cycles of her fireballs and shells. So I sort of waited on that. This is Deep Dark 2. This level has very cool movement. Um, and this is another level where you're sort of meant to do things in a certain way, and I'm just sort of going to skip all of it. Did I get the, did I get the particle glitch? I did, oh my gosh. So, no I didn't, never mind. I lied, me when I lie. Uh, sometimes in this section <laughs> level, for whatever reason, the particles randomly disappear, and I don't know why it happens, but um, ideally I can land in this bubble. Nice. And so Ooh. now I need to... Uh, 
ground pound these three stumps on this planet, and then this is the weird, this is like the quintessential weird Galaxy 1 level. First of all, you use these bubble launchers to get around and not like launch stars, and then this planet, you have to ground pound these three tennis balls into this watermelon in order to make it really big, and then that spawns the star for some reason. Super Mario Sunshine reference. I think <laughs> it's it's like I like that game. This this level is just weird, and there's like a bunch of objects and enemies and stuff in this level that are completely unique, and you just never see them in any other level. It's it's so strange that that's a thing, but I really like that level. I think it's that's a so cool. Funny. It's has cool movement, and it's a really interesting level, like design wise. So you know, I'll be honest too, as well. Someone who likes Super Mario Sunshine, the level with the watermelons in it, not a fan. I don't that's think awesome. anybody's a fan of that. But that level. one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so either, but that one though with the watermelon is pretty good. Speedruns, speedrunners are so not a fan of the watermelon level that they skip the watermelon level. Uh, True. <laughs> I think I remember someone saying that like that skip was the reason a lot of people like started playing Sunshine more seriously because that level was so bad before it that uh, it made people like not want to run the game, which is very fair. Understandable, honestly. So welcome to Melty Molten Galaxy. This is like the worst galaxy in the game. Like every star is terrible. Uh, but the music's good though. The music. I don't like the music. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Dang. Here we are. Damn. Here we are abusing <laughs> slope climbing to get up this volcano. Like normally you're meant to go around the other side, and there's even like a gate here that's like I think meant to signal to the player that you're not. I'm having trouble with the slope climbing. That's okay. Uh, Hello? There's a there's a gate here that's meant to signify to the player that you're not supposed to go this way, but uh, I break rules, so whatever. And um, this uh, this next planet has like these fireballs that are sort of trailing between the planets. So I'm gonna actually try to do a skip here with the the pull stars where I fling myself. And this these fireballs that are you know passing between these planets they have like really lingering hitboxes so like the very edge of the thing's tail can still burn you and if you get burned you get totally knocked out of out of whack um with the whole or if you're in melty molten sea you die or if you're in melty molten sea you die but we'll get there later um here's a here's a small little uh time save here this, there's a sling star here that you're meant to use, but you can just jump to the planet, and it's like slightly faster because you don't have to watch the animation. This planet has five star chips on it. You need to collect all five to spawn the launch star. And I'm actually going to do a little piece of tech here where I'm going to ground pound next to this one because ground pounding extends the size of your hitbox. So it lets me grab that uh, star chip while the steam vents are still going without getting hit by them. So that's a cool, that's a cool little... Uh, optimization. It, it makes it so you can grab it while the steam vets are going without a ground pound, but it makes it a lot less precise, and then you also don't have to wait. And at the end here is the, the lava spire, so I'm going to focus for a second while I do this, uh, if someone wants to sort of talk through, talk through the movement I'm doing here. You can go for it if you want to go. Uh, so normally you have to like run around in circles around this tower to slowly climb up to the top, but as you saw, you can just backflip, do a few TP jumps, and make it up there a lot quicker. That first wall that... jump is so janky, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like... This this section is a lot scarier in the comment when you only have one health. Yeah, also the, the lava bubble enemies, like, they're actually genuinely dangerous because they... Like, if you brush up against them, you'll, like, take fire damage, and then fire damage, like, causes you to do that... Sorry, the long, like, lava boost animation, and that can make it really difficult to recover because it just messes with your movement so profoundly. So, Deep Dark 3 is a pretty boring level because it's just a level where you swim and then do a basically an auto-scroller. So, um, this level, we're going to encounter Guppy, who's this, like, orca dude, and he, like... God, their face. He, like... He's like, this is my this is my territory, this lake. You gotta you gotta fight me for it. But like the way we the way we fight him for it is like we swim through a bunch of rings. It's sorta of like the manta ray in SM64, if that was not hard. Yeah, uh, the manta ray if it was programmed correctly. <laughs> yeah. I just recently learned that the manta ray's rings are like the actual ring hitboxes are like rotated 90 degrees from the model and thankfully that's not the case in this yep. game because that would be really annoying um <laughs> there is like 
one small strat in this level, which is that I'm actually deliberately not grabbing any of these air bubbles because they all have coins in them. And if I avoid them, I can go coinless. And because Guppy swims at a fixed speed, I can just grab the shell and passing through these rings restores my air. So I don't actually have to collect any air bubbles and therefore any coins in this level if I just, you know, do the do the correct um, swimming movement here. Uh, so that's that's nice. It's a good, it's a cool little way to save a tiny bit of time, but it definitely doesn't make this level any more interesting. Um, and also this ring, this last ring is really hard to get for some reason. Like these, these tornado things have a very bizarre hitbox. And also Guppy starts swimming like way faster there. Oh, I got a lucky, I got a, I got pushed by one of them, but I got lucky because I got pushed in the direction of the star. That's actually really nice. Yeah, that's that not, well. that was not intentional. I just got lucky. Normally I actually have to like flounder a bit in the water before I can grab the star, but that was pretty fast. I'm, I'm happy with that. Anyway, yeah, so Even that- the frames. So th then we go from an auto-scroller to a level that is supremely awful in like every way. Melty Molten <laughs> 2 is A, the movement is terrible, and B, um, there's a really punishing cycle at the very end of the level. So if you mess up your movement too much, you can just miss the cycle. And it's very unfortunate because it, you, getting the cycle, it's like a 30, 20 or 30 second time save or something. It's a big time save. It's a strike cycle. And the movement in the soul isn't exactly stellar. But uh, it's, it's also like the level itself isn't that hard to do well. So it's not a... It's not the worst level in the game, but it is, um, it can be quite punishing. And you're gonna see me, every time I go through this starting section, I'm gonna be picking up the star bits from those crystals, just because you get so many from doing that over the course of the, like, six times you visit that beginning section that it becomes worth it. Also, you have to use this dude to light the torches, which, like, I'm pretty sure <laughs> nobody knew to do that as a kid. It's a weird yeah, also puzzle. Also, that little cinder is so uncooperative, you have no idea. Yeah, he likes to get stuck on the edges of the platforms. I have, like, kind of strats to manipulate its position, but it's really suspicious. That planet, there's, like, a gravity field that tries to prevent you from jumping across it, but you can just do it anyway because they didn't do a very good job of, like, actually preventing that. And then this planet, the movement on this planet's really weird it's like it's not hard it's just i don't like it it's just not fun like it just feels awkward and uh if you don't like this is this is a a terrible thing this cage right here this has a launch star in it the cage is off center if you look at this the way it's positioned um it's positioned like further to one side than it is to the other side and this is one of those things that if uh it's like a can't unsee type of deal like, if you look at it right now, you can see the, the oh, yeah. edge is poking out on that side when it's not on this side. And that is uh, something that I tell people and they're like, why did you tell me that? <laughs> I Yeah, I never noticed that and I have done hundreds of runs in this game. Yeah, yeah I, I, I never knew that either and I hate that now. <laughs> yeah, that's like a... So this section, this is where the cycle happens. Uh, if you get good speed with the star ball here, which is much easier said than done, you can jump off this platform, very nice. So that's the early nice. cycle. And if you don't mi manage to get that jump, well, if you if you try it and it if you try it and you're like, you know, cutting it close, you might just slip off the platform and die and not be able to get a jump. You might not get enough momentum off the platform and you might get the jump but miss miss it and like fall short and die or um you can recognize you're going to miss the cycle and wait, but you have to wait a really long time because that section of the lava planet has to rotate all the way back around and it just takes forever. So that's nice. So Melty Molten 3 is actually kind of an interesting case. This level contains the other... Um, this level contains the only intentional death that I take in the run for Star Bits because if I'm on a good run, I get to this level and don't quite have enough star bits. And this level, it's really fast to take a death in this level to get more star bits. But because this run is terrible, that's a lie, it's not that bad. But because this run, I've made a few mistakes in levels that have a lot of star bits, I actually won't need to, to die in this level to get the extras, which is going to be a, not a huge time save, but a nice like free little, you know, like maybe 10 second time save. And here I'm going for something called the platform boost, which I got. 
So that's a very nice. much higher backflip than usual. But if you time it correctly off that platform, it gives you a ton of momentum for some reason, and you just like fly way higher. And here, um, there's a planet where you're supposed to kill a bunch of enemies, but luckily we can just lava boost to the next planet. That was way closer than usual. I don't know Ooh. why, but it worked. So good. <laughs> that was so tight. What the heck? <laughs> that's not normally that tight. Normally that's really easy. I don't know why it was so much closer than it usually is for me, but I think it's because it's my the control content, that's why. quite right during that. But we made it, so it works. Um, and here, because I'm not taking the death, I'm actually going to grab that life mushroom because it's the fastest... Like, it's still, it's fast to restore your health and dying in this level when you don't want to is really bad, so, uh, yeah. So, this section right here, the reason why it's fast to take a death in this level is because you're already at one health from doing that skip, and this section has a ton of star bits in it, so you can just, like, really quickly, uh, jump into the lava, uh, die, respawn, get all the starbits on that planet, and then all the starbits on those two planets back there that I passed on the fly-in because dying respawns all of the starbits. So I, I totally, um, I don't need to take the death just because I have extra starbits from mistakes earlier in the run. But it is nice for, you know, um, runs where. Like, I'm I'm on a decent run, so I'm not really... I don't have very many extra star bits past what I would normally have. And um, because I do, like, a really tight star bit route, it can be pretty punishing if I don't have enough. So this, this level is a good place to restore or, like, to get extras. And that's Fiery Dino Piranha, which is a terrible boss. They actually brought a lot of the Galaxy 1 bosses back in Galaxy 2. There's, like, a Galaxy 1 boss rush level, and they nerfed... They nerfed that boss to an incredible degree because it's way, way harder in this game. Um, and they realized that it was a lot harder, and so they, they nerfed it a bunch, which is a, a little funny. Uh, but I think also the other thing about Galaxy 2 is that that boss fight can soft lock in Galaxy 2, which it, it, if it can in yep. Galaxy 1, it's never happened to anybody, so. <laughs> It happened and to it me. happened to Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> of course it happened. To of course me. it happened to you. Um, my yeah. favorite part of that clip is you say this gold, and then you soft lock. Yeah, I was literally on gold pace. <laughs> I was on PB pace as well. This is like because this is uh, Super Mario Galaxy two two twenty two. So this is like six hours into like a ten hour run. Um, and yeah, the game just soft locks, and I lost like six minutes, and I didn't gold. Uh, it it kind of sucked, but it made for a good Twitter clip. Yeah, farm some likes up that one. We yeah. take those for the content. Farm the interactions, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was great for the if monthly If you want to see me challenge this run, follow me on twitch.tv slash source20. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is Melty Molten Secret. Um, I'm actually going out of my way here to collect some star bits inside the volcano because I need 90 star bits. 90? 80. I need 80 star bits to feed this hungry Luma here. And this will gain me uh, access to a secret planet where I'm going to be... Uh, doing some some weird movement. This level is called Burning Tide because it has this planet has like lava that sort of it acts like a tide, so it ebbs and flows. So it it um, will cover a large part of certain platforms and then it will retract to cover very little of the platforms. And ideally, I'll get a good cycle with the lava so that I don't need to take any you know extra damage or anything like that. But you sort of have to balance between when to wait for the cycles and when to just go and like lava boost uh, in the lava to get to the platform. So here I'm going to wait a little bit because I don't want to take damage here ideally. And I can squeeze between those seam vents, that's pretty tricky. And then because I waited, I have the freedom of health to take a point of damage there. And ideally now the cycle should be good for the rest of the level here. I should be able to long jump on this as it's uh, sort of retracting out, and there we go. That's the fifth. Um, that was really clean. That was good. Yeah, nice. that was the fifth uh, silver side. So that's like the ideal cycle. If I take extra damage there, I usually try to get a backup coin or the life shroom that's um, up there because it's not worth dying on that planet. Number one, it loses a lot of time. Number two, it completely messes up the cycles and it completely messes up your position and like your camera angle. So you have to do a completely different. Um, strat for like where you jump and it's hard to back it up if you die let alone the fact that it you know loses a bunch of time so deep dark secret um 
Normally, when a, when you have a secret star, it shows a little indicator on the star select screen for which star it's in. And you're going to notice that this this little secret star indicator appears on star one, but I'm going to select star three. And that's because the secret star is still in star three, but it's faster to get to the underground lake section because in star one, there's a gate here that blocks your path. And in star three, there isn't. So I can just sort of go this way and up. Uh, okay, that almost hit me. Um, I can sort of go this way and just swim down to the, the underground lake without needing to, like, go through the effort of actually getting through that gate. And I missed that air bubble. I was supposed to grab it, but it's okay because I can just grab this one instead. So you can see every time I spin underwater, Luigi is losing, like, a segment of his air meter. Normally that's supposed to drain at a constant rate, but if you're spinning as Luigi under... I got hit? Really? If you're spinning as Luigi underwater, huh. um, that... Uh, that air meter goes on a lot faster. So there, uh, I blew up a bunch of mines with a shell to gain access to a launch star, and this is the, the boo in a box. So you boo can break box. this crystal to let light into the room, and then there's a boo with a star in it, and you just spin the boo into the light, and that's a... That's a pretty simple simple star, but the, the tech where you... or the, the little trick where you enter it from the wrong level, like the level the game doesn't really intend you to enter it from, is a pretty cool uh, way that you can save a bit of time for free, just based on like more based on like game knowledge and just knowing that that's what you're supposed to do. And also, uh, well, the next level is Melty Molten Comet. So, yeah. speaking of things that have happened to me, <laughs> this is my PB's biggest time loss. So this <laughs> level is a is a daredevil run of the first star in Melty Molten Galaxy. So I have to do the whole level with one health, and guess what touches? Guess what kills you if you touch it? So, and guess what this level's full of? It's literally called Melty Molten Galaxy. If you brush the oh, lava no. with Luigi's toe, you go all the way back to the beginning of the level. Fun! And there's also cycles. Fun! And there's oh, also no. randomly moving enemies that kill you if you touch them. Fun! And there's also, like, actual tricky movement. Uh, so yeah. Sounds pretty fun. This level is uh <laughs> this level is like <laughs> the bane of every runner's existence because e like everyone's lost a run to this level. Everyone, it's probably the most punishing level in the game. Like arguably you could die at like the very end of a purple coin star, but that's a lot less likely to happen than dying at the very end of this level, which by the way, the very end of this level is the hardest part of this level and there are zero checkpoints. So if you die, you go all the way back to the beginning, and it just, it's like minutes of time lost. Awful. So this planet, I actually don't do that little full star skip on this planet because it's really easy to accidentally fling yourself into the fire and just die. And uh, it doesn't really save that much time. And that cycle is consistent as long as you have decent enough movement on the first planet. Um, but if you mess up the movement on the first planet, it can become very nerve wracking to try and avoid those fireballs. And here, um, these lava bubble enemies, like, if they're not in good positions, like that one isn't, jeez. Oh my god. Um, they, they can be like very dangerous to actually get around. I just heard someone leave the Discord call. I hope that's not a big deal. Uh, they're back. Okay. Good. So I'm actually, okay, so I missed the ground pound strat, so I'm actually going to have to wait for those steam guns because I, I am not risking that. No way. I, I would never risk that, especially not for a marathon run, but okay, we got through it. Luckily, you can't take damage while you're in the launch star, which is good because otherwise you really have to be careful about those uh, lava bubble enemies around the launch star. And uh, yeah, so like I said, this is the most challenging part of the level, like movement-wise, and it's also at the very end. So um, it's it's tricky. It's not a... <clears throat> Not easy. I'm just gonna like focus up for a second here. Yeah. <gasps> You're kidding. Oh, we were talking about this wall kick being janked. Um, no. No. Uh, that's so sad. Like. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm going back to the beginning. Like that's like three minutes of time loss. Unfortunate, but it's okay. So uh, yeah, it's right. so to to speak a little bit about two P jumps. You get to a point with this game eventually where you're so confident in your 2P jumps that you never really expect to miss them. So in a situation like that, where you get unlucky with the input and just miss the jump, like you can really get punished for it, especially if you're playing risky, um, which that's not even that risky. I got, I got kind of... The wall jump janked on me, which is not great. Luckily, um, 
I can avoid the death a second time because there is a safety strat that's a little slower, but I did want to show off the faster movement and I'm more confident with it, but you know, uh, I have to kind of I have to kind of take my losses at this point because I don't want to die at the very end of the level a second time. But that that's really unfortunate. That is uh, that definitely cuts into my pace a lot, but it's OK. It's OK. Um, it's so it's a, yeah. it's the kind of thing where you can't get mad at deaths in this level because it's so like it's so punishing. It's so hard to play this level consistently with good movement and just never die in it. But I am a bit embarrassed to have died there. It, it's a little... It feels a bit, um, silly because I'm... I'm supposed to be the runner. I'm not supposed to be the person who dies in Melty Molten Comet. But like I said, I mean, Kyle's PB dies there, so... The exact same wall kick. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah that, that wall kick boom. is terrible. Yeah, so... that wall kick is exactly what turned my... 539 from a 536. <laughs> yeah, that's it happens. Um, I've lost I've lost a decent number of cases to the level. It's it's brutal. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go a little slower here, play a little more carefully. Hopefully I will get uh, this movement the second time around. Um, so I'm gonna set up the wall jump in a less janky spot right here. Nice. And hopefully I can get that 2P jump. I'm a little miffed that the death is because of a missed 2P jump. That's a bit of a silly reason to die because I'm like, I've practiced 2P jumps so much that it's like not, it's like really uh, ingrained in my muscle memory. But you know what? It's okay. We'll take the, the five and a half minute, mel minute Melty Molten C split. That's sad, but it's the first like, it's the first like level in the run that's really punishing like that that I've actually lost a significant amount of time to. So you know what, whatever. And now because I died, I actually am well over the amount of star bits I need. So that's actually the the remotest silver lining. I, I don't need to worry as much about star bits for the rest of the run. So let's leave that level in the past and head to Dreadnought 1, which is one of my favorite levels in the entire run. This level has some really cool movement behind it. And it's a lot... Um, it's a lot more fun to play than uh, levels where you die instantly as soon as you do anything wrong. Uh, thankfully, there isn't really, there isn't much of anything like Melty Molten Comet again in this run. So that's like the, the most major hurdle in terms of like instant death levels that are also difficult to do. But so here I can uh, use the gravity that planet to sort of swing around it and land in the right spot. These uh, goom beetles here, I have to hit them once to flip them over and then jump on them to kill them. And this is like a tricky section to do because these enemies are a little bit random. Um, but it's okay. We got through it. And there's actually an out of bounds skip in this level that allows you to skip from this section like all the way to the very end of the level. But it's not, as far as I know, it's not humanly viable. So uh, yeah, like. When it was discovered, people tried to do it on console, like, without tasks, and it just didn't really seem to be possible, so that's unfortunate. What do you have to do for it? Um, you need to uh, bounce off of one of the enemies there to get into a really janky gravity field that's really difficult to, like, people haven't even gotten that first part where you get out of the planet's gravity. Um, I got a spin bonk. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and then you need to, like, jump in a specific way so you fall at a specific angle to fall out of bounds into this launch star right here. So it saves Jeez. like 30 seconds or something, but hu like it's, I think it, uh, my personal opinion is that's just too precise for humans to do it uh, without like yeah. some kind of tool assistance. Uh, here's a cool strat though. Skip that oh, entire section. Big jump. That's a, yeah, that's that's a, that's jump. That one's a fan favorite. That's, that's cool. <laughs> And that's the thing that people rarely, <laughs> rarely have seen before they see a speedrun in this game for the first time. So, uh, someone want to explain what spin bonks are because I got kind of messed up by one in the last section of that level, um, the wall uh, jump section. Yeah, I mean, spin bonks are pretty straightforward. If you spin too close to a wall, you will bonk, and that basically renders Luigi useless until he hits the ground again. There is just about nothing you can do uh, if you spin bonk on an edge. You will die. <laughs> that's that's about the longest shot. Yeah, of it. and uh, it's there it's, are some 
You don't you know? even have to spin too close to the wall. Sometimes you spin like far enough away from the wall and then you try to wall jump and you get one anyway. Like that's what happened there. I wasn't too close to the wall. I didn't bonk on the wall with the spin. I spun and then tried to wall jump and instead I just bonked on the wall for no reason. And for whatever reason, it's, it's very common there. And unfortunately, it's also quite punishing there because the platforms, the walls, the moving walls take a bit of time to come back down. So in the first fight against Camilla, I actually manipulated her, her shell cycles to be in the right spots. And now I'm doing the daredevil fight against her, which uh, you have one health. But more importantly, since I don't need to fight her like again, I'm going to instantly throw the shells at her. And that makes it easier because you don't need to avoid any fireballs in this first phase or as many. Oh, OK. Uh, why didn't I die there? Like, not that I'm complaining, but why didn't I die there? That's that's weird. OK, well. GG, I guess. We take those. We, we do we kind of those. take those. I'm kind of surprised because sometimes the shells kill you and sometimes they just knock you back. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I think like they might. It might be that they kill you if they're still, if the, the, the spell is still going and it's not the shell that's like spawned yet, but I'm not actually entirely sure. Yeah, yeah. it's still the particle effect. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the, the green shells in this game, red shells home in on enemies when you throw them towards them. Green shells cancel. So that was a, an animation cancel. I spun her during her attack to end it early. Um, green shells have this feature, massive air quotes <laughs> around it, where they like, the shell has a bit of auto aim to it. So when you throw a shell, sometimes it just randomly like, instead of it, you throwing it in the direction you want to throw it, sometimes it just randomly goes in a different direction and hits something else. And that's They're, like, uh, it's so incredibly frustrating when it happens. There are, there are literal clips out there of green shells going behind people yeah, when they like, throw them. It's like, insane. You throw the shell uh, and instead of going forwards, it just goes backwards for no reason. Like it, it'll be like, oh, there's an enemy. You meant to throw the shell at the enemy. And so that can happen in the Camilla fight in Deep Dark really easily because she's standing like literally right next to the Magic Koopas. And sometimes the shell just targets the Magic Koopas and then you lose like, 30 seconds. <laughs> it's bad. So Dragon. Yeah, we didn't really see Oh sorry, go ahead. Uh we didn't really see it in this run, but like Airship Armada, the last level in Kitchen, that is um another star where that can uh -huh. really mess you up. Yep, and that's like because that fight has so many enemies in it, it's really easy to have the shell just home in on something. That was meant to be a grounded 2P jump, but it didn't work. Okay. So this level, Dreadnought 2, um, is full of skips. Like, pretty much nothing is done the intended way. So that first planet, you're meant to turn all of those flip panels yellow, but you don't have to turn all of them yellow. And then there's uh, this strat, which I'm only going to go for once. Nice, OK. So that, oh, okay. that's, uh, <laughs> oh that's, my a, that's a cool strat and also a decently sized time save. Um, I actually, that was actually a backup because I got bad luck there with when that dude sh shot the coconut and uh, I had to improvise there in the fly. Uh, and here I'm setting up for the cannonball bounce. Very nice. So that's like slightly faster than doing that moving the intended way. And now I'm going to, this is an auto scroller, I'm going to get on the back wall. There's a death barrier here. It's meant to stop you from doing this, but it's too far forward. So if I launch up forward right now, I would die. And, but because it's not in the right spot, I can long jump, get back in bounds, and I don't know why I missed that. That's like the first time that's ever happened to me. It's okay, because I can just do it again, and I can show off the backup movement, which is this incredibly cool looking triple jump. Uh, but yeah, so basically, that's actually, I think that might be the first time I've missed that in a run, at least since I was like a very new beginner. I'm gonna set up the angle for this first long jump more carefully, but basically, um, even second try, I think that still saves time because this auto scroller, you save like you save like 40 seconds by skipping the entire auto scroller in this level. And it's really like it's a long auto scroller. It's not just like it's not just like um, it's not just like, you know, a fast thing. You have to ride like three different platforms to get to the same spot you get to by doing the skip. So the platforms take forever to move, they're really slow, so that skip saves a lot of time. I wish I hadn't messed it up, but what can you do about it? Um, yeah, that's okay, that that's okay. And it's not that it's not that bad of a death. And I got the, the hopefully that backup triple jump movement uh, made made up for it a little bit, because I do think that's cool, and it's, it's a shame that I don't 
you know, got to do it in every run because it's a cool strat, it's just not faster. Okay. It's pretty sick though, honestly. Melty Molten Purples is the first open world purple coin level. So I talked about earlier how there's a lot of coi purple coin levels where you have to like run around, just grab purple coins and the optimal route isn't necessarily obvious. This is one of those levels. So I'm gonna be just kind of going through the level, getting all the coins I can uh, in like a certain order that's fast, but like it's not intuitive, the order. This level is maybe a little easier to, to to route through than some of the other purple coin levels, but yeah, um, this is this is mostly just like movement. So, uh, I guess if my commentators have anything they want to say about purple coin levels, they can they can talk about that because I don't have much uh, to say about this level. Oh, you can lava I boost think... here to collect those coins while they're uh, underneath the the lava pillar. That's the only interesting thing you can do in this level. Everything else is <laughs> where's my spin. Everything else is pretty interesting. <laughs> Uninteresting, sorry. Uh, what were you going to say there, Kyle? Sorry about that. I was going to say, I, no, you're all good. I think, for, especially from a speedrunning perspective, um, for runners of this game, I think the amount of time you lose in purple coin levels to an optimal movement is insanely underrated. I think if you, if you want to run 120 for the love of all the things, Please do an all purple comments run, or at least like Practice twenty them of them. A lot, because yeah, they you, are they are very important. Yeah, like there are certain runners who will have, you know, sub six, which is like a pretty decent time. Like it shows that you have at least some understanding of how to play the game. Um, it's sort of where you start transitioning into like you know a proper like runner of this game, is I think around when you get like sub six hours in one twenty. And there are people with sub six that just lose a minute or more in like every purple coin star. So they're losing 10, 15 minutes just to purple coin stars. And even me, I'm a decent runner. Like I'm top 10 on the leaderboards and I lose like 30 seconds in these longer purple coin levels to like the, the best golds, like the, the top runners golds. Um, and I and my golds are like 30 seconds faster than people with like a, a high you know, a PB in the high 530s or low 540s, because you, as you get better at these purple coin levels and just practice them more and more, um, your movement just gets better. Like you just you just start saving time, and it's 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 nice. But man, is it a really oh geez, what was that, that was side? <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, that was scary. But it's very difficult to optimize these, and that was actually not even really that good. But I got through it with relatively clean movement and I didn't die even though that ending really scared me a lot. So that was there very we go. scary. I was actually had a run that was on PB pace until that ending section I died in it because um I got like a weird angled wall jump and wall jumped into one of the vents and died. And that was a very frustrating way to lose a run that was actually on PB pace. And from there the run snowballed. I ended up playing like very far off my PB which was not the best. Not the best for my morale uh, in terms of... Oh, wrong galaxy. Oops. Try not three. Um, which is not the best for my morale. The reason I did that is because it was a subconscious effort not to play this level because this level's bad. So, Dread Not <laughs> 3 is like, it's fun, but it's really difficult. And if you get this, if you get all the move in this level, um, if you do it really well, it can be very fun and gratifying to execute. If you do it Poorly, it can turn from fun into terrible real fast. And I'm going to let my commentators explain the first trick in this level. You can go for it, Gamut. Alright, so uh, typically you have to um, hit these two uh, top men into the uh, electric first fences try. to get rid of them. But as you saw there, you can side flip up on top of that cage and uh, do a 2P jump. And that is a lot harder than it looks oh, because so that cage, <laughs> the, the top of that cage has very weird slope physics, and uh, doing that slightly incorrectly can make you slide off of it. Uh, also, so, I did a camera setup there at the beginning of that level in order to make the camera not freak out when I did that. And you also have to get a good height on your jump because you can still very easily jump too low and. Uh, not make the jump even if you get a good side flip off the cage. Also, there's a one-up in that section that is the reason why I make sure to activate the one-up text box before this level. Because if you grab it while you're doing those pull stars, it can really screw you up. And I believe uh, 
And I don't know, we might want to mention the, the famous, that section is the famous two green ladders section. <laughs> so, shout outs to, shout outs to Fizz, who is sort of known for dying in that section, in like every run of this game that he's ever done. That's unfair, but it's, it's funnier, so I'm going to go with that explanation. Anyway, um, so this is Top Maniac. Welcome back. It's exactly the same, except there's gaps in the electric fence now. But like, if you have eyes, you can just kind of look at where they are and just spin it into hey, the part hey. of the electric fence that's <laughs> that doesn't have <laughs> it's not the that gap easy. in it. <laughs> it's not I, that easy. See, I'm going to pretend it's that easy so I can be like, everything <laughs> in this game's easy and like look cool. But hey, it's actually harder than it looks. It, the, the Top Maniac really likes to bump off of things, especially those top men that are pretty much just there to get in your way, and it's really easy to just accidentally not hit it into the electricity. Um, or you can be, or you can get the, the silo death, which is a classic. Yeah. That clip's a classic. Look at this yeah. guy! I mean, sometimes you can knock, knock Top Maniac straight into the lasers, and he'll just bounce off the wall instead. Yeah, sometimes just he completely just, ignore the laser. Sometimes he low-key low hits the lasers and the game doesn't count it. I'm not even... That's not even cope. It sometimes just happens. Also, Deep Dark Purples. <laughs> this level's bad. Um, this is another... Thank, thank you. This is another <laughs> open-world purple coin level, except you have to do two things that are not fun. You have to collect purple coins underwater, and you have to collect purple coins on the ship. And the ship has really weird geometry and makes movement janky, and underwater... We know how we know how underwater movement in this game can be. Also, the purple yeah. coins like they come after you when you spin underwater, which is nice. However, sometimes they take so long to catch up to you that you you're not actually sure whether you've gotten them all. And then you swim back down and you realize that they were just lagging behind a bunch. Um, here, I'm going to ground pound into the water, and that sets me up for a long jump out of it with the two P cursor, which I showed off earlier in Beach Bowl Two. And then here, I'm just going to the movement in this level also like isn't it's like really awkward. I don't know if a lot of people agree with me on this, but I find the movement in this level to not be very fun to pull off. I think it feels, it doesn't feel yeah. very good, and also I missed a coin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, the, I, just, this... I just don't like this level. Like, it doesn't, it's a, like a lot of the movement in this game, it feels really good and really satisfying to pull off. This level, the movement is like, you get out of here alive, and you're like, oh. Yeah, so many people praise this level, and it drives me nuts. Because I hate not that this good. level. Like, this level is terrible. It's, I think this might actually be my worst level in the game. Really? That's not... I yeah. wouldn't take it that far. Like, it's there, definitely there are, good. It's decent for a purple coin level, but it's not a good level. And I don't see why people like it. It's nah, not fun. I, <laughs> I, I, have I see a, what... I have a vendetta. Honestly, I see why people like dislike this one just because of coins like that. They're just kind of like hanging like up, like below the ship. You have to like jump out of the wire to get real fast. Like it's a, I get that. It's I think it's kind a, of intuitive. I think it's a cool like mechanic, but they really. I feel like this this comet, this purple coin comet, should have been something else. And actually, here's a little interesting piece of trivia. Um, the purple coins were originally meant to be spread out, like further around in the level. At least that's the theory, because if you leave the boundaries of this level, which you can actually do through a complicated jump, but you can also just like use cheats to teleport yourself out of the boundaries of the level, there's actually a like there's actually like a proper properly decorated like scenery outside. Where's this coin? Okay, there it is. <laughs> there's actually like <laughs> properly decorated scenery with like toads and stuff out there and they'll be like, where are the purple coins? So the the theory that a lot of people have is that this level was originally meant to take place across the whole of the the like main level in Deep Dark, like the first level in Deep Dark, and then they moved it to be just the ship. And I honestly think that theory fits just because of how like densely packed the purple coins are on the ship and how like weird some of the locations they are are in. Are some of the locations they're in are. Because it's just like it feels like this level was meant to be spread out more, and it just wasn't. And also, fun fact, um, it's really hard and nobody does it, but it's actually technically faster to get the secret star in this level by getting out of bounds and then going and getting the secret star. Because there's like a warp pipe that takes you to the, to the boo in a box instead of you needing to go underwater for it. So, huh. yeah, the, the route in Garden actually there was a, a garden reroute that allows you to do that, but nobody does that strat because it's not good. So, 
and it's like it's really hard and doesn't save that much time. So uh, yeah, Tip Tips was doing um, a lot of ILs with that strat uh, for Deep Dark S, and they actually made the Garden Route to be able to use that strat in runs. And now they don't even do the strat just because yeah. of how little time it saves and like how difficult it is. And that Garden Route is actually slower because. The reason why we've been getting the normal star before the secret star in every level is because if you get the secret star first, an extra star appears on the star select screen, which is an animation that takes a quarter of a second to happen. So that other garden route, if you don't do the optimal strat there, um, it actually loses like a second or two because of all those animations adding up. Also, we have another trash mini game. This one is uh, a lot closer on the timer than the one in Battle Rock, but it's still like not that difficult to do. Um, although everyone had a, had trouble with this as a kid, you might know the if you were like a uh, knowledgeable player when you were a kid that if you throw the bombs on the lamps, it actually blows up all the trash. But if but there's it's actually possible to throw a bomb between those two lamps in the middle and blow up all of the trash piles. First of all, seven there is excellent. That means the level's really good. Second of all. Um, I went into first person there because the bombs exploding cause lag, and if they explode off screen, the it mitigates the lag. So it's slightly faster to go into first person there. Um, it's harder to do in in Battle Rock because the bombs explode faster after you throw the last one. So sometimes you just don't have time. But in a Dreadnought, it's really easy to go into first person. So nice little free time save there. Um, Dreadnought purples. This level is like a auto scroller in the worst way it's an auto scroller where you need to collect purple coins during it and so if you miss a coin you're just you're going back to the beginning like even if you survive oh, no. if you miss a coin it's it's just over like you can't there's there's exactly 100 coins you need to get them all you can't miss any and it's not i wouldn't call it easy to collect them all but the platform moves so slow that it's more just stressful than anything um and i'm actually going to I uh, let one of my commentators explain the the uh, the way that the this level can be broken if you are incredibly incredibly good at this game and also maybe possibly a task because there's some cool strats in this level but I'm gonna focus on trying to get all the coins. You know those, Gamma? I don't even know if I know those. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm assuming I'm talking about uh, you're Texas talking about. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tibbs is RTA simulated uh, Dreadnought Purples run. Uh, basically, there are a lot of spots where you can, like, just barely fit in, like, long jumps or, like, precise 2P jumps where you can get all the coins in midair without having to ride the platforms to get them. Uh, when using all those strats together, they save a little bit of time, but they are extremely risky and uh, nowhere close to RTA viable for actual runs, yeah, so, so no one goes for them. So Tibbs on their YouTube channel, which I believe is like at Tibbs1 on YouTube, has a demonstration of this level. It's it's so, like, they haven't even done this as an IL because the strats are so difficult that they actually had to splice it in order to make it, you know, a, a clean demonstration of the level. But you, could, you do not have to ride any of these moving platforms at all. You can skip all of them by just jumping out, grabbing the coins, and then, like, jumping to safety. It is... I can't overstate, like, how incredibly cool the IL is, but also how unbelievably difficult even just doing one of those skips is. So, it's... I wouldn't call it RTA viable, but who knows, maybe one day very far in the future, some absolute maniac will try actually going for that in runs. Also, I missed the long jump and got extremely scared. Also, also, that's a launch star. There's also a sling star there. If you take the sling star, you don't get that last coin. And then this Guillermo at the end of the level is like, dude, you didn't get all the coins, and then murders you, and you have to go back to the beginning. Murders you? It, it's yeah, like, you die. It's like, you didn't get all the coins, and then you just die. And I, um... I don't know. My theory is that the Guillermo, like, does something terrible to Luigi, but they can't show it because it's a family-friendly children's game. Um, Luigi is faster than Mario uh, by a pretty significant amount. So, to answer the question in chat. So, next is Matter Splatter. Matter Splatter is an auto-scroller. Um, so, <laughs> earlier in the run, uh, we did a level where there's sort of these, these long sections of invisible platforms that become tangible as a sort of moving spotlight goes past them. And Matter Splatter is that, like, taken to a... 
Ah, sorry. Ah. Matter splatters that take into like a pretty um, significant extreme with a lot of auto scrolly type stuff. So here I'm gonna do. Oh, I missed it. Okay. Uh, I will explain that if I get the second one. Um, but basically, this this beginning portion level is just like long jumps through it. And here, um, I'm going to actually go for a bit of a skip here. Uh, I'm gonna wait. So, oh, okay. Uh, there's a backup for this. I can do the other version of this. Nice. Okay. So there, I used the fireball oh. from that magic Koopa to boost up to the pipe instead of going around to the right side. You can actually just do that with a wall jump, two P jump, but it's slightly uh, janky, and sometimes you just don't have the right position on that. I tried to wall jump off like basically an invisible wall. Also, there's the spring mushroom. Nobody likes the spring mushroom. Um, it's true. So the reason why I'm going springless in this level is because, well, first of all, it's easier to control Luigi's position precisely because you have to wait so much. The spring mushroom, when you're in the spring mushroom, you bounce around and it's really hard to maintain the same position with spring mushroom. So first of all, doing this makes the level easier. And second of all, using the spring mushroom actually isn't faster unless you go for a really gutsy, like midair 2P jump into the playing start at the end of this like two or three minute auto scroller. And I don't want to do that. I don't like that strat. I've never been good at that strat because I've never been really that willing to go for it because it doesn't save that much time. And because I like the the version of the level that I do does not require the spring mushroom to be faster. Um, it's actually faster not to get it because if I did get it, I'd get the text box that says, like, you got the spring mushroom. And because it's the first time I would have gotten it in the run, um, I would have lost time, and because I don't get it any other times, it's actually faster not to use it, and also easier. So there, I waited for that top platform to appear. If I had the spring, I could have jumped off the bottom platform into the Sling Star, but that's actually a genuinely difficult jump, and it's it's not free, which is like the exact opposite of what I want in an auto-scroller. And there, I got the strat I was trying to do at the beginning of the level, which is I double-jumped off the very edge of those stairs, and that actually gives you like slight boost forward, and saves like a very, very small amount of time over just like jumping. You can clear those stairs in a single jump, but it's actually like slightly faster to double jump off the edge, I believe. I think I've tested it and it's like slightly faster, but it's not like a big deal. I just do it because it's cool. Uh, also, this auto scroller section, you just have to walk with this moving floor. I'm going to kill these guys so they don't get in the way. And um, also, I'm trying to avoid the coins, so I'm trying to... Um, not collect any coins because I have zero coins. You can see on my HUD on the bottom right that I don't have any coins. So if I finish this level without collecting any coins, I will uh, I will be able to save that time from the text box appearing at the end of it. So I'm going to go over this coin, and then I'm going to wait a little bit. You can jump into the star earlier, but I don't like doing that. Again, in the interest of safety and consistency. So there we go. And that's Matter Splatter. First try. Good. Good. That level's not hard. It's just like sometimes you just mess it up it's and scary. die and lose minutes. It's just so punishing and so scary when you're on good pace. Um, Do you think now's a good time for a break, by the way? Uh, I have two, like, two more levels in Garden. So I was just going to finish the Garden okay. segment and then do that. But if you want, we can, good. we can do that now. No, Either works for me. Okay, I, I really like down. to at least get through this level because it's really scary. Um, this is Dread yeah, yeah, this is Dreadnought it. Comet, which is Dreadnought 3, but with a timer. It's another um, speedrun comet. Which, by the way, this game spells speedrun, speed, space, run, because Nintendo <laughs> moment. Uh, but yeah, oh, no. this is like pretty much exactly the same movement. It's just a lot scarier to die, and uh, this level, like I said, is difficult. So it's not, um, it's not gonna be a, a, uh, an easy level to deal with, even if you are like relatively solid at the movement. Like it's still scary, um, even if you play safe enough to avoid dying. First try, very nice. So that that uh, nice. that strap, by the way, it saves about ten seconds each time I do it. So getting it first try both times means I saved about twenty seconds. But more importantly, it's actually genuinely hard to back up. So it's good that I I think it's good that I got it. Um, I'm glad that I did. Shoutouts, by the way, to, to Silo once again, Silo93 on Twitch, who found that the setup for that skip and made it um, RTA viable. It was discovered by a tasser, uh, username is password, and it wasn't 
like uh, people tried it, but they were like, this this strat's dumb. It's not it's not like humans aren't going to be doing this in runs. And then Silo uh, came in with a setup that actually made that strat a lot more viable. Um, I velcroed two emotes together. <laughs> not duct tape. Velcro. <laughs> Some people do use tape, but I prefer to. I have them velcroed because then I can take the emotes apart to use one Wiimote at a time for certain levels, because there are a few levels where it's actually better to use just one of the Wiimotes. Yeah, I used to use a strip of Velcro, two hair ties, and one rubber band. Yeah, a lot of people use, use <laughs> hair ties. <laughs> That's awesome. Hair so ties, the, rubber the, bands. Yeah, so the, the Velcro kept, kept the Wiimotes together, the hair ties kept the pointers together at the top, and the rubber band kept my nunchuck plugged in, because uh, uh. we... I can't, I can't say the colloquial term we have in the galaxy community for this phenomenon, but uh, due to the heck, excessive heck shaking chuck. we do, it's, yeah, the heck chuck. Darn chuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, due to the excessive shaking, it's very common for the nunchuck to, like, fall out of the pot, um, and that will pause your game because it tells you to plug the nunchuck back in. Uh, so, yeah, I had an elastic band that wrapped around the entirety of my Wiimote and just constantly was pushing the... The nunchuck back in. Yeah, I, so, yeah. I, um, my nunchuck, like, when my nunchuck starts, like, having connection issues, I literally switch controllers because it, it's not a, you can't, like, you will just lose time in all sorts of places. And it also sometimes causes your angles to get messed up and causes yeah. you to have, like, phantom inputs from your nunchuck, which that is, like, you can cause phantom Z presses. So sometimes you'll try to do a jump and just ground pound into a pit and die and something like that. Um, so this level is Snowcap, it's the Garden Hungry Luma, so after this level we can do the break. But um, For sure. here I'm feeding the Hungry Luma, this is the most expensive Hungry Luma in the game, it requires 1800 star bits to feed it. Uh, and this level is garbage, it's so bad. Like the, It's not worth it then. It's, um, I'm not, it is not, uh, it is not worth the price of admission because it's not a fun level. Basically, there are three bunnies. You got to catch them. And if you remember from Gateway or Gold Leaf 1 or Gusty Garden 1 or, you know, any of the other levels where you need to catch bunnies, catching bunnies in this game isn't exactly the, a grand idea of a fun time. Uh, and it's even worse in this level because this planet has a very strange shape to it. Um, that makes it really difficult to actually catch all of the bunnies. So the first thing I need to do in this level is I need to um, open up a a sliding panel on one of the ends to get um, access to a fire flower. And I'm actually waving my cursors over the snow because that gets rid of the snow and makes you move slightly faster because you still get slowed down in the snow. Um, and then here I manipulated that bunny to come out of the, the hole he's hiding in and go directly into that little alcove so I could catch it. Here I'm going to do the same with this bunny. If I, I need the, the fireballs to get this shell and... Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I need the fireballs to get this shell and use it to break open the chest. Now you might think, oh wow, that green stretchy plane is right next to the chest. What if you could knock the green stretchy plane into the chest in order to save time? It doesn't work. You can't do it. You can literally open chests <laughs> with the green stretchy plants in other levels, but in this level, it doesn't work. Not allowed. Um, I've done it before. Like, I hit the green stretchy dude into the chest. It just didn't open. What the heck? Why, why must they deny us the right to have that. Anyway, that was a good enough snow cap, except when I missed the shell throw, but basically the idea of how I do that level is by getting the bunnies into that little, into those little uh, indentations on the ends of the planet so I can just grab them easily because otherwise they run away faster than your running speed and it's really hard because they pull up the jukes on you. All right, I think it's time for another break, so let's, Sounds good let's to me. get that done. In that case, let's let's go take a little break, everybody. We didn't take us every hour or so because it's good to stand up and stretch and just get some water and do stuff you gotta take care of real fast, you know? So we'll be back in like five or six minutes or so with more Super Mario Galaxy 120. Almost done, y'all. 32 stars left. Yeah, yeah, four hours out of five. We're four hours out of five and a half, really. We're we're doing we're doing good. We're doing good. Woohoo! All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to do all the things. We're almost done here. We got we got just a another hour and a half or so left of the run. But first, got one quick announcement we gotta do. So, uh, if you don't know, by the way, GQX will be live once again from TwitchCon for October twentieth through twenty seconds. 
The event will take place on the Games on Quick stage, as well as streamed live on our Twitch channel here. This one right here you're watching. This one, yeah, yeah. Use the exclamation mark GQX and Twitch chat to find more info and check out the games list. Very solid, by the way. Very solid games list. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, I say let's get back to it. All right. So I'm going to get going again. Let's do three, two, one, go. So we just finished Garden, and that is a really hard section of the run. So now we get another really hard section of the run. It, it doesn't let up. Uh, and this is the main reason why this route is actually a lot better, is because it moves bedroom cleanup to as early as possible in the run. Uh, which is nice because this used to be like five hours in instead of four hours in, and these levels are really, really hard. So now ha the part of the run is happening where we're going back through domes we've already visited and sort of doing the rest of the stars in them, because every dome has a number of purple coin stars, but it also has, which only unlock after you complete the game, but there's also like, we need to leave some levels in the in the domes to do later in the run because we only need 60 stars to get to the first Bowser level. So it's, uh, there are sort of just certain stars that we do in late game instead of early game. And this route is like really smart about which stars it leaves for later in the run because it's a really uh, nice balance of harder stars in early game and then easier stars in late game. By the way, this is Dusty Dune Purples. Nobody likes this star. Um, it's like... <laughs> That's why I've heard too over the years. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a beginner runner, you're really scared of dying. If you're like a higher level runner, you're still scared of dying, a little less scared of dying maybe, but the main thing is that the cycles in this level are unbelievably frustrating to play around. And it can be really annoying. Um, so there I tried to jump and catch this coin in midair, but I didn't quite get it. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, there we go. So these tornadoes, first of all, the tornadoes are a little weird, but... Um, you're, you're meant to use them a lot, but the tornadoes are really slow. So I can grab some coins that are like situated over the air uh, by just jumping into them. But obviously that's a little scary compared to like just using the tornado and slowly floating into them. But, you know, it's a lot faster, so I'm going to be doing my best. And also, uh, oops. Okay, briefly started beatboxing, but we're good. So also the other thing is that I'm going to be using in this level somewhat the, the same trick that I used in some earlier levels where ground pounding actually extends... I missed a coin, I gotta go back and get it. Ground pounding actually extends your hitbox. I was The reason why I, I waited there is because I was trying to figure out in my head whether I could go and get it later or whether I actually needed to go back for it, and I decided I needed to go back for it. Also, I missed another coin because the tornadoes, um, they don't give you consistent height out of the tornado. Uh, it kind of depends on how low into the tornado you go. So there I crouched into that tornado to get enough height to grab all three of those coins at once. And here I'm going to do the same thing. However, these tornadoes have these like pieces of debris in them, and those actually damage you. So if I get hit, I can get uh, easily either knocked off the edge or just like have my ability to grab the coins interrupted by that. Um, so that can be very punishing. And also uh, now if it's not, if this level couldn't get any worse, we're now on time pressure to get back to the other part of the level because this um, like switch makes these blocks appear that allow you to get the coins. And while it is possible to get all of those coins without um, having the blocks there, it is a lot faster to use the blocks to platform the coins instead of having to individually do 2P jumps up and get all of them uh, like that. So. This, uh, luckily is... I've luckily made it through the level, but it's not over till it's over. Ooh, it just went away. Just went away, but yeah, like I said, you can just jump up and grab those coins. That was not good at all, but I didn't die, so there we go. So, there are runs where people have lost, like, ten minutes in that star, because you just, like... The, the quicksand is a little unfair, because if you fall in, you cannot get back out. So it's sort of like just having instant death all around you and platforming over instant death is a lot scarier than like, for example, in Melty Molten Purple's platforming over lava, because at least if you land in the lava, it's not instant, you know, start the level over from the beginning, even if you die with 99 coins. And also at the end, uh, the camera angle changes. So if you try to hold, if you try to hold like your control stick through that cutscene, 
and run into the coin. Sometimes you'd run off the edge and die instead of being able to go towards the start. Uh, so I was very, very careful about how I positioned myself there so that didn't happen to me. Um, someone want to talk about Gusty Garden 3? I don't... I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I uh, can talk about this level without getting mad because I don't like it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Ghost of Garden 3 is... It, it's not its not too bad. I don't consider it to be the worst Ghost of Garden star, but um, yeah, we start off here with a little bit of fun gravity coming out of the flowers. Uh, we kill this piranha to spawn a vine, which we can then use to reach this launch star. Um, you may have noticed those question mark coins in the first section of the level. Uh, those will become relevant in a different nice star. Nice landing cancel. Um, very, oh, true. very soon. Uh, we break some of these boulders to grab some star bits. Uh, we run into this bush to manipulate the RNG in the final section. Oh yeah, totally. There's uh, totally RNG in that final <laughs> section too. The, the, I was supposed to do a grounded 2P jump, but I was a little too close. For whatever reason, you can freeze these electric dudes with 2P in this section. I don't know why, because it, they're not like... Normally you can't freeze like stuff like that with 2P, but... Oh, I missed the jump. That I've been missing that jump a lot recently, I don't know why. Hello? It, grab, grab it? Dude. So you're, the, the idea here is that I'm supposed to just jump and spin into that starship, and because I usually just can jump and spin into it, I'm horrible at backing that up because depth perception on that pole was really difficult. Also, I jumped over the coins there, so I didn't grab one. Um, and then this final section, I'm going to uh, throw it back over to one of the commentators to talk about this section while I focus up a bit. You can go for this if you want, Gavin. All right, this is pretty much the only interesting part of this star, just because... Uh, Right here, you can do a long jump here to skip most of this section. Really? That that seems a bit silly. Okay, well, well that's, that's fine. I personally find that a little unreasonable, but yeah, there. It is. <laughs> We're gonna let's let's try that again. So so here, uh, this section is actually really interesting, but I'm gonna let one of the commentators talk about it while I focus, um, so that I I make sure I get this first try. Yeah, this level, or this section, uh, like uses... It normally uses a lot of, like, gravity switching. So, like, the intended way of doing it is, like, going through each of these little sections where you, like, flip an arrow that changes the gravity. Um, obviously, you skip over pretty much all of that with that long jump. But just because of, like, um... Just because of, uh, the amount of gravity changing, there are actually, like, multiple different, like shortcuts that you can take like there's another one that's pretty interesting where you um long jump without uh you long jump to one of the next sections without changing gravity and then flip the arrow over there and um instead of just going through all the other like little planets you just go straight to the end yeah there's like five different ways to do that skip by the way i was so confident in that first one i don't know why like i i think i can probably like I can identify a couple of reasons why it could have missed, but I'm really surprised that it did. So it threw me a bit. Um, anyway, Freeze Flame Purples is my least favorite star. Uh, no, actually no. It's my least favorite purple coin star, but overall it's like bottom three for me. Um, this level is based around getting purple coins around the, the Freeze Flame Summit from the... You kind of saw that in the Secret Star. I sort of went up to the top of the mountain. And unlike in some other levels, these coins are incredibly spread out. So this level is very, like... It has just a lot of movement and a lot of places to choke in and a lot of, like, little time losses you can get just from, like, a bonk. Or, like, there, I... I didn't turn around very fast there. Like, that's the time loss. Like, it... This is, like, one of those levels where the small time losses add up so much that your golds will be, like, 30 seconds slower than somebody with, like, a PB that's a, a little bit faster. And that's, like, it's sort of a balancing game of where do you, like, play risky to save time and where do you, um, sort of try to be a little safer uh, because of the movement. And speaking of playing risky, I normally would do a long jump from that point directly to that ledge, but I'm not doing that jump because it's it's actually like a precise jump. It's not easy, and it's easy to lose time too. So, uh, yeah. Also, I wouldn't have to get the fire flower there if that snowman didn't exist, because that snowman is the only obstacle in this entire level that you actually need to use the fire flower to get rid of. Even though there are a lot of snowmen in this level that you're meant to use the 
That, okay, cool. That was supposed to be backflip. Even though there are a lot of snowmen in this level you're meant to use the Firefly to get rid of, that's actually one of the only ones that, or I think maybe the only one, that's actually necessary to use the Fireflower for. Uh, that was supposed to be a triple jump, but we, we good. Like, this one has a sling star in it that's meant to get you up there, but, like, you can just jump. And I remember as a kid, I used to, like, do this part of the this uh, part of the level without breaking open all of the snowmen and I thought it was like so cool because I could I could skip like part of the level it felt it made me feel like a uh... um I have never seen this part that of the level. what huh. you you're joking what what uh, yeah, fine. that's I that's crazy. About that. That's not that's not <laughs> a big time loss, but what? <laughs> that, that's like I'm genuinely shocked. That's that's the real Just that's never happened the before. There. Because that has never happened to me before. <laughs> I've never I've never missed that jump short ever in my entire life. I'm so I'm just like I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Okay, well, uh let's try that again. See that felt like the same movement, the but whatever. Um, I was waiting for it to happen a second time, by the way. I'm glad yeah, I, I was, <laughs> was kind of thinking it might fail because it didn't look quite right, but it thankfully was only a little bit too far. So, okay, that was cool. Um, I mean, okay, in my in my last D rush run of this game, I died in this level and lost two minutes. So as long as that doesn't happen, I think I'm going to be fine. But it is a little weird that that happened. But, you know, Marathon... Uh, you know, I never realized how how much of how much of a real thing the whole like that's never happened before meme is until I started doing more marathon runs. Also, if you miss any of those points, yeah. it's like an, incre an incredibly bad time loss. Also, also that's a backup that I just recently found for if those are on a bad cycle, uh, you can do a wall jump like that and collect the coins. It's kind of neat little way to back that up. Also, um, these coins out in the out like towards the screen here are really easy to forget you can just get to the end of the level and be missing three coins and it's these three that's happened to me a few times and it's never it's never a fun time when it does happen i went down through that sling star by the way there's a purple coin like inside the sling star um down there like where that where that question mark point is that's why i went down there at all and i am approaching the end of the level here also uh it's really easy to accidentally forget the two purple coins at the start but the star spawns at the start. Where's my... Okay, center the camera. Good. So the star the star spawns at the start. So the route is designed such that you end up at the start of the level again anyway at the when you're done with it. So um, if you forget the coins, they're, they're like off the, the edge of the slide, like right here, and you can just go and grab them, but it's still slower. So, all right, well, that was a bit of a train wreck, but that's okay because I... Uh, that's definitely faster than... Um, Definitely faster than some free flame purples I've gotten before. And so we talked about the question mark coins in Gusty Garden 3, and this next level is Gusty Garden Secret, which is going to be using... I'm going to be needing to collect those question mark coins in order to get a rainbow star, because the rainbow star um, allows me to kill the golden chain chomp that you might have seen before. And that is uh, that golden chain chomp is... Um, contains the star, and if there was, like... Like some boulders and chain chomps you can break by holding them in place with 2P and allowing another one to bump into them, but you actually can't break the golden chomp like that because there just isn't another chomp that would bump into it. And I don't even know if like if there was, if it would even allow you to break it. I, I don't know if it's like specially coded not to break when it runs into another thing, so you have to use the rainbow star. I missed the jump. That's fine. You can get like backwards momentum off that fluff and just barely make it. Uh, into the gravity, but the backup is really fast. And also there, I collected the... Or I started the vine growing before I collected that coin because um, the vine takes a certain amount of time to grow. It's actually random how fast the vines grow, which is weird. Like, that's one of the... That's actually, like, something you can lose a decent amount of time to, is, like, vine growth RNG, which the weirdest things in this game are random, but, you know, whatever. And there's uh, there's Gusty Garden's secret. So I, I broke open the golden chomp with the rainbow star, and I collected this um, star from inside it. Now, the thing about Gusty Garden's secret is that if you miss one of the coins, you just have to like start the level over. You can do Gusty Garden's secret first, and then just go get the normal star if you miss one of the coins. But that's slower by a quarter of a second, so I don't do it. <laughs> and honestly, um, 
I haven't missed those coins in a run in a long time, I don't think so. Yeah. It's a it's a somewhat common thing I think that happens to beginners though. Um, just because of how easy it is to accidentally like misjudge where the fluff is taking you and go like over the coin or possibly under the coin. Um, I think my commentators can probably agree with this. Depth perception in this game can be tricky and it can cause a lot of like strats and stuff to be harder than they would be if this was like a 2D Mario game and you just you had one perspective for everything. At least me, because my depth perception is really bad, but I don't know if that's like a common I don't know if that's a common uh, situation, but I see a lot of people miss strats because of like depth depth, depth perception. Oh so yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A lot. instances. Also, I'm doing a manipulation in this star. This is the Daredevil comment for Gusty Garden. I actually manipulated Major Burrows to spawn in a specific spot there by standing still after the first phase. So that saves a little bit of time, although he popped back into the ground, which was a little scary. And normally in the normal star, I would jump over him to make him pop out of the ground faster, but in the Daredevil comment, I played this fight a little bit more safely by just letting him run after me, because if you jump over him, sometimes he turns around underneath you and you just land on his helmet and die. And that's an infuriating way to lose time, so... I, uh... Probably going to be playing safer for the rest of the run in general, just because I'm a little bit behind where I'd like to be. However, it is also something that I normally do in runs that strat, so I don't, um... I don't, uh, have a... I don't have like a a lot of experience with doing the the riskier strat, so I definitely wouldn't be going for it in this time. So um, I'm going to do Honey Climb next. Honey Climb is like a little side galaxy that we do in the second half, just because it's a good spacer between um, two comet stars. And I'm gonna throw it over to the commentators once again to explain Honey Climb because this star is actually pretty technical, despite being a completely vertical level with them. Um, pretty much no actual difficult platforming in it. Yeah, I, I can take this. So, to understand the strats for Honey Climb, we need to learn about something called bee boosting, which is basically, uh, you get the bee shroom, obviously, you jump onto the wall, face directly upwards, go neutral on the stick, and then you press A to hop away from the wall, and just after you shake. And as you can Wee! see, it what gives you a pretty big uh, <laughs> height boost. Oh, oh my, I've never seen it go that <laughs> yeah, high that's a setup. Yeah, I was if, you say, wall, just, if you slide on the wall before you got the bee mushroom, you get a ton of height off of that first one for some reason. And it yeah, makes it that's crazy. That. I was not prepared for that, by the so way. So that's, that's also known as a Valu fly high bee thing because it was discovered by Valu. And Valu, uh, I think a lot of people probably know who Valu is because he's a really uh, prolific and talented speedrunner, but he also used to be like known for Galaxy. He used to hold all nine world records in both of Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2. And uh, you can... And uh, so he discovered that strat and he's a really important part of this game's history. Also, you can do the, the, the bee boosting by spinning off of an enemy like that bug or like an object. So there's actually certain other levels in the run where you can do bee boosting to fly up stars by like spinning off of a random thing on the ground. And... I was utilizing it throughout that level. That was actually really good. Uh, that was a good honey climb. Yeah, that was a solid honey climb. But yeah, the the bee... You can just get so much height with the bee mushroom in that level for some reason. And the best part is like, we have no idea why that works, but it's super great that it does work, because otherwise that level would be awful. Like, <laughs> it would be a really bad level. And uh, heading into Gusty Garden Purples now, this level is pretty unique for a purple coin level. I think it's the first one that we've seen uh, like this. It has more than 100 purple coins, and I only, I still only need to collect 100 of them. So in this level, it's actually like, it's actually like part of doing this level quickly is executing the fastest route to get 100 purple coins in addition to getting those purple coins quickly. And this is a level I'm actually going to focus for. Excuse me, so if my commentators have anything to say about it, they can go ahead and say that now. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. There's not it's much just, about this uh, star, it's just like optimized movement. Yeah, just following tight yeah. lines. So, we say maybe it's a good time for like chat to ask some questions, for instance. Oh yeah, I mean, if, if you or chat has any questions, you can, that's a, now is probably a good time for me to answer them. Calls in your court chat if you got anything. 
But I won't really be able to look at chat while I'm playing this level, so I would... I can if feel people it, can, Yeah, good. if people can, like, relay the questions to me, then I can answer them. Okay, normally that long jump works, but I, I think I long jumped a bit too late. So this is the hardest part, by the way. These, like, trellises are really difficult to stay on top of because this, this angle is... Like, these angles are not notches, so I have to just, like, precisely... That was okay. I have to, like, precisely run on them without... Uh, Without falling off, because falling off is actually pretty slow. Alright, important Mario Galaxy related question right here. Is mayonnaise an instrument? Um, I'm gonna go with Absolutely. I was gonna That's say no, answer. but you know what? <laughs> let's let's go with let's go with it. Yeah, why not? So a good Perfect. a good time in that star is like having one 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 X left on the timer. So I was a little slow. And if you're like Really good. You can you can get a one two x left in the timer when you finish that star, but that's that's like very high level movement. How long have I been streaming this game? I started in December of 2020, um, although I haven't played actively since then. So, if you count total time I've been played like since when I started streaming the game, it's almost three years. But I haven't put in as much time as a lot of people who have been running the game for that long. I think Tibbs, like I said, Tibbs, um, who is like like top three in like every category they have like been running this game for the same amount of time as me but they have like two thousand hours of playtime and i have like 700 or something so <laughs> the i'm not a very dedicated person in the grind but you know what that's okay because uh, i uh, i uh You're having fun i try to i try to enjoy speed running without you know wasting too much time on it um hey okay, having fun at your own pace and that's good. exactly why are galoombas i don't know they exist in this game or like i think they're technically called mini goombas even though they're like pretty much the same size and their their purpose for existing seems a bit pointless but you know also this is dusty dune g this is the green star so there's green stars in this game uh, if you've played super mario galaxy 2 they're the same thing except they work completely differently so there's three green stars in this game. Each one unlocks a green Luma in the observatory. And when you've gotten all three of the green stars, uh, a special like uh, set of challenge levels called the Trial Galaxies unlock. The green stars aren't like, they're just random. They're not in like, you know, like places that make like sense. They're not in challenging levels. They're just in random spots. And it's weird. Like they just put them in place of like, Seemingly just random secret stars, but um, there the, I I will be getting them because they're stars like any other star, and they they count towards my total. It's just that they also happen to be green. So this this level, uh, Dusty Dune G, is actually really interesting. Um, you have to go through that pyramid with the rising and falling sand, collecting uh, the five silver stars. And if you do it the correct movement, you can one cycle the pyramid, which is some cool movement and also it uh it rewards like knowing the level because you can spin to break the crystals like slightly before the sand uncovers them so you can sort of optimize that way um anyway uh 700 hours because they're not that dedicated it's uh it's over about three years so i feel like it's it's been spread out a decent amount there's there have been a couple times where i just haven't played this game for like multiple months on end really at all um, and I'm going to let my commentators talk a little bit about Beach Bowl P, uh, the purple coin star in Beach Bowl Galaxy. Especially Kyle, I think, has a, has a pretty good story. I was really hoping you would have mentioned this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, no. yeah, as with most of the levels in this game, I have a very fun speedrunning story attached to it. Um, this one was a time uh, where I was on PV pace. Which, keep in mind, this is four and a half hours into a about five and a half hour run. Um, and I <laughs> managed to, I'll point it out when we get there, uh, about two or three minutes into the level, I managed to just completely mess up a jump so bad that I fell off the stage. Uh, and this is a comment. It's, it's uh, such all a good purple clip. Kinds of I'm comment. so sorry, Kyle, but it's so funny. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> you, can see, you can see me go through the five stages of grief in about three seconds flat. Um, as I lose three minutes on my PB base speed run <laughs> and just plummet to my death. You also but, still uh, PB'd yeah. that run, I believe. Yeah, I did. I still PB'd that. <laughs> M most of my stories of losing a bunch of time are runs that I still PB'd. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and well, it's fine because you've you've 
you've executed redemption given that your PB is like 15 minutes faster than that that run ended up being. Yeah. So, I yeah, think that, you've. That was uh, during. I think your yeah. improvement has uh, definitely come a long way since you were dying in Beach Bowl purples. <laughs> Yeah, also, I have not I, died there since. <laughs> also, back when I had, I think my very first 120 run of this game, I think I died in this star in the exact same place that you did. Uh, it mm -hmm. just happened to happen to me earlier because I don't know about you, but that's not a mistake I'm ever letting myself make again. And <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the earlier it happened. It's one of those mistakes where you don't really know about it until it happens to you. But then the, the earlier it happens, the better. What the heck? Um, yeah, it's so true. Okay, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just go back on this tree and try to do that again. Okay, that that didn't seem yeah. like that jump. That's not like hard or anything. I just, I just angled that jump wrong. I guess. Okay, but we're we're good. We're good. We're good. Also, yeah, I think we're just vibing on the tree also, there too. this is a really like mean coin placement. That's really that's difficult to find, like genuinely. And I I think a lot of people in their casual playthroughs were like looking for that coin because it's. That's a hard coin to find. Also, uh, you're supposed to get the spring mushroom here. Um, but yeah, no, no thanks. Uh, this is the only coin you actually need to get with the spring mushroom, and you can just grab it with a 2P jump. So here it is. Here it this is. This gap right there. You see the how MPK far to the right? Well, right off. You see, I, <laughs> you see how far to the right I go? It's because I'm scared. I've been scared of that gap <laughs> for like two and a half years, Kyle. It's so bad. <laughs> like, it's if you if you try to cut that corner really close, that gap is just empty air. And if you fall into it, you're dead because you yeah, can't yeah. like wall jump off the walls. You just like fall and you meet your doom. And like, it's like halfway through the level. Like, I have 60 coins, so. The fact that it's um, halfway through the level means that I, uh, I would just lose like minutes. Like it's a, it's a, such a punishing death, and uh, I play that part much much in the vein of better safe than sorry. Also, there's five coins underwater. These coins are absolutely awful um, to try and grab optimally. They're so terrible. But thankfully, that was a relatively clean underwater section. And also, this this swing is. Uh, this vine swing has like the worst physics ever. And also if you get too close to it on the, the tree, when you're running on, on top of the tree with the vine swing on it, you'll clip through the tree and grab the swing. And then you lose a bunch of time. Uh, and then here, the last point is on the penguin coach's head. And that was huh. actually a solid enough beach pool purples. Like I, I'll take that. That was, that was, that was decent. Uh, Very good. Yeah, not a, not a lot of, some minor spaghetti here and there, but no like massive time losses. Um, now we're going back to Bowie Base for a much easier level than the first level in Bowie Base. Uh, this is um, Bowie Base Secret, which involves instead of like breaking the weight and going up the tower on the upper side of the planet, we're actually going to go underneath the planet using a secret uh, hidden warp pipe. And this is the second green star of the run. This is a uh, this is like this level isn't a place where I'd, I'd be like, this is a special secret. It's just like a random level, but there's another green star in this level. So this is going to be the second out of three that we're going to be collecting. Um, there's also one red power star, by the way. That was the one we got it from Gateway Purples that gives us the red flying star in the observatory. They don't really... Actually, I think they might explain why that star is red, but it's, it's, it's like very loose story lore, but it's still kind of interesting, I guess. So anyway, this pipe actually spawns like a little vortex, which actually makes it really easy to get into the pipe, so that's nice. Um, and there's actually kind of a... I got, I collected a coin. It's it's so over. There's actually kind of a cool thing you can do in this level, although I won't be doing it because it loses time. If you stand on top of that cage, go into first person, and then the bullet bill breaks the cage off screen, the cage will break, but that cutscene won't start until you leave first person and look at the cage again, because when it's not on screen, it doesn't it's not like loaded, and so the game won't start the cutscene with it until it's back on screen. Yeah. All right, ghostly purples. Who wants to talk about ghostly purples? <laughs> <laughs> you can go for it, Gavin. Okay, so uh, I'll start off with a little piece of advice. If uh, if you ever want to run this category, and someone tells you to not worry about ghostly purples, and that you don't have to worry about uh, dying to it or losing a lot of time to it. They are lying to you. They're this trying star to is sabotage terrible. you. <laughs> this star <laughs> is terrible. It is not forgiving at all with the amount of time it gives you. 
the like meat things everywhere will bounce you everywhere in the wrong direction. The mines also make things worse. It's it it it's terrible. <laughs> and you get one minute. There are luckily more than a hundred coins in here, but like it's still it's still like genuinely probably the hardest purple coin star execution wise. Um, and the other thing is that because the the pole star bubbles have like inconsistent momentum, it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to reliably know how many coins you're gonna have when you get to a certain point in the level. I am bawling right now. I have I have I am collecting a lot of coins <laughs> a lot uh, for like the route that I do. I'm really good on coins. However, in my PB, um, I was on like actual good pace, which I didn't realize because I had my splits hidden, uh, and I finished this level with one second on the timer, and the timer doesn't stop after the star spawn. So I was like, I'm not gonna make it. I died in Ghostly Purples, I can't believe it. I tried to grab the star, I went past the star, and at the very last second, I bounced off of one of the, the meat bones into the star with literal, probably frames left on the timer. And I popped off, but I had my mic muted on stream, so nobody heard it, which oh, is a no. shame because <laughs> it was probably my biggest pop-up ever in any like speedrun uh, I've done. Uh, and but, but yeah, it's so I actually got a really good ghostly purples there, but that level can go very wrong uh, in a lot of different ways, and it's it's not an it's not an easy star for sure. By the way, just a quick heads up: if I suddenly disappear, there is a current. There's currently a thunderstorm brewing outside my house. Great! This <laughs> is no. the hottest day of the year. How is this happening? <laughs> yeah, it's the hottest day of the year, and now there's a thunderstorm. Well, maybe, I love what the, the UK. Heck? Maybe before you your power gets cut by the thunderstorm, you can talk about drip drop. <laughs> I hate this level. <laughs> Does anyone not Everyone hate this level? This like, let's be yeah. real. <laughs> Everyone hates this level. It's so jank. It's painful. But I'm sure it'll go fine. <laughs> so, the goal of this level is to kill these three eels, and you need to throw shells at them. And here's where 2P is identifiably cheating, because you can literally just hold the eels in place. But if you're a 1P runner, First of all, the cycle is genuinely tight, like it requires good movement and accurate shell throws. But the other thing is that you have to manipulate the eel's positions with the camera, and you could still do that with 2P, and it definitely helps, but it's not as necessary. Um, okay, that was sick. Like, all right, <laughs> that was actually genuinely fast. But that level, if the eels, if you if you miss one of the eels at the shell, it can just like, ooh, and like, all of a sudden, you know, all of the eels are in different spots than used to, and it can be really hard to recover from it. Also, star 100. Uh, we only 100. have 20 more, um, which is crazy because this run has flown by for me so far. I don't know about it. Really else. has. Anyway, so we're talking to Toad real quick because we're heading back to, um, we're heading back to the fountain here, and we need to before we go to this level, read a letter that Luigi mails us, that the, the mail toad gives us, in order to um, in order to get, you know, the information that he's in one of these levels so that we can do we can in we can rescue him and get his and get the star he gives us. Which normally, uh, if you don't talk to Toad, Luigi won't be there. So I think pretty much everyone at some point has messed up a run to forgetting to talk to Toad and then having to like completely go back and change their like route so that they uh that they um like first of all it loses time but it also messes up the route because the, the star won't be there and that's uh not good also this is space junk purples a lot of people don't like this level this is my favorite purple coin star so i agree i have I bad songs. things i don't know i remember liking this one personally so this level is really fun in a speed run because there's a lot of movement tech so Kyle spoke earlier about running speed long jumps, so here I'm trying to do as many long jumps as possible off of the edges of these platforms to maintain running speed when I land out of the long jump. And getting a really clean, like, Space Junk Purples feels so good because the movement just feels so much more fluent when you, uh, when you, uh, you know, get that, get that running speed maintained out of all the long jumps. I genuinely thought that that spin was gonna bonk and kill me, but it actually didn't, so we're good. Also, I used to have the community gold in this level. Um, hey. and now 
My gold's not good anymore. My gold is not like community gold anymore, but it's still better than most people's because my Space Junk Purple's gold is like, it's so good that it, it's from like 2021 and I still haven't beaten it. Uh, even though I've gotten arguably much better at this game just because my gold's insane. Anyway, um, Rolling Green has a skip in it that I'm going to be going for. Um, but this is also like a routing thing that's interesting. Um, and I'll, I'll let I'll let one of the gamut. You want to explain the tutorial skip in this level? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, so normally, the first time you go to this level, when you first get onto the ball, uh, you get um, you get a tutorial explaining sort of how to use the motion controls to move around while rolling on the ball. But um, since since MKK did Melty Molten 2 earlier, which had a rolling ball section like this, the game sort of just assumes that you don't need the tutorial, so... So that's rail skip. I tilted back too early and I missed it. That skip, um, you can jump onto the railing early, and that saves like three seconds. I don't even know why I go for that, because it's, it's genuinely kind of tricky. But uh, I'm going to try it one more time here. That looks a lot better. Okay, there we go. So... Nice. So yeah, so weirdly enough, you can skip the tutorial for the Starball levels if you just do a Starball level before you get to this level, um, because it, the tutorial's only in this level. But that doesn't work for, like, the Manta Ray surfing levels. So in Loop-de-Loop, -loop, you have to do the tutorial. Even if you do the other Manta Ray surfing level first, it doesn't skip the tutorial. Which is really, it's really weird that that's the case, but, you know. I don't like. I don't know why that is, but it's kind of nice that it, it works that way because we can completely skip the Starball tutorial, which actually saves like I think it's like 25 seconds. It's a lot of time because the Starball tutorial is very long and drawn out because the the billboard, whose name is literally Billboard, talks to you uh, and tells you like this is how you hold your Wiimote straight up and. Uh, it's not, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Speaking of not the most fun thing in the world, Battle Rock Purples oh no. is another auto-scroller. It's just like Dreadnought Purples, except slightly easier. Uh, but it's it, also a... a it has the same say, issue of another... missing a coin, just like makes you have to kill yourself and go back to the beginning, uh, which is not great. <laughs> yeah, this is also another one of my PB's time losses. One minute I lost in this level. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> classic classic yeah um i had a run that was like it was not great but it was okay enough and then i died at the very end of this level and just lost like three minutes and it was the first time i'd ever died in this level let's hope it doesn't happen in this run but battle rock purples is sort of representative of why it's really important to like pay attention to your movement in these kinds of levels, because if you miss a coin, the platform doesn't stop and wait for you. Not only that, but there's coins that you're you're missing when you go back and try to get that coin that you missed. So it snowballs on itself by missing one coin often causes you to miss more coins. And there are only 100 coins in this level in the first place. So see, like there. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's not uh, good. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. No, uh -oh. it's it's over. It's over. Oh no. It's over. No, no dude. No. That's really sad. Okay, so like I said, I have to dying to myself. That's very demoralizing, unfortunately, because this This level The skel skeleton? It's why, like why is he a skeleton? Yeah, that's that's just a reason that's because of the way I died. Uh it's the electric fence okay. produces a skeleton <laughs> when you die. Um I guess I, I no could have died that's later really in the level, but also dang, that's Really sad, actually, because I probably... That's... that sucks, because that's like... That's like, I've made two mistakes in this run that I really wouldn't... Wouldn't make under, like, normal circumstances in a run, I don't think. Uh, and I made two mistakes that I'm very much not... I don't lose runs to them regularly or anything, like, I don't make them regularly, but unfortunately it seems that, uh... I've gotten a bad case of marathon luck, or potentially marathon nerves. But yeah, so this platform is janky, and the go okay, nice life mushroom going around the edges. It can be really hard to control your position, and like after running this game enough, you kind of get a sense of that. But 
sometimes it causes you to miss coins, and unfortunately, there was one of those times. It happens, uh, yeah, honestly. I I apologize for that time loss because I feel like it shouldn't have happened to me. But um, you know, it's okay. I I uh, I'm not uh, too too bent out of shape about it because it really was a small mistake. It's just a punishing small mistake. Also, dear dear me, uh, there I don't think if you miss any of those coins, I don't think you actually can like. I think it's actually always fine because the platform stops when it gets to the end, but like, dang. Okay, well, that's a, that's a bit sad. I actually don't think I lost that much time. I lost maybe like a minute and a half. That's not so bad. That's not as bad as the Melty Molten Comet time loss. And it also isn't anywhere near as frustrating because the Melty Molten Comet time loss was way, way more, uh, way, it felt way less like my fault. Um, anyway, Battle Rock L is the secret star um, for Battle Rock 1. So Battle Rock L the, is Luigi, as as um, sort of implied by the name. So Luigi is at the very end of this level. He's underneath the, the saucer that has the star on it at the very end of this level. So we need to go through this entire level again. And because I need to ride the auto-scroller again, it's once again fast to do the out-of-bounds in this level, so I'm going to be going for it a second time. And hopefully this time I can maybe get it first try, as opposed to when it took me a couple tries in the first level. Looks good, but it might be too slow. Nice, okay. So that, uh, that two-p jump, sometimes you don't get as much speed as other times, and you won't make it to the out-of-bounds section, even if the, the initial jump looked good. And while I'm doing this out-of-bounds, I'm gonna, uh, one of the commentators can explain Mega Triple Jumps, because we haven't really talked about those, and I think the way they work is interesting. So, why don't, why don't, why don't you guys uh, just like give a brief overview of how Mega Triple Jumps work? Uh, so, there is a property in the game's code known as Tilt, which is changed Dude, by, what is I going think... on today in this level? Okay. So, yeah, Tilt. I, I... Yeah, so I can't remember exactly what causes your tilt to change. 1P runners probably know it better than I do, because 1P runners actually need it for a lot of the jumps that they do. Um, but it basically, when you have tilt and you do a triple jump where you neutral just before leaving the ground, uh, I think maybe on the frame that you do the jump, I think it's the frame before you do the jump. Uh, it depends. Uh, you, you get different heights depending on when you go neutral. Um, ah, I see. Yeah, you get what's called a Mega Triple Jump, which, as the name suggests, it is a triple jump, but with more height. Um, and in some scenarios, it is required to either get out of certain gravities or get certain tricks and stuff like that. And like I said, for 1P runners, um, sometimes it's the only way that they're able to do things. For example, at the end of Dusty Dune 2, uh, where we just do a backflip 2P, 1P runners either have to get tilt and triple jump, do a Mega Triple Jump into the star, or they have to waste 40 seconds going around to a different part of the level and doing it the entire way. Once in the normal star and once in yeah. the comet. Tw twice. Yeah. <laughs> so the way that tilt works is it's you, the height of your jumps is influenced by the, the curvature and the direction that you're facing in. Um, because this game is programmed so that you can, like, jumping on a circular planet, no matter where you are on the planet, you'll still jump upwards, like, relative to the ground. So the reason why uh, tilt causes your jump height to change is because the the slopes influence your jump height even after you step off the slopes. So in certain levels, um, you you can step on a slope in a certain way and just have higher than normal jumps or lower than normal jumps. And uh, mega triple jumps, excuse me, sort of utilize the curvature of a planet. So in Battle Rock, I use the edge of that, the curved edge of that saucer. With, along with a precisely timed neutral input in order to get a higher than intended triple jump. And that allows me to do stuff like escape the, the bounds of that gravity, or in Gateway, I did the Gateway skip by using a mega triple jump. And that is a glitch, like you're not supposed to be able to get a jump that high, and it's actually used in a lot of places, especially like in tasks where you can consistently get like frame-perfect jumps to get... Um, to get like the highest possible mega triple jump. There's a decent number of places where like it it actually saves time for tasks because of how you can just get a lot of extra height, even compared to like something like a backflip 2P jump, which already goes pretty high. So someone want to talk about uh, this level, Bubble Blast? You can go for a gun. Uh, so 
The level itself is pretty basic. In this first section, you just gotta get uh, five different star chips, which are in five different sections. But, like, you can see MKK preparing to do one here. There are some shortcuts that you can take that are a little bit faster than going back to the middle section and going in one of the pipes. You can see he used the uh, flame spitter there to go straight to this section. I'm just gonna wait. I don't like this cycle very much, and I... Oh, okay. I'm just gonna wait again. So this this level is really punishing because if you again, if you're the edge of your bubble like barely brushes an electric fence, you're dead. You can't survive. Like it's not a thing that happens. So, uh, and when you die with star chips collected, you don't keep them. You go all the way back to the beginning, and you have to do all of the sections again. So there are multiple shortcuts in this level, but that one with the fire is actually the only one I do. I also did a fast cycle with the fire where I like snuck in past the fire boosting things. Um, before they started spitting fire, so I didn't have to wait for them both times I wanted to get past them. Okay, that was... That was sketchy, but we're good. And now you get a checkpoint at the start of the second part of the level, and the second part of the level is just a... Uh, just a long section with the bubble. So while I'm doing this gamut, why don't you uh, explain what the trial galaxies actually are? Because that was the... Those are the levels we unlocked by getting those three uh, green stars, the third one coming from the Luigi under the saucer level in Battle Rock. Yeah, so obviously this is the first one. This is Bubble Blast. Uh, it's just focused on using the really? bubble. Really? Yeah, oh. interesting. Okay. Well, I... Unfortunately, while I could... There are some spots where you can break out of the bubble and still get to the end. That's not one of them. So here we go again. <laughs> yeah, anyway. and another one of... The Another one of the trial galaxies is loop -de swoop which is pretty much just um, a more difficult version of loop -de loop from the start of the run. Uh, the track is a lot tighter, and uh, it's a lot more difficult to not fall off. And uh, the last one is Rolling Gizmo, which is right after this one, which is um, a pretty difficult uh, ball-rolling uh, galaxy. You might have noticed that those are all motion control levels. Which makes them yeah. really, really fun to do on pace when your hands are shaking and you're, like, absolutely terrified of dying. Because not only are they all difficult, all motion control levels, but they're also all very punishing. So, it's really easy. Like, there I died and lost, like, 30 seconds because I just barely grazed an electric fence. I had, like, a little bit too much speed. Which, by the way, that, that death is uncommon, but not exactly unexpected. Um, and also, yeah, that, that first section is extremely punishing to Ryan, especially towards the end of it, because it takes so long to do. Uh, so, this route, you used to do all three trial galaxies together, but in this route, you actually leave one of them for later, which is, it's like a weird, it's weird, like it's not standard, you know, it's not the type of thing that's an intuitive routing choice, but it actually doesn't lose any time because of the way that uh, certain stars spawn you in front of Rosalina at the uh, base of the observatory versus like in the dome, you know, where that star takes place. So Rolling Gizmo, the nice thing about Rolling Gizmo is that it has a ton of star bits, including a hidden, there's a there's a uh, group of star bits below this bridge here that are shaped like a rupee from the Legend of Zelda series. And not only is that a cool Easter egg, but also it gives you like 50 star bits or something. Also, one time I jumped into this bridge to knock it over, and it, I got knocked off the level and died somehow. Never happened to me before. Glad it didn't happen. So. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, let the commentators take over for the rest of this level because I would really like to first try this, ideally. Yeah, Rolling Gizmo is it, it's. I don't think it's the worst trial. Bubble Blast is without a doubt the worst trial, but uh, it's definitely home to a lot of annoying deaths. There have been many, many broken hearts and lost runs uh, in this level, which sucks because it's less than an hour away from the finishing, yeah. finishing point. But uh, yeah. Yeah, just also, because we a... we're approaching the oh. end of the run does not mean that the run can't still die in this part of the, the part of the game. So, you know, what were you going to say about yep. that? I was going to say, we also have a fun jump here at the end. You there can just you completely know. skip using the blocks to get to the top. That is much harder than it looks for some reason. That jump's really it finicky. Is. Like, if you jump uh, with, like, slightly wrong timing, you just don't get up there. And then it's very difficult to back up and scary. But luckily I got it, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, anyway, so now we're heading off to Engine Room. Engine 2 contains a lot of levels in Sea Slide Galaxy. 
What? What? Commentators, I'm curious. That's a lie. What are your thoughts on Sea Slide Galaxy? I think I already know, but I'd like you to share them with the audience. Boring, annoying, wish it didn't exist. I mean, it's alright. I don't really hate it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know what? I, we welcome the disagreements. Although, <laughs> the gamut is wrong. It is boring and annoying and I wish it didn't exist. Sorry, I, I don't mean to be mean. It's just that I really have a vendetta against this this level. I mean, I mean, it's like, Sea Slide 1 is not a scroller. Sea Slide 2, sea slide two is surface swimming, which hurts your arms. Sea Slide 3 is annoying. Sea Slide S is okay. Sea Slide C, that was thunder. I don't know if you heard that. I actually uh, did hear I that, bit, actually. but it wasn't, yeah. wasn't that loud. Sea Slide C is also surface swimming, which hurts your hands. Um, and Sea Slide P is boring. <laughs> also the longest, I this head level has the longest purple coin star in the game by a pretty significant yeah. amount. Uh, so that's fun. But that's not what we're doing. First, we're doing uh, the the first level, which is, yeah, so like Kyle said, it's literally an auto-scroller. You just, you, you just, this is Guppy. Remember him from Deep Dark? Well, he's got an even easier challenge for us this time, <laughs> where uh, he is um, going to spawn these, these eight rings underwater, and we just need to swim through them. You could probably do this level blindfolded, like genuinely. It's so, <laughs> it's like, there's nothing about this level that's interesting or fun. But I'm actually taking some time because he moves so slow, I can get out of the water and grab those star bits, which is like a few extra star bits, just, you know. Also, uh, for whatever reason, the Switch version, the hitbox of this gate is like very slightly higher on the Switch version, so you can't go over the gate. It's a really weird. That's like. One of the only differences, and it's very weird that that is a difference, but also certain edges and pieces of collision in the Switch version are just handled slightly differently. Maybe it like rounds numbers differently, and so certain things are slightly different height or something. But that uh, the the Switch version also like has doesn't allow you to walk off certain edges and stuff like that, and it can actually be uh, can cause some strat changes in certain levels. I know there's certain levels where the movement is actually different on the Switch version because of that strange like oddity about the the differences between the two versions but you know we don't have to worry about that here all right c slide two i can't really talk during this level because of the tech that's required so why don't one of you explain surface swimming while i try not to lose my mind or break my arm <laughs> And then you after this level is a good out. time to take a break because i it's very physically taxing to play this level so we can do the last break after this level. So, um, in Sea Slide 2, uh, most of the beginning and the end of the race, you do uh, a trick called surface swimming, where basically you uh, get Luigi to go to the surface of the water, and by just staying up there and constantly shaking your Wii Remote, you can move through the water really fast. Uh, but the difficult part about it is you have to shake your Wii Remote a lot to actually keep the surface swim and not drop it, which is why MKK is not able to talk while doing it, because you have to shake your Wii Remote really fast. Well, I can talk, but my voice would sound like, uh, 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 because I'm shaking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally, like, I, like, you have to go absolutely wild on the Wii Remote. Like, you have to shake it so hard and so quickly. Um, in order to keep this surface... Okay, I hit the penguin. I got the surface one, but I hit the penguin. Luckily, the fix for this is not that bad. Um, but yeah, also, even when you're not surface swimming, the fastest strat is literally just to shake your Wii Remote as quickly as you can, because shaking your Wii Remote quickly gives you more speed underwater. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can see the surface swimming near the start of the race, and, uh... After this, like, underwater section here, MKK is going to start surface swimming again uh, and carry that surface swim all the way to the finish line. And you can see how much faster it is okay. once it does start surface swimming. <laughs> so true. That's a, that's, a, that's a very true swimming control moment in Galaxy. Also, uh, the normal setup for surface swims, you need to come up to the surface of the water a few times like that, but there's actually a random chance that you'll get it faster. Um, and 
Okay, there we go. 101 is really bad. Ideally, I get a, a sub 50 there, but with the like five times I bonked, I'm not really that concerned about it. So there we go. My arm hurts. So let's take a break. I can go like stretch my arm for a bit and uh, we'll, Honestly, we'll be idea. back. We'll be back later in about five minutes. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be back in a little bit with uh, more with the rest of this run. We're almost done, everybody. But yeah, we, we, we take wellness breaks every hour. So this is, this is the last one we'll be doing for the run. So after this, we'll do the last, I think, like 15? Oh, actually, 12 stars. Excuse me. Wow. We're, we're going by faster than I thought we were. <laughs> All right, there we go. We'll do the last 12 stars when we get back. It'll be very good. But let's look around for now. And welcome back, everybody, to the final segment of this run here. We only have 12 stars left. We're so close to the ends. Before we get into it, I have one last thing you gotta say. Is that if you missed out on any of our Hoffix shows or past events like Flame Fatales which happened a few weeks ago, be sure to check out the VODs on YouTube.com slash GamesDoneQuick. Including the VOD for this one, which is gonna be up in a few days from now if you missed any of the run, any of the run today. But yeah, uh, let's get into it. Let's get back to it. All right, here we go. So three, two, one, go. So we're back here in uh, in Engine Two. Still, we've uh, uh, we're sort of working our way through some of the cleanup stars in this level. And next, we're heading off to Toy Time Purples. And I don't know about some people, but I actually quite like this star. It's a really interesting. Um, it's a really interesting uh, uh, purple coin star because it's. Another one of those um, those purple coin stars that has more than a hundred purple coins. So it actually is relevant, like how many coins, like your route through the level, as well as how many coins you miss when you go through the level. And I think it's a really interesting challenge to try and figure out the best route through this level because there are a lot of different routes that people actually do in in runs. And I think probably like both my commentators probably do a different route than I do, and a different route my than each other. My route is different every single run. I okay. just, I just <laughs> me. It's, it's it's about the same, but I mostly just win. <laughs> I've tried like I five missed, different times. Whoa, that was a really close jump. I, I am impressed. <laughs> I that was not skill. That was luck. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> if we, you know what? I take it. I nice long jump, man. So sometimes you try to long jump and your Z button input isn't early enough, so you get a single jump instead uh, and or you don't have enough speed to get a long jump and so you get a backflip instead and both of those things can be horribly detrimental to your um, ability to actually do uh, the platforming in this game like with any measure of consistency or relative speed. Also uh, I missed a few coins earlier in the level so I have to collect some, some in this section. However uh, it's actually I actually still finished with a decent time. My best time in that level is I had two minutes and 14 seconds left on the timer at the end of it. It was like two years ago. I have no idea how I did the level that fast because I've never gotten a time even close to that since then. But usually I can get a high high OX if I actually uh, pull the level off pretty, pretty quickly. So now um, I'm heading into C-Slide 3, which is just a long level with a lot of silver stars in it, but I think my commentators can sort of talk about why not a lot of people are too fond of this level uh, in terms of the the things that can possibly go wrong in it. <laughs> you can get this if you want to get Alright, so if you want the short answer, the tree. That, <laughs> that, that That's, that's really all you need if you... If, if you have played this level before, the tree is all you need to know, but... Uh, the reason why the tree sucks is uh, just standing on it, wall kicking off it, and just like moving on it in general is just weird. Like getting up to the tree like MKK just did there is probably the hardest part of the star. Genuinely, just it's so hard. <laughs> and all of these branches and leaves and stuff, all of these are like slopes in random spots. So you can just sometimes get yeah. totally rejected. Um, Normally, I actually there's actually like two routes to this level. One that does the tree first, and one does the, that does the tree right at the end. Normally, I do the tree at the end. I think it's like slightly faster, but seriously, no way. But oh, I do the tree. I happen? do the tree first in marathons and no resets for that exact reason. I have no idea. That's never. That is. That is the. 
the first, um, that's the first, like, thing in this run that's happened where I've literally never even seen that happen to somebody before, yeah, let alone no. has it happened to me. I'm, I'm just That's like confused. the fifth that's ever happened before moment right there, I'd say. The, I've had a lot of those in this run, but that is the, the biggest that's never happened before. Hello, how do you, how do you get up the tree? I think I need to stand on a higher part of that leaf. I mean, that's the strat. Mm -hmm. So it's the one that's that never strat. happened then. That's gotcha. crazy. That's a unusual time loss. But if I had, d I'm glad I did the tree first, because if I hadn't done the tree first, I would have died and lost multiple minutes instead of maybe like one minute. So, GG. Um, and it was weird too, because like the, the the plant there was like pulling you in, like it should, the ground pound should have worked. Yeah, That's so I I unfortunately got baited by the gravity. It looked like it grabbed me, but I I like I kind of my momentum carried me back out of the gravity and I died. But that has that's just like not something I've ever ever had happen to me in a run before. That's actually I don't think I've ever died to that that jump to the middle of the thing. Which, by the way, that's not how you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to use, like, this big water stream thing to get to the middle of the, the planet. But you don't need to. You can just fly there with the bee mushroom. It's not even that difficult to do. Although it is very scary because you're just flying like that over the, the empty air. And also, there's a Hungry Luminous level. Would the, why did I get that? That's literally not necessary. I'm literally going to just do this. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So, there's a Hungry Luma in this level. Um, we need to feed it 40 star bits. I got very thrown by that mistake, sorry. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to not do this level yet. Like, I've done this in a lot of other levels, but the reason why I feed the Hungry Luma and don't do the Hungry Luma's star yet is because the only way you can get enough star bits to feed the Hungry Luma is by doing this level, uh, is by doing it in the normal mission instead of the secret mission because getting enough star bits to feed the Hungry Luma actually requires, like, it's it's easier to get enough if you watch the cutscenes at the beginning of the level, which you get to skip the second time around. So it's actually better to, uh, better to feed the Hungry Luma in this level than it is in the other level. And there I, um, I got a lucky surface swim on the second time. We're not going to talk about how close that looked to me going off the edge or something crazy like that. We're just, we're just not going to talk about that. So there's the last silver star on top of that tree. And uh, unfortunately, that level did not go well at all. But it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we, we, we take it in stride, you know. And this sling star takes me all the way back to the beginning. So this level sort of split into two halves. Uh, one where you get the... One where you do the tree and one where you do the other rest of the level. And so you can do either one of them first. And I'm more used to doing the tree second. But in like... Runs where I'm really trying to play it safe, I tend to do the tree first. And apparently in this run I had a good reason to. Although I'm still a little I'm still a little thrown by that mistake just because it's so it was so strange. Like I've never seen that before. But anyway, gold leaf purples. This is a great level. This is one of my favorite levels in the the game, but it's also an, an excellent purple coin level. Um, I don't know how popular that opinion is, but I certainly feel that way. I really like it as well. Yeah, I like gold leaf print. Gold Leaf, Gold Leaf is good. Um, basically, this level is, I would say, probably the most linear out of all the purple coin levels where you're like moving along a set path. But the nice thing about its linearity is that even though the the coins are all in like pretty much a straight line, um, the move it doesn't make the movement in this level any less fun or any less interesting. There's still some cool movement tech in this level and some cool stuff that I'm going to be doing. Uh, Stuff like this, where you just have to like optimally grab those coins, and stuff like this, where you know you're getting up those big blocks, like that can be actually optimized movement and actually is interesting. Also, turning around on these narrow platforms takes skill because if you turn around wrong, you can actually get uh, you can get slowed down, or you can like turn with too wide a turning radius and like miss the miss the um the coins altogether, or straight up fall off the platform, which is even worse. Also, swings are really weird in this game. They behave very strangely. Uh, swings and springs, like, also affect each other, which is a funny sounding little thing, but you know. Also, uh, you're definitely supposed to do this section of the level in a completely different order than the order I'm doing it, but 
it's actually faster, for example, to skip this sling star. So I'm not going to use that, even though that's intended. And instead, I'm going to do a jump up to this fenced-in area with these purple coins sitting on top of the, the fence. And then I'm going to drop down, but I'm actually going to toopy jump into the sling star instead of taking the spring there because it's just very slightly faster. And I missed some coins, but I'm going to grow the vine first because growing the vine takes a certain amount of time and I want to, you know, limit the time loss from growing the vine as much as possible. And then in this section, um, there's like uh, six different ways to do this movement, like collecting the coins in a different order for all of them. But I like this movement because it's the most, uh, it's the easiest to get. So 139 is not great. I kind of had some some sloppy movement throughout that level, but that's okay. Uh, that's, that's fine. It still is a cool level and I still like playing it. So, Seaslide Secret is uh, the secret level located in Seaslide 3. So, I just fed that Hungry Luma, and that's like the Hungry Luma leads to this level. So, Seaslide Secret, the gimmick with it is if you remember Curry Scurry earlier, I sort of ran around on that planet, made of those green shrinking platforms, collecting all those musical notes. And that was, you know, that was all fine and dandy. This is the same planet, except it has a musical note on every single green shrinking platform instead of just like a third of them or a fourth of them, maybe. So this star is quite a significant bit harder just because you you need to like not miss any. Um, thankfully, another 2P advantage, and this isn't faster, it just provides some extra safety, is that the 2P cursor can actually freeze those green shrinking platforms. So you can use that to pretty much avoid uh, catastrophe if catastrophe does uh, occur. So I'm actually going to do a route that I might mess up because it's pretty hard to remember, but hopefully I'll get it here. Uh, you need to use the cannon to get to this planet. And then I'm going to do a route that I actually uh, came up with. So the uh, most annoying part about these this level is when you're like, you have to swerve back and forth to collect the notes. Um, so I devised a route that doesn't, that collects the notes in, in an order that doesn't require you to like, it's just basically an easier order, but I just recently switched to this. So it's taking a lot of concentration for me to actually remember how to do this route. Okay, I didn't quite do it correctly, but that's still, that's that's the general idea. So at the end when I had to like weave back and forth on those platforms, that's that's harder and it makes it easier to miss the notes. So I actually like came up with a route that I felt more comfortable doing that involves more straight lines. So that's a that's a that's a cool level, but it's very scary because if you die, you know, all those notes are coming back, you gotta do the whole planet again, and especially if you die right at the end, um, if you miss like a section of the notes, it can be really easy to like end up with the platform shrinking below you and the only other platforms are on the opposite side of the planet and you just can't do anything but uh, let yourself succumb to the black hole and try again. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, um, it can be easy to miss notes in that level just because you don't, like, it's hard to keep track of all of the platforms you've hit and all the platforms you haven't hit, but having a consistent route is very helpful. And uh, this is Sea Slide Comet, so this is another cosmic Luigi race, except I'm going to be cheating by using surface swimming to win the race. Uh, and not only is it faster, it also makes winning the race significantly easier because I don't have to grab a shell and like try to use the underwater uh, shell movement, which is mm -hmm, tenuous at best. Although surface swimming itself is pretty awkward. So let's see if I can get the uh, the boost at the beginning of this race here. Got it. Nice. So nice. now I'm going to try to start a surface swim and just keep it going until the very end of the level. And again, sometimes it takes me diving out of the water a couple times. There we go. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, so if you bonk against like an object while you're surface swimming, you lose the surface swim and then you have to restart it by doing that like setup again. Um, that was actually really fast. That was... Did I gold that? I might have golded that. I did gold that. Nice. Uh, I got a really nice. fast... Like, I exited the water really fast at the end, so I'm not surprised that that actually beat my gold. Anyway, Bonefin. Uh, someone should talk about Bonefin. Um, so Bonefin is... 
think the last, well, outside of Bowser, I guess, <laughs> is the, the last boss that we fight in the run. Bonefin can be a bit of a pain. Um, this fight is home to a, a decent bit of, not necessarily jank, but more just annoyance, um, which will probably become obvious as MKK starts the fight. Um, but basically, Bonefin is basically just a massive version of Guppy. Um, the, the, the shark itself is actually called Kingfin. Um, and you have to hit him once, then twice, then twice again uh, with shells while chasing him around this giant underwater arena. Um, but there's also a bunch of small fish uh, which can, one, tank the shell hits, and two, get in your way anyway. Um, and yeah, it becomes really annoying. Also, if you take too long to get a hit off, uh, you'll start drowning, which is also annoying. Um, so yeah, the first hit is done pretty well, we just throw the shell straight up and then quickly grab this one before the cutscene starts, which means that instantly when we start the second phase, we will be facing Kingfin and we have the shell in hand. So we can just throw that, go straight down, grab, yeah, a bubble so that we don't drown, grab this shell, and then Kingfin should just go right over the top of MKK, and then we can rinse and repeat the strat of grabbing the shell. I, grab, um, I spun right before the cutscene to grab the shell there, so it's gonna it's not going to be in my hands, but it'll come towards me. There we go. Yeah. And then, once again, we get one hit in, and then we go for another shell. This level, if you can't, be able to finish the fight. can't tell also, this level is incredibly laggy. That was that yeah. was optimal. So that was the fastest yeah, that, that was the fastest um, possible fight with the strats that I do in this. That, there's like yeah, technically really a faster strat, but it's really difficult to do, and it doesn't save any time, barely. It's like maybe a second or two. Um, but yeah, so that, that level went perfectly. I cannot stress enough how wrong that level goes when it goes wrong. Like, you can yeah. miss a shot on yeah, Kingfin and just lose a minute because it, it snowballs so quickly and so easily. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, that it, seems like it would be. It's really difficult to back up because, you know, for the, the strats that I do, where I'm used to knowing exactly where he's swimming, it's really easy for me to, like, sort of predict where he's going to be. Um, like, for example, if you miss the the last shell at the on the third phase, Kingfin will actually swim past where you are and then turn around and come back. So you can just grab another shell and hit it really fast. But, like, if you miss a shell on the second phase or even on the first phase, it's really hard to back up because you just don't know where Kingfin's going. And that, that strat that involves taking the shells through the cutscenes, that's like a huge um, part of why that, that fast, like, fast boss fight is possible. So if you don't manage to get that by like sheer luck because you end up next to a shell after you hit the boss, like you're, you're losing even more time. It's not just um, missing the shell that causes you to lose time. It's also not being able to then take it through the cutscene. And then because you you can't get that easy first hit off, then you have to improvise even more. And it just, it's really easy to, to mess that level up. And uh, I'm very glad that it went well because it's a cool level when it does go well. Speaking of cool levels, um, uh, not this one. Oh dang. I have no idea what to say about this level. First of all, what's going on? Second of all, I have no idea what to say about this level because it's literally the most boring level in the game. So. Commentators, yeah, you want to explain why this level's bad so I don't have to do it? It's too long. It's just way too long. The purple guns are way too spread out. They're literally spread across, well, I say across, around the entire level. Um, yeah, this, e even even for like, top runners, this level still takes like five minutes. Sea gold is uh, five and a half minutes, I believe. And my gold is yeah. like five, wow. five fifty something. Uh, yeah, this level is just a massive drag. Nobody enjoys takes, playing this. This is, I'm pretty yeah, sure... even casually I hate it. I'm pretty sure the only level that's longer than this one is, like, the the first time you do Bowser 3, then that's because that has credits. Like, the... the I'm pretty sure this is the second longest level behind the... This, or the second longest split behind the split where you literally watch the credits, so... Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. This is longer than the final Bowser level, uh, like this That's level. It takes about. it takes more time than the final Bowser level. The split is just longer because like there's a cutscene and stuff. But this level takes a super long time. And also, in addition to that, you have to like be on point with your star bit collecting as well. You can't just like zone out and do the movement. You gotta pick up all the star bits because often 
you can actually get enough star bits from this level that like it can make a difference in your route. So yeah. you also have also, to multitask for the entire thing, which means you cannot just turn your brain off during this level. <laughs> Yeah, also this level is not as easy as it looks at the same time. Like, especially we were talking about depth perception earlier. It's a big thing in this level. Mm -hmm. Like, actually making sure you get all the purples. Because you can't miss any. There is exactly no, there are purples. Yeah, so if you miss a purple, best case scenario, you know where it, you know which one you missed, or can like kind of identify which one you missed. Uh, worst case scenario, you spend like two minutes hunting around the entire ring for which purple coin you're not you forgot to get. And I sort of because I've done, you know, speedruns of this game so much for like most of the the open world purple coin levels like this one, I have checkpoints memorized. So I know when I'm at a certain part of the level, you know, how many coins am I supposed to have when I get to this part of the level. Um, and that really helps me remember because otherwise these levels would be so scary and that's like something i recommend a lot to new runners as well because it's a lot easier to know when you miss one and you lose a lot less time if you know when you miss one like right when you miss it and not when you get to the end of the level and only have 99 coins and then you have to like you have to be like uh oh damage control uh that's that's not the best way to um that's not the best way to handle a situation like that so this is another kind of level all right, this is another example of where just having some amount of game knowledge and some amount of familiarity with the run can just make the run a lot easier to do. Because when you're in the when you're in these purple coin levels, not only is it easier if you can remember the route, but it's also easier if you can uh, have an understanding of like how many coins you're supposed to have at any given point. So there, I went for a surface one, but I unfortunately like didn't quite. Got a very fast one. So, like here, for example, I'm supposed to have 77 coins. So I don't have, I don't have, I'm, I have exactly enough coins. I, I, I haven't missed any. Um, not that I'm expecting to miss any, but it's, uh, it's very um, easy when you're like not paying attention, frankly, to just accidentally miss one or to miss one and not notice it. And if you do that, you. It's like intrinsically you're going to have a hard time finding where the coin is that you missed because you're just, there's so many possible coins you could have missed. And so that's why I, I do my best to sort of keep track throughout the level and not just that, not just hope I have 99 coins at the very end because that saved me more than once in, in runs of this game uh, from losing multiple minutes. Speaking of losing multiple minutes, for a while my PB lost three minutes to this level because I died in a way that no one has ever died in. So. GG. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that that was cool. So by the way, uh, because I'm so I'm I'm really over on star bits. So because I have so many, I actually get to skip getting any star bits in loop de swoop, which means I don't have to steer the manta ray and use the two P cursor at the same time, which is great. Um, the last two levels are Sand Spiral, which costs a thousand star bits to unlock. I'm going to do that right now. And then uh, Bone Fin, or sorry, Big Mouth, which costs 800. So I need 1800 and I have 1820. So I have exactly, or I have like very much close to enough. And I'm going to be fine for the rest of the run on star bits. So the rest of the levels, I'm going to be shooting out all of my star bits at the end because uh, the, of the fact that the text box like loses time when you have it. Uh, also, shoutouts to um, Samuel J.H. again. This used to be the last uh, star in the run. And they had a run where they had a thousand star bits exactly going into this hole. It's literally star 120. And they accidentally hit the B button on their controller and shot out a star bit and lost three minutes. So no. that's actually their PB on the leaderboard right now, which, which I kind of don't blame them for not being that motivated to run this game after that. Also, uh, when we were talking why earlier like about... Every, sorry? Why does, like, every PB happen to have us this giant death in it like this? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a common theme whenever we discuss PBs this it's just, entire It's run. actually it's funny. Like category. It's a very... This category is very, like, volatile. It's easy to lose time in a lot of places, and a lot of mistakes are very punishing. That uh, spin was way too early. Um, so yeah, also we were talking earlier about the way people hold their controllers for 2P. Samuel JH is an example of somebody who doesn't attach their controllers together. They just hold the, the, the two controllers, like without attaching them together at all. 
I don't know how that's a thing that someone can do, but like, more power to them, I guess. Also, this is Sand Can't Spiral. Move, honestly. You get the option between the Boo Mushroom and the Bee Mushroom. The Boo Mushroom is very significantly faster, so we use the Boo Mushroom. At the end, there's the section where you're meant to get a Rainbow Star, but like, it's not. It's it's like optional. Like you don't you don't need it. I'm just gonna go and um, jump across these platforms, and the star is on this little moon in the center. So there we go. Uh, and those those spotlights with the Boo, they look like it kind of might have looked like I was getting really close to them, but the Boo's hitbox the spotlights is pretty generous and it's really easy to see where you're going to hit the spotlights because you can look at the shadow of the boo on the ground and if the shadow isn't intersecting with the the lamps then you won't you won't hit the light and you won't lose the boo mushroom because going into light uh causes you to lose your your boo mushroom power up that's that's uh something that i don't know if we ever got the chance to explain so now we're we're heading off to loop de swoop um i know that that I think Kyle said bubble, you said your bubble blast is your least favorite. This is my least favorite of the trial galaxies. This one, this star has always been my personal demon. And I think this one's fine. Getting to steer with one, like getting to use, not having to, to multitask between picking up the star bits and stuff is going to make this level a lot easier. But basically this is a much more difficult manta ray surfing course than the one in loop de loop and not only because the track's a lot narrower and um it has a lot more difficult turns in it but also because the track has like moguls like you know how ski hills have moguls i believe the technical term is actually waves but i call them moguls because they're like little humps in the water that launch your manta ray um off of the ground and it's really it has like a lot of finicky issues controlling. And remember, I'm doing this with motion controls. Like, this is really hard to do with motion controls. And so I'm going to uh, focus a little bit. And if my commentators have anything to say about this level, they can go ahead and say it. Um, we do have a pretty fun skip coming up in a second. Uh, I think it's just after this corner. It's after the blue rings. Where are the blue rings? There are the blue rings. Um, that's how I prepare myself to do this trick. Um, so yeah, after the blue rings we have a loop here, and you can actually just, after the flag, you can just hop off and skip that loop entirely. And you're right at the Ooh. last corner of the Also, race. I like, take this last uh, stretch so carefully, because... Yeah, same. Um, so, first of all, ah, oh, I was so nervous about that skip, because that saves like 10 <laughs> seconds, maybe. A death to it loses 45. Uh, closer to 50, actually. So, yeah. And you do it, what, it's five hour, five, like, this is like the, one of the last stars in the entire run. It's like, you're almost done, and you, you literally do that star, like, at the very end, when you are easily, like, easily capable of choking it due to nerves and just going off the edge and dying. And like I said, dying to that skip is really punishing, so... Speaking of punishing levels, uh, this level is like one of the easiest in the entire run. We're heading to Big Mouth now, and Big Mouth is a another galaxy where you're supposed to collect five star chips to make a launch star, but we don't need to do that because you can jump. And uh, also something I don't think I mentioned is that it's faster to get to this side of the observatory by just going on that ring in the middle. That's not intended. Like, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just go around, but uh, you can jump on the ring to get to the middle uh, to just go across the middle, and it's like slightly faster, but it's also a little finicky because that ring has really scary collision on it that makes it difficult to consistently stand on. So anyway, uh, this level, you're meant to get collect five star chips, which spawns a launch star, which lets you get to a golden shell um, to break open that chest, unless it's a golden chest. That's because you need the golden shell. Uh, however, you don't need to get the star chips at all, which makes this level a simple matter of just swimming to the shell and then swimming back. And it's really not that bad. So the shell's up here. You're meant to use the launch star. I think it might be a sling star to get across this gap, but like wall jumps exist. I don't know why they made that skip possible, but there's like, I think there's like three or four different ways to make that jump, but wall jumping is the easiest way. And then uh, for whatever reason, there's like a ton of booze in this corridor like on your way back but 
the the light from the shell actually kills booze. Like the shell is like a light going out the front of it, and that kills booze. So, also this crab. If the crab's in a bad spot, you'll jump out of the water and hit the crab, and that that destroys the shell. So then you have to go all the way back and get it again. But luckily that didn't happen to me. So yeah, very very simple star there. Why is Captain Toad in the chest? I don't What's know. He He's there? like, I think in English he says like, I was looking for power stars, and then I decided to take a nap in this chest. And then, because he doesn't uh -huh. want to admit that he accidentally fell inside and got trapped. So, Captain Toad, uh, the, I like Captain Toad's character because he just has no idea what he's doing, and that's hilarious. Um, Same, I, I feel that. Yeah. I feel that in my Just core, like right? me, for real. Um, <laughs> just like me. Anyway, we're we're heading back to Honey Hive Galaxy. This is the last um, the last two stars we need to do in the run. We're gonna be grabbing uh, Honey Hive L, which is the star where Luigi appears, and then doing the purple coins star in Honey Hive, which is pretty hard because it's another one of those dreaded op open world purple coin levels where you just gotta run around collecting them. But thankfully, this is quite a fast star. We're just gonna be doing this, the same sort of movement that uh, I did in Honey Hive, Honey Hive One. Nice two-pee jump. Except I'm gonna be also Luigi's right here, and I'm just gonna Luigi's right here, and I'm just gonna knock him off the tree, and then he's like, he's like, wow, I found the star. So this is meant to be like an early Luigi star, but you do it right at the very end of the speed run because routing. Um, so yeah. Uh, so now all we have left is the final star, which is a long purple coin star, and then the final Bowser level again, because we got to do that a second time. So maybe like 10 minutes left in the run, I don't know exactly. It depends on how good I play those two levels, but yeah. So, um, Honey Hive Purples, I'm going to actually let my commentators explain this level while I uh, focus for a bit, because it is possible to die in this level, I really don't want that to happen. You can go for this one if you want, Gamma. Uh, I guess to continue the trend that has uh, happened throughout this run, I could talk about how I lost over a minute to this star in my <laughs> PB. <laughs> so, um, it wasn't to a death. Uh, there are a lot of, like, places in this star where, um, like, missing one purple coin and moving on to, like, the next section uh, can use you, lose you a lot of time because it takes a while to get back to that previous section. And uh, for me, it was because of um, two purple coins that are just sitting on top of these blocks that are near the top. I ground pounded past one of them on accident and went down uh, okay. a slide that's right below it. And I had to take um, a really long time climbing back up to the top so I could get those purples that I missed. Yeah, those are so. definitely like, those are like, those coins that Gamut just mentioned are like the kind of thing that like, you, you're you always a little scared you're gonna miss them. This slope is terrible to long jump on, but luckily we're good. Uh, so yeah, so at the beginning there, I kind of tried to do some, some interesting 2P exclusive movement, but unfortunately I kind of messed it up. This is a cool jump if I get it, but this is actually a really weird jump. Okay, I didn't get it. So I was trying to wall jump to grab that point and then do a 2P two, two jump in mid-air. Hello. I don't... I don't know why that didn't work. Um, okay. So, this level... Like, these purple coin routes are pretty optimized in terms of, like, how... how uh, fast they are to collect all of the coins, but... Like, the general principle is you want to always be collecting coins. So you want to minimize the amount of time you're spending not collecting any coins. And ideally, you also want the route to end... to be circular around the level so it ends right back at the beginning. You sort of notice that, or depending on where the star spawns, sometimes it ends in a different spot. You sort of notice that um, with all of these purple coin levels, I've done routes that end wherever the star spawns. That's some cool movement. You can use the bonk. You can bonk against those walls to push yourself backward. Um, but yeah, so this route sort of goes all around the level and then ends right back at the beginning because the star spawns at the beginning. So the... Uh, the part that Gamut was talking about here with the blocks is this part right here. Um, like, you can you can just miss one of these coins, because 
you're ground pounding, and ground pounding is not reversible. So once you ground pound, you're committed to the ground pound. And if you like don't real, if you like accidentally don't grab one of the coins, if you just slightly brush past it and then ground pound off the block because you didn't notice in time, uh, you're you're done for. You're you're going all the way back to that part of the level. Also, I missed a coin, but because you can just climb up slopes in this game, it was not a big deal at all. And this section is easily the most nerve-wracking because this honey can ruin your long jumps and it can absolutely, uh, it can be really easy to fall off the edge. Also, this strat, um, you're meant to land on this edge here, but I take that jump very, very safe and like no reset runs like this. So uh, I unfortunately did not get that jump. And okay, there we go. Nice, so made it out of that section alive. Let's hope I am able to finish this off. So these coins are scary because they're right on the very edge. If you fall off, you're dead. Dude, I don't need this right now. <laughs> and then this part uh, is scary because it kind of looks like you're about to die, but it's actually not that it's actually like there's a platform there, so you're fine. Use a 2P jump to collect that last coin. And then this is the final coin. There we go. So nice. Honey Hive Purple is a very scary level right at the very end of the run. So now we have 120 stars, but wait, there's more! Isn't that great? Ooh. We get to do another whole star! If 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 this was the where the run ended, I would be well underestimate, but no! So we're gonna be doing the final Bowser level again <laughs> because you unlock like you unlock more content when you beat the final Bowser level with 120 stars. So there's even like Rosalina says. Okay, so what she says in English is when you're playing as Mario, she says we have enough power now to access another world and another world, the text is colored green. So it's like you you can play as Luigi once you beat it. But she still says that when you're playing as Luigi, you don't get like another unlockable character. This isn't Mario 64 DS. You just like get nothing besides a bonus level that's really, really, really easy and boring. It's basically impossible to die in. Also, this level, um, you skip the cutscenes at the beginning, which is really nice, but the early cycle movement and indeed the movement in the rest of the level is exactly the same. So this level is not very interesting the second time around, but I did get the early cycle on the first planet, which is good. Um, this is shaping up to be a pretty decent Bowser 3 if I get the a good um, cave section and a good boss fight. So this is... This level, like, it doesn't really matter anymore if you collect the star bits or not, so I usually just kind of, like, you know, mess around. But actually, shooting out too many star bits lags the game, so you kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, however, um, this level is very nerve-wracking when you're on a decent pace because several of the... It's rare that you die in this level, but if you do, it's a very punishing death. Like, dying in this cave section loses, like, maybe 40 seconds. It's a really uh, My awful death. <laughs> no, no shot. Your PB dies in the cave. My PB dies in cave. Bro, PB you, your PB cave. just has like five. My PB is cursed. Your PB has My like PB's five minutes bad. of free time save. Really, you what I've learned again, in this. Really, what I've learned in this. We haven't, we haven't learned anything about my skill. We've just learned about how bad Kyle's PB is. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got my gold time, and I was like, yeah. We were I'm like, done. whatever. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> so this game, this game is kind of awful to grind. Like, it's very. Getting a good run of this game is very much based on you just get a run with no mistakes in it. And that's like part of the reason why I'm play I'm playing so far off PB. Like my PB is a 530, 530 10, which sounds like a choke, but it was actually a clutch because I pulled it all the way back from being behind PB. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get like 10 minutes off of that. And the reason why is because my PB just has like significantly fewer mistakes in it. I just had like a, a solid run and got a PB because of it. So it's like pretty much this this game is like it's a double edged sword because on the one hand, you can just get a you can always like save time back by just playing really well. But on the other hand, it's really easy to um, have a run that's on really good pace and make a mistake and just lose the run or have a run that's really, really good, except for a big mistake, like a singular big mistake that just happened to lose like two or three minutes just because you're just because you happen to make a mistake in a bad place. So, like, I know I know, I just, like, roasted Kyle, but, like, his PB, <laughs> his PB, like, when you, it has, like, minutes of major time losses, but it's only, like, two or three big mistakes in it. So, 
it's kind of a a testament to how punishing this game can be, especially if you're really trying to get like a good uh, run of it for you know the purposes of optimizing at a high level. What is this? Ah no, it's so over. Mm. That was a good Bowser three until then. Actually, I'm kind of I'm kind of missed, but it's okay. Doesn't doesn't uh, ruin everything. Just um, hi. Yeah, we're in the home stretch. We're what? in the home stretch. It's all what, good. What is what is going on? This is the uh, not a thing I'm used to because normally the positioning for this is very consistent. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> that was a bit of a. I'm a bit annoyed that that's how I lost that much time. It, it's a little silly, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Um, where's... Okay, here we go. So, again, these these green plants are really... Like, it's, it's kind of random, but also not really random. It's just not consistent where Bowser is and where the plants... Like, the direction the plants go when you hit them with 2P. And that planet was, like, great in the first Bowser fight, so it wasn't that good in this one, but you know what? That's okay. And, uh... Finally here, I'm actually going to grab this coin real quick, just because this is the last... I really want to be at a high health, because you can actually get double hit if you do, like, if you do the... If you lure him incorrectly towards one of those, like, last things, you can actually get hit twice and lose two health. And if you have two health, you die. And dying in this fight loses... Dying in this part of the fight loses two and a half minutes. So that happened to me once in a... in a run. Um, and it was a it was a run for like a a relay, so I had to I had to finish it. Like I couldn't just reset. But man, did I wholly regret uh, that death? Oh no! All right, this this run has not had the greatest Bowser fights, but it's actually uh, it's okay. Um, and all right, so there, so I've I've finished the Bowser fight. There is a about. 40, 30, 30, 40 second cutscene, and then time ends when I touch the star. So that's uh, that's the final level. So pretty much from here, it's just everything's on rails as long as I don't backflip into the star. But yeah. So that is the run. Unfortunately, I choked the the clutch 542 like right at the end there. But I, it's that's a very arbitrary thing to care about considering it's still. Pretty far off my PB, but this this game is inconsistent. It's a five hour long run. I'm happy that I got to show off so much so much speed tech. And you know what? Given that this is the first time this gets okay, wait, time. Okay, there we go. So this is the the first time this got shown off. So hopefully, if anything, this is a foundation for a future runner to have a much better run than I did. There you go. All I know is that all I know is that you might have choked some things in the run, but you didn't choke having a good time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I am I am very happy that I got you to keep eating and having fun. Here. Exactly. So I um Yeah. Do I have time for like some quick shout outs? Absolutely. Okay, so first I wanna say like obviously thank you for having me on the show. This is like my third marathon run ever. So to be able to do it on Ooh. GDQ Hotfix of all things is crazy to me. And this is also my favorite category, so I'm really happy that I got to show it off to, in like, you know, a uh, marathon as it, that's like has as many as big of an audience as this. I hope I, I hope the run was interesting. I hope people had it was I hope it was entertaining. I even though I'm not really that happy with how I played, I hope that it was at least still a good enough showcase of this game to to hold people's attention. I hope the commentary was good enough to, to satisfy people. Um, I also want to... I'll be honest. Yeah. Like, if you didn't say it was your third marathon run, I would never have guessed. Your commentary was excellent the whole time. Well, I really appreciate really that. Thank you. Uh, I want to shout out like absolutely everyone who watched any part of this run. I appreciate it a ton. It's like, it's really meaningful to me because, you know, I'm... Again, I'm not like a prestigious runner that everybody knows. So I'm glad that you... Are interested enough in the in the run and the game to like take a chance on some person you've never heard of. Uh, this game is really fun to speedrun and incredibly easy to get into. So if you're interested in running it or running Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, join the Discord server for the games. It's linked on speedrun.com. You can find that along with. Um, and when you join the Discord, there's all kinds of resources for new runners and plenty of people who are willing to help you. Um, 
who are willing to help you learn. And uh, you can, like I said, any version of this game you can run the game on. So there's no version exclusive tricks or anything like that. So if you all you have is the, a Wii and a disc, you can start playing this game. Uh, and if you're a new speedrunner, this is a great game to get into because it's very beginner friendly. I want to thank the people who uh, are help who helped me out with commentary today. Um, you can follow them at twitch.tv slash source28 and twitch.tv slash zgamut. Please do. They're both extremely entertaining people, and I had them on here for a reason. Especially, I want to give a shout out to Gamut, who uh, took this position on very short notice. Like, I asked him, like, last weekend, and he said yes, and he's also sick. So thank you for showing up anyway. You did not have to do that, and I really appreciate it. Um, I also awesome, Gamut. <laughs> I also want to thank, like, in general, the the multi Mario and Super Mario Galaxy speedrunning communities. Um, those people have been very supportive. I want to thank um, the Grass Crew for giving me people to talk to every day while I was uh, having a really, really terrible few months towards the beginning of the summer. And um, I want to thank, I want to give uh, shout outs to Claire, aka Musabis, and Sly Freak One for being the reason that I'm here doing this run today. Uh, for very different reasons, but both being very uh, significant contributors to me being here, as opposed to somewhere entirely different. Um, I also want to, again, thank people who watched this run. I want to thank the GDQ Tech people, uh, in particular Ray, who did the, the, the like streaming for this run. They were incredibly patient with me and uh, helped me out with the tech checks and stuff like that. And I want to... Uh, extend my gratitude because I don't know what I'm doing and I appreciate being given the the allowance to have that um, to like not really be that familiar with the stuff and still uh, still have it go smoothly. I want to also thank Shasta for being an amazing host and for creating this show in the first place. I really like completionist categories. I you know obviously I run like my 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 favorite kinds of categories are like eight hour long 100% categories and this is like the perfect place to show them off and I'm really uh, happy that if they're finally getting like some more time in the spotlight because they really deserve this um, also Absolutely. I want to recommend more. I want to recommend a few things first if you're interested in more galaxy speedruns there is there were four way races of both this game and Super Mario Galaxy 2 any percent at uh, GDQ events and those are like proper GDQ events, so they're like really, really good runners. And you can watch those if you want to see um, some really high-level gameplay of these games. And also, I want to shout out the uh, 3D Mario Madness tournament, which I'm helping organize. That's running right now. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash multi-Mario events for that. Um, it's starting really soon, and I'm really, really excited about it. So if you're interested in 3D Mario speedrunning, definitely tune into that. There's going to be... Uh, all kinds of surprises. It's a six-game tournament where the game that's actually raced is decided right before the race starts. So, you, like uh, if you're interested in in 3D Mario speedrunning and tournaments with a lot of twists and turns, uh, definitely check it out. And shoutouts to the the peop other people who are organizing that tournament, particularly Aria, who's been a massive force in hosting and is like the big person in charge of everything. So, I think that's all I have to say. Um, and that was Super Mario Galaxy 120 Star. I hope everyone enjoyed, and uh, I hope that you got something out of this run, even though it was so long. It was so awesome. Thank you very much for doing it in the first place. Any of the commentaries of any shoutouts real quick? Um, yeah, shoutouts to the Multi Mario community, shoutouts to the Galaxy community, shoutouts to MKK. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, shoutouts to my co commentator, Gamut. Um, yeah, I'll keep it short. <laughs> I didn't. So. I mean, I, th I think UT said just about everything that I would have said, so I don't really have anything else to say. Perfect, then. I guess in that case, that concludes our episode to uh, today of Do All The Things. Thank you all for watching, everybody. Thanks for taking time in general to be here for the last, like, six-ish hours or so you've done this. I really appreciate you all, you know, taking time every day to do that in the first place. And, uh, yeah, I think we're done for the night. I think we're going to be raining somebody in a little bit, so... I don't usually end streams like this. Like I'm not usually the one who's like on the end of the day, so I'm not sure what to say here at this point. But yeah, uh, stick around for that. And if anything, uh, follow GQ channel. Not done so already. Uh, you know, any primers that helps out a lot. <laughs> September, etc. Uh, but yeah, I think let's go find some of the ra some of the rage soon.
That's what I say. And y'all have a good one, either way.